everyone, and hello Pie Chucker, welcome to our stream. Welcome, welcome, g'day. Good to be here. Some crazy jazz music playing our sound, I was enjoying that. Yeah, hello everyone. It's, uh, you know, doing an intro with a wee bit of music is less necessary on YouTube streams than it is on Twitch streams, because Twitch streams start abruptly, right? There's no build-up, yeah. there's no waiting room, whereas by the time you do start a YouTube stream, people, like 200 people have already been waiting for like an hour. And yeah, then they have to wait ideal. another three damn minutes. <laughs> so it makes a lot more sense to do a musical intro on a Twitch stream because it's just started and you have to wait for people to trickle in. But that just highlights another difference between the two platforms. And we'll get into that in a little section in the intro. So anyway, welcome back, Pychaka. How are you doing? I'm doing well, yeah. That is a, it's always an, a forever awkward part of streaming on Twitch, is the starting and then having to wait, you're right. Waiting five, six minutes until you've got a, you know, your, your core number and then to crack on. Five, it six is, minutes? All... God, that's generous compared to some of my streams lately. Yeah, well, when you've got a smaller pool, it's, it's easy to wrangle them. I mean, I've been doing like 30 to 40 minute long intros lately. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As the VOD crew might know, because they're half on a, on all of those streams, the VOD crew come in and do like forty minutes stream starts timestamp for me at the start in the comments. <laughs> uh, it's sad to be talking about Twitch streams and Twitch vods now, given the thing we're going to mention in the intro, uh, but we have to talk about it. Yep. But uh, overall, it's great to be back doing another discussion stream. We have some very very interesting topics. Uh, we have some topics that are likely to get way more views than the alternative indie projects that we normally focus on for the past few streams. Um, isn't that right, Pychucker? I mean, wh when was the last one we did? Uh, I'm terrible with dates, but it feels feels like five or six weeks ago. Let me check. Feels like 2021 was our last one, but maybe <laughs> not. Um, yeah, a month ago. We are talking about the uh, sponsorship. Oh yeah, and to be fair, that's a decent gap between these streams. We have to wait for yeah. stuff to build up. Yeah, that was an interesting one too. A lot had changed for 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 the positive, and now and now much has swung back. You know, the pendulum the pendulum swung back again with with the recent news. Yeah, um, we always knew that the Victoria Three Sphere of Influence DLC was looming over us like a spectre. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> we were lucky that we had it so good for so long before this DLC came out, or was about to come out. Yeah, we had a grace period where we could really just talk about Gilded Destiny and whatnot. Yeah, hope, hope and dream. Thank you so much Game & Watch for the $5 super chat. So of course you can support this, the, the channel or ask a question in a super chat. But I'll try to make it so that if you have a question, I'll answer in the relevant topic when we get to it on the stream. Maybe with a little section where we answer them, or if you have a point to do with that, or we'll just answer it at the time, really, it doesn't really matter. Um, so, before we get into the first introductory topics that I want to talk about, do you have any shout outs for yourself, Pychuck, or any upcoming videos or streams planned? Oh, I've actually been, I've been doing normal jobs, unfortunately, which is so much more boring than fun uh, doing video editing and streaming and the such. No, I can't really shout out the uh, mechanic shop that I've been working at recently, but yeah, I've can. been really enjoying, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Do you need a warrant of fitness? Do you need an oil change? No, but I've, I've been really enjoying that, actually. I've been really enjoying that. But that's been what I've been doing normal, normal people work recently. And so, you know. Creatively not as interesting, but it's been it's been very enjoyable. Yeah, I've been enjoying that. Sounds great. Whenever whenever you mentioned you were working as a mechanic, for some reason I just can't not think about um, Uptown Girl by Billy Joel. You know the video. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for some reason, just think of I just think of you doing a mechanic job as like a kind of fucking musical or something. I don't know why. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I like that. That's good. <laughs> Like you're working away and then a beautiful woman comes through the, through the door with an expensive car and you're like, you know, you come out from under the car on that little trolley thing and you're like, oh. Uh, it hasn't That's happened so yet. <laughs> i got to say, it's normally it's normally old bogans, which, it's, you know, it's I normally don't know. Old I don't know. Old geezer. <laughs> yeah, Uptown old geezer. Uptown bogan. <laughs> Uptown bogan, yeah. 
<laughs> anyway, uh, thanks for your the super chat. Uh, the mighty Sherlock for five pounds says victory Neville and Sarko McMahon. It's not really a question to answer a relevant topic, so I'll just say thank you. Now, um, let me turn the music down a little bit more. It's a bit loud. Victory naval encirclement when there we rolling go. on the floor laughing. Oh, it said Rawful for your smiley face. Okay, so we're doing a discussion stream. We're going to talk about the first major substantial topic will be Victoria 3 Sphere of Influence, which has had an official announcement, a trailer, and then a subsequent dev diary yesterday. I was planning initially to do this discussion stream earlier in the week, but then I realized there's going to be a dev diary on Thursday. That's when they always do a Vic 3 one. So it makes sense to wait. And it gives us, to be honest, the dev diary really didn't have much compared to the overall announcement, but screw it. It's, it gives us something. So. Yeah. Have, have you noticed, uh, not not to get into a massive spiel about this, but have you noticed that it seems like the, the dev diaries across the board have sort of become a little bit more... Uh, reluctant to be transparent with information you know like they're not re that they, they, they they give you a lot of flavor about the concepts they're working on but they don't often actually show you the brass tacks anymore you know and it used to be huge like the eu4 multiplayer games they'd show you the like them playing the the upcoming expansion um and so you'd get a a really good concept for what what's about to come out yeah i mean the thing is, I never read Dev Diaries before, really, the Victoria 3 experience, so I don't have much to compare it to, but I do get the overall impression that Dev Diaries and Paradox and whatnot, they're, you know, the community gets to say, oh, look how transparent they are, they're really transparent, they give us so much information, and they're honest, but they really don't say all that much or give so many details or address criticism in these Dev Diaries, at least for Victoria 3, which are the ones I've read, really, yeah. that much. That's, but uh, it is what it is, and the Dev Diary format has, you know, it seems to be everyone's doing it these days, you know, Open Vic, Gilded Destiny, you know, projects we actually like are also doing it. Yeah, true. Speaking of Open Vic, a bit, I mean, this, this, this discussion stream isn't about Open Vic, there's not going to be anything about it on it, but that project is still going along. And if you want to see what it's doing, you can just go onto the Discord, which is linked in the description, the Open Vic Discord, and ask or check the recent posts in Informal Showcase. There's going to be a, a dev diary for that next month, I believe. So we'll get That's on to exciting. that. We'll get on to that when it comes, yeah. So, we do have to start the stream. I'm not going to dwell on this much, but I have to say, right? Because there's a bigger audience that I need to explain this to now. Um, so, the, the Twitch, the Twitchuation. The Twitchuation. The Twitch situation. <laughs> right. So, last Sunday, I was suspended from Twitch for two weeks... I'll show you this message that I received, this email I received on Mother's Day. Uh, here it is. This is just a wee thing. I'm not going to spend too much time dwelling on this because I did do an entire stream about it and relevant related topics. But I, I got this. Um, you can see it right there. I got suspended on Twitch last week for a, a clip that I had posted three years ago. That's nuts. It's not. It's the time. It's the time. It's, it's such a long period of time. It's absolutely ludicrous. And the clip in question was a meme, little clip video, uh, a sort of Giga Chad versus Soyjack sort of meme um, about a campaign that I was in in 2021 where I was playing Scandinavia in DoD and there was the American Council and all that. The word contained a censored slur in it. Uh, which was actually a quote from a bad Frank meme itself. Uh, so it was a quote and censored anyway, but they still got it. And it sat there for three years untouched until now. Dempsey's in the chat and he was in that campaign as Russia. So he would he would know the situation. So that happened. Now, rather than dwelling on the bullshit of it, I just want to say, obviously I'm moving all my streams back to YouTube now. It's what I have to do. So Victoria 2 streams are back on YouTube. Like, you know... I've got a tweet to put in the background during this uh, for you to explain how it feels to do this. This is what it feels to be doing this again. I switched back to Twitch like last year at some point because I preferred I remember, it. yeah. Because there's so many reasons I kind of preferred the format of Twitch for streaming games. Because you can just, rather than setting up a whole title description thumbnail for every stream, you can just hop on and play on Twitch. But I'm forced back now, which is fine. I'm going to take this as a positive. 
I am going to take this as a positive and I'm going to see it as like because I'm starting a new Victoria 2 campaign on Sunday which you can see a little shout out for on the bottom left it's going to be a huge campaign I'm going to be playing as one of the big four DOD countries live on Sunday and so I'm going to see it as a big new renewal revival hopefully getting loads of people in for some great entertainment there you know we're going to try and move forward positively and when the suspension of Twitch is over I'm not going back it makes no sense to uh, chop and change so much I'm committing to the move that I've been forced to make and I'll make the best of it looking forward to that stream on Sunday and I hope to see as many of you there as possible and more people yeah I think it's honestly I think that's the the right move I think it doesn't come without its headaches you know um like like you mentioned in your last stream you know it's 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 not as easy to go streaming on on youtube you have to set up the, the thumbnail and the description um it'll be interesting because i'll be streaming when, when we do our raft streams you'll be streaming on youtube and i'll be streaming on twitch yeah on the very day that i got suspended from twitch i've been planning to do a raft stream and continue that yeah. playthrough with by chucker i was looking yeah. forward to it been fun uh, although it really didn't get that many views the thing about my twitch streams is that they had been kind of lower on views lately because I've been prior, I've been doing single player content rather than multiplayer. Because I've been taking a break from that, it was I find multiplayer stressful. But now I'm going back into it. So we're going to come out of a bit of a lull in views on streams overall, and make a big revival on Sunday. It's going to be fucking great. If it's a shit show in terms of the actual session, I don't care. It'll be fun either way. I'm going to have a beer or two, and we're just going to have a great time. And we'll take it as it comes and see what happens. Anyway, uh, can, can you tell us anything about um, the group, the group that you're playing with? This, is this a group that you've played with often? It's coming from Vic Union. And as a matter of fact, this is a bit of a weird continuation from the Bavaria series because the host of the campaign is the Albion player, Neighbor. He's hosting it. He Plus, comes off as a pr pretty nice guy in the in the series as well, so that sounds that bodes well for the campaign. I mean, he is absolutely. He's he's really nice, and as a player throughout that Bavaria campaign, he's improved so much because he did start off quite new, and the the Bavaria campaign took place a long time ago. And in the meantime, he's played in more campaigns, gotten better, and now as the he's reached, it's like a process, right? A new player comes along, learns the game, gets better and better, starts to get involved with discussing rules and stuff, and then they're like, you know what? starry-eyed it's time for me to host my own campaign this is going to be great and then uh, that's when the decline begins because they go oh my god hosting is a fucking nightmare and then a few years later like reno they're done yeah they're burnt out so cheered on up, sunday cheered up and spat out yeah cheered up and spat out by the system <laughs> on sunday we're going to go and help neighbor along in that process no but no he's a great guy and i'm looking i'm going to make an effort to try and uh, make his hosting you know as smooth as possible because i know that having bringing an audience of what i hope to be massive on that stream might put a lot, even more pressure on the guy so i'm going to do my best to make it easy for him um, You've, yeah I, i've heard that you've voluntarily uh, disbarred yourself from uh, rule lowering no i haven't gone that far <laughs> you haven't gone that far I, I i could have sworn i heard something along those lines in the last Loco is going to be in the campaign i think and i think weevil as well and loads of other people people know uh so yeah dempsey will be he's going to have co-hosts and help from dempsey and ethan ethan's released a fucking banger vic2 video that's blown up a wee bit as well which is a random tangent uh, people might have already watched it in here because it's gotten the algorithm blessing anyway so that's the Sunday campaign. Like I said, I don't want to dwell on this series, uh, this topic too long. Which is, overall, the Twitch thing, it's a negative, unfortunate thing. And I, I did I did talk about the Twitch suspension on a whole stream earlier in the week, which is on the Spudgun archives. If you want the full side of the story and the full lowdown on that, go and watch that. Or read a community post on the Spudgun archives. But otherwise, this introductory section about that is really about the positive side and how we're going to come back and make a big renewal on Sunday. Okay, right. Anything else on that pie chucker you can think of? <laughs> no, I don't think so. We've come out the gates blasting though, we're doing well. I know, uh, take your timestamps because I'm going to do a little brief shout out to my Patreon here. Sweet. Which is, I haven't really done this on a stream before, showing the Patreon and you can see that I have just released, this was two days ago, another compilation of bonus clips from the Bavaria series, which are, consist of the clips 
pulled out of parts 14 to 18, which is a long time. And it's a long time ago as well. I'm a little bit behind on the bonus clips, and I'm going to make another one soon. So, yeah. Very exciting. Join this for any amount of money and any pledge, and you can get access to these clips, which are all very fun and interesting. And you get an insight into the decisions I make, like, eh, this clip's funny, but it just doesn't fit the flow of the video, but I don't want to put it to waste. So I'll put it in the deleted scenes, or as they used to be called. Also, also if you're a brand new uh, patron, um, there's actually so many bonus clips to go through. Like, there's so many new Spud videos for you to watch. Yeah, you can go all the way back to Muscle. Not just, yeah, stuff. exactly. Not just this one. There's like, what, maybe a dozen? Close to? I'm not sure. Um, no. Actually kind of related. Uh, by the way, you can see the tiers. These are just cosmetic, bit of fun. So for one dollar, you can be a craftsman. For five dollars, you can be a clergyman. And for 15, you can be a capitalist. I think it's pretty neat. It is. No. This is kind of related to the last topic a bit, because coming back to YouTube streaming means that I am going to really push for channel memberships again. Um, the Twitch subs. Twitch subs, I can't really do anything about it now. They've been left out to dry by Twitch. Some people had actually subbed for months in advance. Uh, I don't really know what to do. If I can refund Twitch subs in any way possible, I will. But I don't think you can. I don't know. Uh, it sucks. But I have to keep press. I have to press forward, and we're going to focus on channel memberships, which you can join just by looking at the channel. There's a link somewhere. It's uh, the join the join button. Yeah, join somewhere on there. It's the left of uh, subscribed, which it should say subscribed. Well, if it doesn't say subscribed, I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the the channel membership is like the equivalent to Twitch subbing, except it actually gives me a better cut of the money. And you get access to the emotes. Someone display all the nice emotes in the chat. If we get more channel memberships, I will be able to unlock more emotes to add to that. And you can also post them on my videos comments. So it's a very nice link to videos as well. A lot of people have posted them. You know, when I win a war, Giga Chad. When I lose a war, Soy Jack to the enemies, right? When we go out of sync, yeah. Bruce. When a famous general plus five attack dies, salute. When Reno posts a rule argument, Reno. When something funny happens, Kek, I don't need to go through all of them, you get the idea. No, no, carry on. When I get banned from Twitch, Chud Gun. <laughs> no, okay. Doomer, the Doomer one, surely. surely. Yeah. All right. So join the channel membership today. There was just a super chat, which is relevant. I don't think that alert has come through but tad posting for five dollars thank you very much asks what time will you streams be on sunday it says it on the bottom of the screen actually yeah dempsey's dempsey's put some time zones he's been pretty helpful if there are more time zones to extrapolate from those then please do post them but that's going to be 5 p.m gmt is when it's going to the campaign is going to begin i will start streaming quite a bit before that to give us a long intro uh, and a bit of time to prepare but official start time for the campaign will be 5 p.m um be there early, get in some, get in on some of the early banter um, as well if you want to. So, Jesus, how long have we been going already? 20 minutes and I've just blurted out on like, at like 100 miles an hour all this stuff in the intro. Oh, shall we take a five minute break? Yeah, yeah, we're going well, we're going well. Nah, what time uh, will you stream be on Sunday? You know, because another annoying thing about Sunday YouTube streaming is how long early, the delay is for when the sub, from when the super chat Love actually Yana. goes in the chat to when it comes up as an alert. That's really annoying, but uh, we're just going to have to deal with it. We have yeah. Some, uh... Yeah. I, I, I mean, we had, we, we've tried different strategies with that, like me reading out, bringing up the super chats as soon as they come out, but then you have that awkward, you know, playing a couple of minutes later after we've, uh, we've talked about it. It's, it's, it's difficult. Yeah. I do also want to say about the stream on Sunday, I think I'm going to take a bit of an approach where I am going to focus on the campaign more than the stream and by that I mean rather than thanking every super chat or membership as it comes in I'll wait for a quiet moment or a rehost and go through a go through multiple ones I will not look at the chat as much I'll be focusing on playing the game um, people in the chat can inform each other on any on any like updates they need on what's happening I, frankly Dempsey says it in the chat there now it is going to be moving towards more the Boko and method now traditionally on my streams I've always been engaging with the chat all the time, always answering stuff, always checking it. 
And I always thought, yeah, yeah, that makes me a better streamer, obviously. Not necessarily, because sometimes, especially for a, a Paradox multiplayer, you want to watch a stream to see the game happening. Not necessarily to talk to me and ask questions in the chat. You just want to watch the game. And I'm going to go more for that now, from now on. At least I'm going to try. Because my instincts always are to read the chat. Yeah, think I that? think that's... Yeah, I think that's a good change. Um, Cause you got you got how would you describe it? You got a bit burnt out on Vic Two MP. Is that how you describe it? I found it overwhelming at times. Yeah, because of the amount of things I have to focus on a stream yeah. and a game. Yeah, so not I'm playing just... it. Was just we're just we're, we're solely talking about streaming it. And yeah, I could easily see that. I've I've the only experience I have with it is when we played that um, Spud Gunners game, and that was fun. But yeah, I can't imagine doing it for a for a big, huge stream, and you've got tons of people asking you questions and stuff. It would be, it could, I could easily see it getting overwhelming. Yeah, um, there's another comparison as well. Tommy K, I think, whenever he does play Paradox multiplayer, he mutes himself in the VCs a lot. He barely talks to his other players, and he keeps talking to his chat. So there's like two ends of a spectrum there. You focus on the game and focus on the people you're playing with, or you can mute yourself a lot and focus on chat. So I'm going to go more for the game option now. I've always I've always leaned more towards talking to chat more of the time. Uh, so I'm going to switch. I'm going to try and focus on the game. I'm going to see how that goes. But yeah, Sunday's going to be insane either way. It's going to be fantastic. I'm looking forward to it. Do you have a... Um, uh, out of the big four, would you prefer a certain country? Oh, God. Oh, oof. Well, you, you know, I'm, my favourite DoD country is Scandinavia. I wouldn't mm. mind another one of those, although I've played it a lot previously and viewers might be more interested in seeing burgundy or dm uh oof. i haven't played the albions i mean bohemia who knows if i'm even going to be able to form the albions if i play it but uh there isn't much content of me on bohemia albions either and also for the stream i'm going to turn off alert noises for subs and memberships and stuff so they don't interrupt the game basically but i will thank people a thingy even though you got suspended twitch subtracted a six month subscription even though i always just bought one month subs yeah i, I don't know what is going on with that doom lord if it's the case when i you see while i'm suspended from twitch i can't even access my profile i can't do it's gone like i can't even go in there and try and sort things out although i got paid today by twitch for like my last month so at least they're paying me when the suspension's over, I'm going to try and sort things out over there, as well as change my profile to say I no longer stream here, go to my YouTube. Uh. Lambert says, your best series are when you struggle and cope and eventually overcome. DM starts strong. I can't see you struggling there unless you cock up monumentally. Yeah, the pressure, imagine this, right? The, the big four countries, DM, Burgundy, Bohemia, Scandinavia, massive pressure. There's probably going to be a 2v2 war. Like hundreds of people viewing me. There's a very high chance of me cocking up for the first war. Just because just of the pressure. I kind of do suffer under pressure sometimes in, when I'm playing. And I'll like make a mistake. But doesn't mean I'm not going to fucking try and focus and not let that happen. But if I cock up first war, and to go back again to the Scandinavia campaign in 2021, uh, which I might actually edit a video out of inspired by the suspension from Twitch from a meme from it, I cocked up in the first war of that, a Scandi. We lost. But I immediately got the coping out of my system and started building up for the next war, and then it was an exciting campaign with ups and downs. That's what you want. Yeah. Lawrence makes a good point. Well, I guess my prime sub will go to Pie Shucker now. Absolutely. So give me your prime subs now, guys. True. Pie Chucker still got a Twitch, and you might stream on You might stream some live mechanic work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, if you have lingering primes now, go and give it to him. So, uh, not to dwell, we, we do have massive topics to cover on the stream. What was that? Oh, I think that does it for the initial topics, though. Patreon, channel memberships are back. Please give channel memberships today. Join, gift them, whatever. Greatly would appreciate that. Now, timestamp. Uh, we up. move on to a, another brief introductory drive by topic. What's this by Jucker? Oh, fuck. It's slop. It's paraslop is what it is. Jesus. So this is the new Hearts of Iron 4 Trial of Allegiance expansion. 
um, which I have heard, and as you can see there, <laughs> not very good things about. Not very good at all. Yeah, I mean, I kind of, I only realised this, like, this morning, a couple of hours ago, someone on my Discord mentioned something about this DLC, and I was like, oh yeah, I might, we could do a little topic about that, just as a sort of outside perspective, drive-by glance, because I don't play Hoi 4, uh, but it's kind of funny <laughs> to watch this. I mean, I saw there's an, an Isora Productions video on this as well, where he criticised it and said something bad, and which is nice, you know, he's always honest, pretty much, and uh, so there's, you know, 33% reviews here, this is disastrous, I think, it's uh, it's just a content pack with some focus trees, I think the main contention is the price for that, $15, which is about £12, if we were to read some of these reviews, which I will have a glance at in a second, that's probably going to be the main problem, isn't it? So oh, well, we'll do that then. Like 90% of the focus trees are from a mod, says Dempsey. We'll do mod joins the way. channel membership. Thank you so much. Let's have a look at some of these. Do you want to read some of them out, Pie Trucker, with an epic yeah. voice? Yeah. Oh, we've got to find some epic ones. It's hard to <laughs> be epically negative. <laughs> um, that's actually so funny. This gives me confidence in the quality of my work. <laughs> If Barox can make people pay for this, then maybe my modding projects aren't that bad. That's brutal and funny. Yeah, so it's just a it's a DLC of focus trees. And what have modders been making endlessly since Hearts of Iron first came out in 2016? Focus trees, right? Yeah. But I there's, think, only, uh... there's still some positive ones, though. I love this DLC. I've been satisfied with all the DLCs. Everyone I've talked to has loved this DSC, and I do too. I feel the complaining comes from people who just want more stuff for Europe. Well, that's not what anyone is saying, is it? Because th no, this is dumb. Name. That's a dumb point. Yeah, it's a, a suspicious Steam name as well. T.S. Smith. Okay, well, that's not what I'm focusing on. I'm focusing on this dumb point. Quality dropped on the stream. Can you fix that? That's probably on your end. I'm sorry. I haven't done anything here. I'm looking fine on my end. Could just be you with a bit of internet connection and then the thing, the quality automatically goes down. Anyway, so yeah, this DLC is a South American DLC. It's advertised as such. You read it. That's what it is. The, the reviews are from people who got the DLC and knew that and decided to purchase it or already like pre-purchased it or some shit. People who see South America and don't want the DLC didn't buy it. Similarly to what we've said about some Vic 3 things. Like, Vic 3 had its own South America DLC. The Spud argument based approach versus the Pie Trucker name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the this is the opposite. This is a this is a guy going probably the most lazy Hoi 4 DLC. That being said, I love Brazil. W Brazil W Paradox W DLC. <laughs> Just nationalistic forever. Yeah, well, I mean, if they came out with a DLC just for New Zealand, it would it would be, you know, the, the, the nationalism does come in. I'm not saying that I'm a nationalist. Maybe I should be more careful about what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, I'm sending you to Brazil. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Copi Lul Minune, which is, it looks, initially it looks like it's saying Cop, but then you realise it's Romanian. Uh, now... So it's negative, it wasn't a Brazilian, so he doesn't automatically like it. Right, uh, they released a dev diary after this, uh, responding to the failure. Shall we see what they had to say? Yes, do you want to read I'm, this? I'm, yes, I'm very interested to read this. I haven't seen this. Read it out live for us. Alright. Uh, receptions and thoughts. Greetings all. Today marks the first dev diary since the release of Trial of Allegiance. So we'll be, we'll be looking back over how things went. The community reactions, in a little more detail than usual. While I would have loved to see some data on player choices and interactions for today's diary, our analytics engine is busy chugging away. So we'll have to hold off on that until the machine spirit has assessed the incoming preponderance of data. The elephant in the room. It would be hard to talk about Trial Allegiance uh, without first mentioning that we're acutely aware of its critical reception from fans. <laughs> I see no reason not to be transparent about this. 
<laughs> and I'm going to use today as an opportunity to talk about what it means to us and how we analyze reactions. So let's dive into some of the facts. Everything's on fire. Well, actually, no. Trial of Allegiance has thus far been one of our most stable releases in terms of bugs and, and player encountered issues. That's not a high bar, though. Uh, that's a really, that's a really low bar. No, um, it's actually expected that a Paradox DLC will contain numerous bugs and issues. Yeah. Unexpected behavior is expected behavior from a Paradox game. Uh, this doesn't mean that there aren't bugs, stuff always creeps through, but uh, as you may have noticed by now, we've had an open beta running with a patch scheduled uh, sometime today. The patch notes will be attached to the end of this document, furthermore, we have not made another patch scheduled uh, in the next week to give us a chance to tackle more complex problems. Everyone in the chat is saying that the DLC doesn't add mechanics anyway, it's just yeah. trees and guff, so how could there be bugs really? To have bugs in mere focus trees is a gigantic skill issue, and they even are admitting that there are some of those, right? Can I can I make the, uh, a take that might be controversial? No, no, yeah, yeah. okay, Just go ahead, yeah. Recently, like a lot of companies or like people who work in creative fields, have been talking about how like a uh, fan reception makes them feel, um, which is like nice for them and i don't think anybody at all should be uh, abused and some of that stuff does go way too far but i don't give a shit about what a company's dealing with in terms of negative reception you know like if you look at hello games with a big famous example like no man's sky yeah obviously people shouldn't be getting you know personal threats or anything like that but if they feel bad because they made a bad game and people are saying it's bad you know that's a new thing where people are sort of, you know, talking about, oh, it's it's very hard to deal with the negativity. And it's like, well, that is half of the course. If you make something that makes feel makes people, you know, en masse feel really negative, they're going to have shit to say. And so I don't give a shit if you feel bad yeah. about that. I would, generally, I, mean? I would generally agree with you on that take. Uh, I always say the line is drawn at personal abuse so absolutely yeah. absolutely there is a you know i'm not saying that there's not a clear line in the sand but what i'm more talking about is like it's a more common thing to see uh i've seen a lot in gaming but you see it in you know uh tv shows and movies as well where it's like oh the fans didn't like it and that made me feel like really depressed and it's like well i feel sorry for you as a person but as you know a person responsible for having made this thing you have to take responsibility for it well I feel like this is probably perhaps uh, just an aspect of a wider societal thing about everyone feeling sad and depressed about everything uh, and talking about their feelings, I guess, to actually really figure out why this is happening. It's just the whole world is going like that, really. It's not really down to gaming specifically. Yeah, it's bold. It's bold when people, you know, you've got, I don't know how many reviews there were, thousand, you know, over several thousand. When you've got thousands of people going, oh, this is shit, and you go, oh, by the way, guys, when you guys said it was shit, it made me feel real bad. <laughs> it's like... And yeah, none of these negative reviews <laughs> are attacking people at all. They are no, all of course critical not. of the content that they got. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Paradox, which is a company, offers $15 worth of junk, a product. It's not attacking any people, none of it. Yeah, and, and, and just to finish what I'm saying... This becoming more prevalent, I think that it's hard to argue against people being honest about their feelings, because you sound like you're a real villain if you're going like, I really don't give a shit. But if you think about you guys in your normal jobs, right, let's say if you're a, you know, you're a doing some mechanic work, you know, down at a mechanic shop, if you fuck someone's car up, and they go, hey, pie chugger, you've completely fucked my car, <laughs> I can't go, you know, this is really hurting my feelings, I worked really <laughs> hard on that car. <laughs> You know, hey, yes, it did. doesn't start. <laughs> you fucked me, girl. What are you doing? <laughs> Fucking. No, we we. So what? When it happens to us guys, we get fired. But when it happens to them, they feel they they feel sad, and we should sympathise with them. You see, and this, uh, I guess, we can talk. We can talk about some of the overall nonsense briefly, right? The whole Victoria Three saga, uh, the reception, me criticising. I've criticised the game, right? So I've done what we're talking about here. I criticised the game, the direction it took, 
Whereas in exchange for that, I've received massive personal abuse and abuse about my whole channel, my livelihood. And like with the Twitch thing, people fucking reporting me to try and destroy my livelihood, right? When all, all I've done is criticise a game. That's generally what's happened there. And I've never really gone and talked about how sad all that abuse made me feel, but I have pointed it out. Uh, and po po posted examples of it just to go, well, these are the people that are defending your shitty game. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, the comparison would be if you release the next Bavaria part in 360p, you know. <laughs> well. <laughs> and, and it would be, and, and if we're all, you know, and it would be fair enough if we're all like, you know, but there's been a massive decline in visual quality in your videos, you wouldn't be able to go community post, guys. I was trying something different and you've really hurt my feelings, you know? It's like, it no. really hurt my feelings. I can't, I can't see the stacks. They're all, there's 360p. I don't know what's going on, Spud. Because of these negative comments, I've had to start taking, uh, uh, I'm back on, uh, back on the medication. You know, it's, it's terrible because of these, uh, yeah. 360p comment. Right. Demo gave a super chat, which is relevant, saying DLC does not deserve a terrible review. All bold. He's defending the DLC. And then he says, it is about South America. And South America is supposed to be terrible. It's fitting, actually. That's good. Um, but, you know, that's enough about the Hoi 4 thing. I don't know Hoi 4 anyway. So it was just a wee drive-by. It's kind of funny. So I guess timestamp. What the fuck is that going on out there? The mechanics yeah, are at it by Chucker. Can you go and tell your yeah. car mechanic people to tone yeah. it down a bit? Can you go and... Come on. What is that? It sounds like a, a crane or something. I don't know. I think someone's. I think it's probably someone revving up a motorbike engine or something. Anyway, Dempsey. Dempsey streaming Hoi Four in two hours. Wow! Thanks for advertising yourself. Go and watch. <laughs> Good on him. Good on him. Sure. Why not? I'll I'll let that happen. I respect it. Oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> I was just doing it faster. God. <laughs> This is, you know what, this is doing by Chucker, it's making me feel sad. Yeah, it's making you feel sad. I'm feeling depressed. May maybe, you may maybe you should just pause the stream here, you should go out, you should go tell that man that how, how he's making you feel, okay? I'm going to go out and be really <laughs> true to myself and to yeah. my feelings and yeah. my sensitive emotions. Yeah, yeah. See what he says. Ask him, uh, you know, just try and talk to him about this random guy about your feelings and just see what he thinks. Yeah. Anyway, so... To begin the, like, before we meet, it's so distracting, mate, I can't do this. I can't fucking do it. <laughs> oh, this is why you all need guns, Jesus Christ. Gustav says, use your people skills and a real ability to negotiate. <laughs> uh, why? <laughs> he didn't just say people skills, he's like brought back the entire quote. Yeah, the full, the full thing and a real ability to negotiate, that's outstanding. A real ability to negotiate and that's going to be relevant when we talk about sphere of influence as well okay take a breather big time stamp um so uh well we do have one more super chat on the brazilian dlc topic which is terezo saying for five brazilian real i think uh being a brazilian i feel it's fitting that the dlc quality allows us standard of living thank you very much and that's pretty much the same sentiments echoed in the previous super chat as well, and I think I, I can sympathise. Yeah. Now, I wanted to. You guys can see that. Uh, oh. uh, just to just to interrupt. The South Americans do get so much though. They've got amazing food. You know, they're like the nicest people. You go to a Mexican restaurant anywhere that's not in Mexico. You know. People are just so friendly everywhere. So, like, you know, you, you pay for your low quality of uh, standard of living with, you know, having so many other cool things. Great music, you know? So yeah. it's not all doom and gloom. Go, see, go, what I'm saying is going to Brazil has its upsides. Yeah, you got to give them that. Is, uh, is Haiti technically part of North or South America? What, is that North or South America, the Caribbean, technically? North, surely. I don't really know. I've always thought, yeah, it's North. I've always thought North America is oh, just three countries. Yeah, no, yeah. but the it's, whole Caribbean is in it. Four o'clock in the morning. They're going on on me saying Mexico after saying South America. Latin America. Okay, okay, Latin America. You guys are really hitting my feelings. I should have added a Haiti focus tree in that DLC, mate. <laughs> Barbecue DLC. All right, anyway. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> 
Uh, <laughs> moving swiftly onward to the... Oh, I'm, basically, we're going to move on to the Victoria 3 topic now, right? So it's Victoria 3, everyone. We can gain an inordinate amount of viewers. To, we're back on this. Uh, you know, it's, it's Victoria 3, you know. This is what everyone wants to talk about on the channel. And yes, I, I made it. the thumbnail and the title all about it so we can, you know, it's... You know, it's, it's the easy way to get more and more viewers. I wish that I could get an equal amount of viewers on a pure Gilded Destiny stream than a stream with Victoria 3, but I know how it really works. So... Being a Brazilian, I, feel it's I wanted to lay a bit of uh, groundwork and talk about the context before we move into the actual uh, details on the DLC, the expansion, which is coming out on the 6th of May. So my previous video, which was called... Um, what was it called? M mixed... A very yeah, mixed, mixed bag, Victoria 3, a one very, year later. A very mixed bag. Yeah, I went through patch 1.5 mainly, which was... Well, just watch the video, you already know. But uh, one of the main points I made in that video was really building up how the expansion, the upcoming expansion, which is... This is what the expansion page used to look like, right? Um, so I, I put this in all those videos. This is what it used to say. I put on, I talked about how that is under a lot of pressure to be good because it's make or break for the game. The game has been floundering in player count, flop DLCs such as Voice of the People, uh, a free weekend stunt that backfired and their patch 1.5, amazing turnaround of the game, the comeback, which actually brought it down to worse reviews overall because it was a failure, it had like three hot fixes, what a disaster, one Prod Bavarian himself was criticising the implementation. And all of that just puts more and more pressure on this to be good, because this has to be the thing that actually turns it around and fixes all the problems. Reverses the fortune of the game, isn't it, Pychuk? Yeah, and not only that, I've just realised that they're charging uh, $48 New Zealand dollars for the uh, expansion, and then Victoria 3 is like 35 So that they're charging like 150% of the base game. For this expansion apparently this expansion is more uh, valuable than the base game which is nuts yeah i mean i think vic 3 itself is actually on sale right now if i could take a little bit of a look at that uh still mixed still yeah, 66 right. i'm trolling i'm trolling it's 15 and a half i'm trolling no no i take it back i take but it back so you're kind of right and kind of wrong at the same time. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a mixed sense. bag. I'm a very mixed bag right now. You're a, you're mixed. 66% yeah. was correct. <laughs> but yeah, that's been the same. This has been on 66% for months now. It's, it's gotten very... And you know, looking back on this, also in the context of my last video, which was a, a few months ago, in December actually, to be specific, so three months, a quarter, last quarter, before 1.5 came out, things were really improving. They were on recent reviews, mostly positive. Like, it seemed like they were turning it around. 1.5 happens, and that has just... It's stayed mixed since then. Um, it's mixed even now on recent reviews. So they haven't even improved on 1.5 in the past three months with uh, the little... I mean, they went for a big Christmas break, but they've done little hot, they've done little patches in between, one of which was just a little tweet I got from one pound Bavarian here saying how those recent... 1.6 sort of patches have gone. The 1.7 will be Sphere of Influence. 1.6 is now. And 1.5 was in December, well, November last year, and we talked about that. So there's Jesus. problems here. And we also have the player count. Wait, I was kind of giving the background, and we were talking about the price of the DLC. You were saying it's a. Uh, well, for me, it's £25. Victoria 3 itself is on 50% sale at £20.99 right now. Right, so it it is more expensive than Victoria 3 is right now because Victoria 3 is on sale. Which, it's been on and off a of sale loads. It's been on constant sale for like a year. And then now there's a... What's this? A spring sale? Anyway. Quick player count look. How does this look to you, Pie Chucker? It looks pretty shit, to be honest. I mean, that's really bad. The other thing I was going to mention is that, like, uh, when I'm looking around on YouTube and I chat, you guys could be really helpful for this. How much Victoria 3 content is out there? Like, because that is such a great indicator for how things are going. Are people making a lot of content 
around Victoria 3, like right now I'm talking about. Because obviously there was a bunch when, you know, you know, there's a lot of paid content when, when things come out. But just uh, in terms of, you know, your average, your average stuff. Well, I can tell you. I mean, people in the chat might know more specifics, but I can tell you there is some. So I think Bo Corn did a video not too long ago. And yeah, there's, there is a lot of Victoria 3 content that's not paid, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, there are like two or three big YouTubers who do carry Victoria 3 content. Bo Cohen, Ludi, Lawrence in the chat mentioned Leith. So they kind of do carry it. There are also specific Victoria 3 YouTubers who have kind of risen around Vic3. Generalist Gaming, as someone mentioned in the chat. Uh, and there's probably a, a couple others as well. So that's really the scene of it. Um, yeah, just not a big scene for a brand new game. Well, you know. Not brand new anymore. Yeah, not brand new anymore. Which feels weird to say. So, yeah, I mean, content, I think, the thing about Victoria 3 content is that those specific content creators make the best of the game. And they probably are the best thing Victoria 3 has going for it in any any sense right now because they carry it and they're putting out content that loads like a few hundred thousand people are watching like it, it's all they've got going for it they're carrying yeah. it. they're keeping the game alive in a sense there seems to be more uh, more passion around Imperator than there is around Victoria 3 and that's totally uh, anecdotal but that's just from my from what I've seen like well, yes, a lot of, of people course. yeah yeah, there was a big campaign recently by several content creators to revive Imperator. It's, it's nice to watch. Um, and, you know, um, Imperator has become the sort of the black sheep, but it's gotten like a cult. I guess you could describe it as a cult following. Yeah. Um, in I don't know, in terms of bands and albums and stuff. Oh, there's always that one album by your favorite band that not that many people like, but it has a dedicated little group of people yeah. whom it's their favorite yeah. album. <laughs> Uh, so there's a there's that for Imperator, and people accused uh, people accused those content creators to revive per Imperator of being paid, which is even where I come from, being my being the epic paradox Victoria three hater. That's nonsense from my point of view as well. Yeah, that's crazy. It's ridiculous. <laughs> people throwing it out as a joke is funny, but if you seriously yeah, yeah, make yeah. that accusation, if you seriously believe that, it's probably a bit crazy. It's because uh, why would why would Paradox want to revive that game? They want to throw that game under the rug as much yep. as they can. But uh, what Paradox did do in the midst of all this Imperator sort of revival is that they put the game massively on sale. And I saw that as a cash grab by Paradox, seeing what's going on. So I've seen them doing a little bit of annoying marketing there. Because yeah. it's, it's oh. like, you know, they see this organic movement by some content creators to revive Imperator Rome, put out content on it, up the player count. So what does Paradox do? They put it on a massive sale. Um, and so they're trying to make money out of that movement without doing anything to Imperator, not updating it, not putting out content for it, not doing any development. It's like their unloved game that they threw out a few years ago, abandoned. And then they're like, oh, oh, there's, a, there's an organic positive movement to upgrade the game or to uh, give some more love to the game. Oh, let's try and make some money out of it without doing yeah. anything ourselves. It's pretty grim, and uh, the idea that they could revive it—I mean, that they, they, they i don't think they will. But um, that could be a massive turnaround on probably like their most obvious L that they've taken. Like that—that that was that was pretty much everyone didn't like <laughs> what happened with Imperator. Yeah, and that Imperator will lead on to the Johan and EU5 story, which is after we talk about Fear of Influence as well. See, the guy behind the Imperator is now moving on to greater things. Uh, someone in the chat is saying, isn't the sale in relation to the Spring Steam sale? The Spring Steam sale is going on now and Imperator's included in that, but I swear to God I saw them do a tweet a few months ago when this Imperator thing was at its height, and they did do a specific Imperator-only sale during it. They absolutely did. I saw a tweet. And it happened. You can go and look it up. But yeah. Yeah, that's a tangent on Imperator when we're talking about this. And I had the player count here. So the player count has basically just continued. So in November here, and I already discussed this in the video, you had the big boost from the free weekend 
slash patch, patch 1.5 and then it went back down and it's been about 8, 9k. There was some boost here in the start of March. What is that? I don't know. Patch 1.6 maybe? Which is the one where I showed you a tweet from one part of and criticising it. That's patch 1.6. It's just stagnated back down to levels that it was at before 1.5. So again, just to kind of drive home how 1.5 was not the magic turnaround that several overhyping content creators did call it, as I pointed out in the video. Like it was not the case. It has stagnated back to the levels it was at before the patch, more or less. At least yeah. in, well, a year ago, basically, in March. So, yeah. Yeah, basically, well, uh, it's, it is, it's good to see that... Um... You know, at least at least most consumers are uh, sort of waking up to the to the paradox nonsense. So again, there's a lot of there's still a lot of build up and groundwork that I want to do about sphere of influence. First of which, we'll talk about Matchum super chat soon, uh, like later in the section. Thank you for it. Um, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, so this is what we got to see. I can't remember when this dropped, when they put this on the... I think this was like... This was a long time ago, it was leaked. like a year. It was, wasn't that leaked? No, it just appeared on their Steam page. It, it appeared on oh, the game okay. Steam. Like, just out of nowhere. I wouldn't call that a leak, per se. I just think they no. just put it there. Yeah. The reason that I'm putting this one here, this is what it was like for the longest time. And this is when it said... Decline of both Paradox and CA. Total war. It said March 2024 here. This DLC was originally going to be in March 2024, which we are halfway through right now. Then when it was officially announced like a couple of weeks ago, it's May 6th. Right? So it's been yeah. pushed back. What can we what can we draw from the fact it was pushed back? Potentially a couple of things. First of all, they're actually willing to delay something to get it done right. This could be a sign that it will be well implemented, maybe. Or, if you want to look at it negatively and cynically, they're pushing it back because development's going badly for it. You can look at it one of two ways, the hopeful or the cynical way. Which way do you look at it? I look at it the cynical way to be honest, because the way I, the way I see it, right, is Paradox doesn't care about making good DLC, but they do care about making DLC so bad that they have you know like a really big reaction to it, like you know your Leviathan reaction, you know the EU4 DLC where everyone's talking about how dog shit they are, but they don't mind they don't mind a mix, you know, and so if they can delay it a month then they can make something that isn't, you know, Leviathan bad. But they can still make something that's a total piece of shit. Hmm. And Given... just not have people be, uh, you know... They, they can increase the con the pop consciousness, but they're not increasing the militancy, you know? Yeah. Well, that's, a, that's actually a really funny way to put it. The militancy and consciousness divide. Yeah. People are conscious. I, I think people have been conscious of Paradox's problems for a long time. People complain about the DLC format... But the militancy is different. Like, no one's really taken action. No one's done yeah. things like boycotts. No one's gone crazy. You know, it's conscious, but not militant. Like, um, yeah, well, they've, 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 they've started doing that, you know, with things like Leviathan and EU4. And if you look at the, I think it's maybe three or four EU4 expansions afterwards, a lot of them, you know, are still mixed negative. I think one of them's positive. But um, nothing as bad as Leviathan. So they know, oh, okay, that's that's right at the line of, uh, you know, that's that's getting the militancy up. Yeah. If you want to see a company that has gone, well, its fan base has gone militant, and this was mentioned just by a, a super charter just now, Creative Assembly and Total War, they went militant. Like, they took yeah, uprisings, man. and they've boycotted games, <laughs> and they've gone, in, they've gone mad. I, I mean, they in a good way. Mad. I don't mean they've gone mental as in, oh, my God, they're crazy. I support them, but that's what militant fan base looks like. Paradox isn't quite there yet. They're towing the line. Yeah. They got a lot more defenders. They got a lot more defenders. 
So this is when, you know, this is when Sphere of Influence is coming out. 6th of May. It's been officially announced. They dropped a trailer. Uh, when did they actually drop this? I kind of forgot. It was like a week ago, two weeks ago. When was it? I'm not sure I haven't seen it. <laughs> I've got to be honest. I've read, I've read it. Um, but well, just while you sit up, I'm just going to pour myself another cup, cup of coffee. Stay sharp. You know, right. not, not, not cool uh, Mexico, South America. Ah, well, the next build up and overall topic with this DLC I want to talk about is, and yeah, we've actually looked at these four reviews. Right, well, we haven't looked at them. They're not visible or anything. But last time, like on a previous stream, we did. We did talk about the fact that there were four reviews and they're still there. Um, we, I don't want to rehash that because we have talked about it. I can't remember which stream it was. Um, but we did look at that. It's been there. Now, the next thing about Sphere of Influence is the name. So, like, since it's been announced for so long and it's been there for months and months, the talk about the actual name has died down. But when that name dropped, I remember, like, God, Rick 2 people, they've called, like, the major expansion that's going to turn around the game, their first expansion, like a year and a half after the release of the game, a game that shot on Victoria 2, that changed so much from it, gutted Victoria 2, and they called their first expansion Sphere of Influence, about a feature from Vic 2 that they didn't put in the sequel, um, but they kind of put markets in and changed it. Like, we, when this was announced, we felt it was a spit in the face, and it's just... They're take, they're, they put out the game that spat on Vic 2, and then they're reselling certain features of it, um, and or selling a DLC named after a feature that everyone loved in Vic 2. Maybe we didn't love the specifics of it. People complain about the way the sphere system actually works in Vic 2, but I mean, it's so iconic for Vic 2. Like, there's so many discussions about it in our videos. We meme on spears and spheres. It's such a huge part of the game. And then they call the first expansion that. I just That's kind of the context for it. That's where we're coming from as Victoria 2 players going into this DLC. So it's already put a bad taste in our mouth, is what I'm trying to say. That right, seems like I'm a back. catch twenty two spot. Welcome back. A catch twenty two spot. They can't do anything right in that mindset. Well, you're saying that we complain when they change the game, and we complain when they actually do add Vic two things in the game. Well, as we're going to show you, this is they're not actually adding anything from Vic two other than foreign investment. The sphere of influence system is not actually a system in Victoria three. I mean, if you go into even after this DLC, if you go into Vic three. There's nothing in the game called Sphere of Influence. This is just the name of the DLC. So when I'm talking about it being a spit in the face to Vic 2 fans, leaving a bad taste in our mouth, it's really, it's just the name. But from that perspective, I'll talk about the actual substance of the expansion soon, like objectively. But the name has already just put us in, in with, our, with the baggage. That's what I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Do you get it? Yeah, yeah. And what do you think of that yourself, by Chuck, which I've just been talking about, mainly just the name so far? Yeah, well, I think I think you, they've they've done themselves, uh, you know, a mischief here in terms of you shouldn't have, you know, if you want to take pressure off the game, then you wouldn't want to, and you know, it's controversial, you know, Victoria Two fans generally, it seems, do, do not enjoy Victoria Three, and so, and your fans of Victoria Three are not necessarily Victoria Two enjoyers. Um, so why reference it? You know, who are you getting excited? So I think it's just sort of like uh, unnecessary and, and, and probably causing uh, controversy when it could have been called anything. There's no need to call it Sphere of Influence. Yeah. On the other hand, I, I'm not going to say that the Victoria 3 team did this to spite us or anything like that. I genuinely believe in their intentions on the name actually i'm going to defend them for a moment when i complain about the name i'm not saying oh they did this despite us or i'm telling it i'm telling you what it uh, makes us think about it and the sort of the bad taste it might leave in our mouth but from their point of view i think of them as just going you know sphere of influence was a thing in victoria two people like let's just name it that i don't see them having bad intentions there um and that's a more personal aspect i guess yeah, yeah, the, and that's kind of my point. I don't, I don't see anything, uh, you know, like they're obviously not trying to be uh, offensive 
but I am saying like you, if if you're in charge of the team, the game hasn't gone perfectly. By you know, even the most positive people would say How things haven't been going perfectly. Why, um, why would you put that pressure on yourself by referencing something um, from the previous times. game? Then they just cry about toxic fans. I would call it tactless or a bit um, yeah yeah on death, that's that's to call it that. yeah. That's, yeah, that's kind of where I'm going with it. Gleevem, thanks for the five pound super chat. Paradox don't seem to understand why people are mad when they release a Hoy Four DLC. Just three focus trees for twelve seventy nine, and then they just cry about toxic fans. Where, where was the example of them crying about toxic fans? I think I guess we were kind of looking for that in their dev diary to release right after it. But, uh... Yeah, I was more talking about like um, I don't think they're crying about their fans. I don't know if that's fair, but yeah, I, I sometimes don't, they my... do. And well, I guess yeah. Paradox supporters and Paradox players like Reddit and forums often do that. Like their actual fans go into more of the talking about the. So called toxic elements. I also want to thank Matrim for your six euro super chat while well, we did Gleven's one. Thank you. Uh, you were asking about comparing CA and Paradox, but just to briefly answer, Creative Assembly are way further down the line of being shit than Paradox. Whenever we complain about Paradox, they're not as bad as CA. And we've seen yeah. that with their fan base getting more militant. All right. When you talk about the Victorian era in a history class, they talk about spheres of influence as just a historical term. Yeah. Um, but see, the thing is, to really delve deep into this whole name thing, sphere of influence is a mechanic in Victoria too. It's a really historical thing that all sorts of people talk about when they talk about the Victorian era. You, the Victorian era, you know, that's what people talk about. It's a historical thing. So it's a feature in Vic too. And it makes a lot of sense in Vic 2 to be named that and to be that. When Victoria 3 comes along, it's not there whatsoever. The, the term isn't used in any format, in any way. The mechanic sphere of influence is gutted and replaced by just a purely economic uh, relationship called a market. That's what was replacing it. Yep. And at that time, I thought, God, that's fucking shit. I mean, I love the concept of spheres of influence in Victoria 2. It's such a great model for looking at the 19th century. Then this game comes along, it doesn't have it. So we go through all the negative stuff with Vic 3, we can, you know, all the problems, goes to mixed reviews. And then, a year and a half later, their first DLC is going to be called Sphere of Influence. So I think when you contain all the baggage of what they did with Vic 3 and shitting on Vic 2, and then. I think we're all you get what I'm saying? I think that's enough to talk about the name, though. Yeah, yeah. Do you have anything think. else to say? No, I wouldn't have anything to add. I thank you, Douglas, for the 60 months of uh, membership. That guy, by the way, even when I was mainly streaming on Twitch, many people were still channel members, and that's one of them. So, the substance on it. Oh, God, here we go. This is where... <laughs> ooh, sphere of influence. I guess another thing to talk about overall, I'm looking at my notes... We do have the cost of it. We touched on that. The cost is obviously huge. It's like $30. It's nearly the it's nearly the price of the base game, and it's more than the price of the base game when the base game's on sale. So to the, and there's huge expectations on the expansion. It's gonna be the thing that turns the game around. And it costs that much. You're asking your fans to crack out that much money just to try and revive this game, which is kind of stagnating. It sucks. It's bad, right? Too expensive, obviously. And also, this is the final official obligation of the Grand Edition. So I talked about that in my last video as well. Um, I showed, you know, they've released previous DLCs that all met the different things that were in the Grand Edition. This is the last one. This is the big expansion. And when I talked about potential abandonment of the game, I always said, if they are planning to abandon it, they won't do it until at least after this. So if they were planning to abandon it, they will do it after this. And if this doesn't go well, that increases the chance of abandonment. I can't predict if they will or not. But again, this is make or break. This is the final obligation that they have to people who pre-ordered and got the Grand Edition. This is it. Yeah, and they've kind of pre-loaded it for failure. Like, uh, I'm not, who knows, this could be fantastic. Who knows? Um, but we'll, we'll talk more about the substance, which is what we're getting into. Um, but, you know, calling it a sphere of influence like we just covered, that puts a lot of pressure on it. 
um, making the price that high puts a lot of pressure. If you charge a high price point, you've got a you've got to justify that with a with a high quality product. Um, and so the the bar, you know, they've they've made the uh, bottom line pretty high for themselves. And then you talk about things like you know this is going to turn the game around, um, which I don't think they obviously they don't say explicitly, but definitely they, that's the vibe that you get. Um, you you you're kind of setting yourself up for failure. You get what I mean? Yeah, that's the thing about it. It's just all the pressure, the cost, the name, the baggage of the name. Already, the name already prejudices a lot of people against it because you get the the idea that they are reselling features in the massive expensive DLC that were in Vic 2, which is the case for one feature called Foreign Investment, but not the rest of it. So anyway, now, if we go to the trailer, do you just want to watch the trailer a bit? Let's have a look. Let's do it. Well, you did it. You united them into one powerful block. One banner, one ideology. Your good friends came gladly. And though some required a slightly firmer grip. Trailer, uh, let's pause it. I want to show you. Uh... Do I have this? Yes. I'm going to give Paradox a bit of credit for using octopus imagery uh, because that is a famous drawing or thingy from like the British Empire stretching its tentacles out all over the world. I'll give him credit for that, to be honest. it's uh, It makes sense. It matches something that's actually Victorian, which they failed to do previously. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, just watching the, the start of this, this is really fucking cool. Like the uh, artist who, you know, animated this, you know, the team or whatever, they've done an incredible job. This is really, really cool. I will say, you just mentioned, you know, we're talking about, it's a high quality trailer in terms of the, the 3D animation and stuff, which kind of, it, but on the other hand, it kind of goes to show, well, here they are again, putting out expensive 3D, paying someone for that, where, when they don't actually add the content to match, like the 3D models in the game. They're giving their 3D people a lot of great stuff to make, but yeah. the actual substance of the game doesn't match it, does it? <laughs> as, all, as is always the case. Not a single bullet has been fired. Not a single bullet has been fired. Bit of mix of accents there. Just uh, one problem. Well, I guess we can. This is the list of features that are in the game base, in the DLC, basically. We can come back to that and base. I've pre ordered it. I've pre ordered it. I'm no. Sorry. Oh, no, no! <laughs> so, so, that trailer was fucking sick. I'm sorry. How have we not fallen? We've fallen for this before. Fool us once. Shame on me. I cetera, actually, Spud, you know, I, I was reading that. I think that's going to really turn the game around. And uh, I'm, I'm in. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But that trailer clothing, was... <laughs> clothing is going to turn the game around. <laughs> that fucking... That trailer was sick. Seriously, one of the, cool, one of the cooler trailers I've seen recently. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. And there it is, of course, out May 6th. Pre-orders are out, of course, why wouldn't they be? And uh, it's part of the Grand Edition or the Expansion Pass. If you look carefully at the Expansion Pass thing, you can see the past DLCs in it. Voice of the People's there. The Art Buildings Pack is there. Uh, Dawn of Wonders there. Really, <laughs> this expansion is really standing on the shoulders of giants. <laughs> uh I guess that, yeah, Hayden in the chat mentions a good point, the zero gameplay. Yeah, it's 3D fancy trailer with zero, the zero gameplay in it, which is a fair point. But, you know, they uh, they don't put gameplay in the trailers. They leave that for the content creators who get it early. You've got to remember, come on, think about it. You know what uh, this reminds me of? The same feeling uh, we got, um, you didn't play World of Warcraft, but World of Warcraft, every time there was a new expansion, the trailers, the cinematics that come out with, fucking outstanding and then you play the expansion you'd be like oh well that was that was pretty bad but you'd be like but that fucking cinematic though so so good the yeah. cinematics they, they really do help get the the person who's not really interested in researching the game 
you know. Like my friend, my friend bought me Victoria 3 for Christmas. And he, he actually bought it for me because he hadn't played it. And he's like, oh, you go play it and tell me how it is. And I was like, mate, I can tell you how it is right now. Because, um, you know, he's a busy guy and he, he's got a job. And so he doesn't have time to, to research. He just knows that he enjoyed Victoria 2. So why wouldn't he enjoy Victoria 3? As we've been doing this, and fair points, as we've been doing this, um, there's been a new post by Paradox, actually, about Sphere of Influence as we've been on this stream. I just got an email. In reaction to the stream. Mm, I, I doubt it. Are they? Uh, yeah, it's like a guy said in the super chat earlier. They're hating on the toxic people. They've made a massive response against me. No. Um, <laughs> they've added. They've made a new. What's this? I'm looking through it. The fuck have they done? Uh, Sphere of influence and 1.7 overview. Is that not all, just the? Is that not just the uh, dev diary from yesterday? Which is this? Yeah, this is this. Dev Diary 108. Yeah. What the fuck am I getting emailed for then? What? They just sent me. A, a, you know, I subscribe to Paradox emails and things, right? They're sending me an email. They're they're, they're putting me off. They're just spamming me with emails to put me off. That was literally yesterday's deal. Uh, yesterday's fucking. Anyway. Line twenty five pounds is too much for a DLC. Yeah, Gleevem. Um, 25 pounds is too much for a DLC, but it's not enough for a spot gun super chat. Am I right? <laughs> Late emails, classic paradox. As per my last email, um, holy shit, I was right. There's a $50 okay, super no. chat. <laughs> he will return. He will return. 30 Thank US you. dollars from Douglas MacArthur. Thank you, Douglas and Gleevum. Well, I guess I'm pre-ordering uh, the DLC now. I have to use the money as he's instructed. <laughs> Remember, you should... Every time, it, if you're feeling bad about it, but just restart the trailer. Watch it again. It's, it's pretty good. No. No. <laughs> I, people were saying, if you do read between the lines, if you do look at what is the final bit of artwork, and this is the main artwork of the DLC, right? The one that goes along with it. This is... Uh... Well, where's she from? Would you say Chinese, based on the dress and the style? Chinese woman? San Francisco, I'd say. What? Just watch it again? No. <laughs> Korean? Oh, people know their stuff. A Korean? Oh, the flags? Yeah. Well, the... F oh, all right, the flags. I think, it, okay. I think, it's, the dr I think it's the dress. It's a Korean thing. I was just What's looking cool? at the flags and I was thinking, oh, well, it's just loads of different flags. But no, it's the flags representing the actual countries here. Thank you, Hayden, so much for joining the channel membership. I, yeah, it's Korean. And then this bloke is from Makran. Did I get that one right? It's Makran. Right, one of those uh, countries in modern-day Pakistan that starts independent at the start of the game. That's a good call. I had no idea. It's one of those. I mean, this is the modern Korean flag anyway. The the Korean kingdom in Victoria 2. Does it have that flag or doesn't it have... It has a different flag. Balochistan. One pre-order for a spear of influence, Mr. Spuddy. Anyway, so you have a Korean lady, a Baloch Baluchistani bloke, and then... Discord. Like, Discord? What? He just he looks like a guy who's he's Discord. He looks like a... Everybody else looks relatively happy to be there. But he looks so depressed. And he's the one who's signing the document. What's he signing? The artwork is subversive. There's no other way to put it. <laughs> we all know the message here. Britain is getting humiliated in signing an unequal treaty by a, a proud girl boss from Korea. <laughs> you know you know how it is. I don't care, but you know it is what it is. And then there's a Japanese man and a Turkish, an Ottoman that's, man. That's Emperor Meiji, isn't it? Is it him? Is it him himself? Yeah. Is it the man? I think it's him. It's himself, yeah. And this guy, he's like a depressed man. He's got a thousand yard stare, <laughs> receding hairline. Uh, and he's like, he's the soy jack. And they're making him sign an unequal treaty, even though somehow they're in a British looking parliament with a bunch of white people in the back. It's an Asian hug box. 
Yeah, it's the Asian yeah. hug box. It is the Asian hug box. And they humiliated Britain. Is it supposed to be Disraeli? So that you're saying this is actually an anti-Semitic artwork? Um, I don't think we should look too much more into this anyway. I think we should back it. We should back out. I agree. Oh, Hayden's been this. great. Five pounds from Hayden. Hayden, thank you so got much. Me, got me sphering till I influence all over the place, says Hayden. Thank you for the five pounds. <laughs> yeah, mate. thanks, mate. Yeah, but he's been very, he's been much more substantive in uh, chat, but you know, he's got to get it out somehow, I guess. Asian hugbox enforcing their wills on the weak British country. Um, is it not meant to represent new factions you could form? No, it's just literally national flags. It's the emotions. Unless it's the it emotions was... that look. Yeah. Wait, one more thing. The flag. Oh yeah, no, no, no. You're right. These four flags around the negotiating table. And this looks like a wrestling ring or something. Anyway, um, you know, like a stand and like a slightly elevated square in the middle. Anyway, these are actually not emblems from the sphere of influence emblem maker thingy. That's actually what it is. Yeah, well spotted. Because as we're going to talk about, that's part of the thingy. Now, wait a minute. Is there anything else I wanted to say? I, th I think I was going to say something about this or something. But no, that's like... We've talked about everything other than the actual substance of the DLC so far. We're going to get onto that. Yeah. Um, Not me sparing till I influence all over DA place. DA place. We've got the list of features here. I'll put it up. Pause it there. This is what we'll have. The chat is in the way a little bit, but it says create and customize your own power block. Play the great game of Central Asia. Discover all new diplomatic options. That's what it says behind the chat. Um, okay, here we go. Feature one, which is the main thing that like the name is the DLC is kind of based around this. It's the major feature power blocks. Power blocks. And actually we can put this back and I can get you the screenshot of a power block. This is a power block. Form a power block, customization, emblem, principles, right? So the power block mechanic in Victoria 3, as they will outline a little bit more in this dev diary actually, we can maybe look. Multinational associations that can be formed by high ranking countries, great powers, and which take a variety of forms based on their identity and principles. So, well, you can see them selecting principles here. Um, you can build a statue. It's got an emblem. Anyway, um, the principles can be added and removed over time. Power blocks are highly customizable in other ways, such as choosing their name and customizing their emblem, as well as creating custom statues to reflect the glory and reach of your block. Thank you, Douglas MacArthur, for a five dollars. Saying Asian Hugbox DLC now, Nars Reno Immersion Pack next. Who knows? So, um, I'm trying to look for where the uh, the identity. So when you form a power block, you can give it an identity, which says what kind of power block it is, basically. Um, I'm trying to find where that is. Any idea, PyChuck? Central identity pillar. This is vas vassalization. Oh, central identity pillar vassalization. All right, okay. Yeah. So yeah, it looks it. like the identity is the another big one. Marinara sauce. $30 for a DLC. I'd rather pay 100 to dox my, my own full Christian name, which I hope everyone has forgotten at this point. Well, I've forgotten, if you ever... I've forgotten us. too. I don't know. I've forgotten too. Although, now that I think about it, isn't that... Oh, wait a minute, Pachaka. Remember when we were on our one of our long outro chatting sessions after one of these streams, right? And there was yes. someone super chatting a lot with their name. And then, like, the next oh, stream, we came back and Maranara yes. Sauce was there. And, and Maranara Sauce was like, that was me. From the previous stream. True, true. However, luckily, I forgot what that name was. And even if I knew or remembered, I wouldn't say it. No, no, we wouldn't. We wouldn't do that. Uh, good old buddy Marinara Sauce. Yeah. Thank you so much for the $30 super chat, though. So the, the identity pillar is this. So this power block that France is forming in the screenshot is one based on vassalization. So... I mean, he's going to add a bunch of people to the power block and they're going to be vassals. It's, this, this power block is a grouping of French vassals. Other types of power blocks are like markets 
for customs union custom unions customs unions which is shown in one of the other screenshots i.e the Zolverine power block which its identity pillar is a customs union and that you can see it on the map there's a there's a map mode for them I think something oh you, when you when you're hovering over the Zolverine you can see it on the map yeah yeah so we're explaining we're explaining the feature before we tear it down like I'm explaining what it is I'd rather yeah. pay 100 to dox my own full Christian name, which I hope everyone has forgotten at this yeah, point. It reminds me of um, Great Powers and uh, EU4. Like, uh, adding something, you know, not in terms of, like, imp implementation, but, like, what I'm saying is, like, it's, it's just it's just more... Uh, just more shit. Like, it doesn't really... And it's, it's covered by pretty much what we already have. You know, if you can already vassalize people through an exciting diplomatic play. There's a, there's a few points that I have about power blocks. And many people have already alluded to one of the points, or multiple of the points in the chat. Uh, take a look at something here for my first point. That's not the right image. That's for later. <laughs> um, this is Stellaris. And this is a, a federation in Solaris. This is a grouping of nations, countries, or whatever you call them in Solaris, empires, with its own... And by the way, one of the things that it says about these... Um... Okay, well it's not in this dev diary, but power blocks have cohesion. I swear to God I read that somewhere. Power blocks in Victoria 3 are going to have a cohesion modifier. I swear to God I read that, but I can't control F it. Someone in the chat know? You know, Pie Trucker? No, I'll have a look around for it. You carry on. I swear to God they're adding cohesion. Um, is it in here? Uh, first screenshot. Zolverine. Yes, there it is. There it fucking is. I was right. There is a cohesion bar, and it's at 50% in the Zolverine. And then you go to Solaris, which, which has cohesion, and it has... Uh, let me just blow up the image so I can see it myself on my own screen, so I can compare. Wait. Uh, yeah. The Stellaris thing, like when you make a federation, I don't know Stellaris that well, I don't know the mechanic, but I believe it's very similar. So when you create a federation in Stellaris, you can give it certain principles uh, and laws and things within it. There's different levels. In fact, the Stellaris mechanic is probably a lot more fleshed out and interesting than the Vic 3 one and makes a lot more sense. For yeah. The, for what it is. And there's a cohesion modifier. Um, tell me, Pie Chucker, who made all these updates to Solaris. Was it Wissington? Yeah, there was a man by the name of Wissington. Who made Victoria yeah. 3? Now, that was a different man. That was, uh... Anwood. Manwood. Ah. So, same, yeah. same, it's sort, of, sort of like, it's same Pokemon, but an evolution, perhaps. Ah... I see. So it was different people. It was it was two different different people, I think. Kingmaker in the chat. We have I have made that joke before. I object. <laughs> oh. oh god. Mods in case just mods be ready to clamp down. Stay, stay, stand by. Mods on standby. I'm going to need a lot of mods on Sunday by the way. By the like a, yeah. the viewer count on this stream is mental. I love thank you so much for tuning in. This is huge. I wonder if I can get more on Sunday for the Vic 2 game. Imagine that. Oh, yeah. Like that would be awesome. 600 viewers. Oh, my God. Uh, I think and, it can uh, happen. Yeah, I mean, there'll probably be quite a few um, channel memberships then. So if you want to get in now, then you can show that you're you're the first through the breach as we change back to YouTube. I think we can make it happen. I think we can get yeah. 600 plus viewers on Sunday. Which will be the yeah, most be... viewers I've ever had on a Victoria 2 stream. I think the most I've had is like 200 to 300 somewhere. Maybe I've you had, had the, a lot, though. Back in you had a huge, you had a huge Halloween stream. 
Yeah, um, I can't remember the that. Yeah, I can't remember the numbers, but I remember that being nuts. Like it was, it was crazy. I'll look into it later. But anyway, that's uh, I, I, in a lot of my Twitch streams lately, and people might know. I've looked at the view account and felt doomer. Now I can look at it, and I, I might. I'm taking this moment to bask in it because uh, we've had some low view account streams lately. Now we're finally back, and guess what? All I had to do was talk about Victoria Three. Yeah. But, um, yeah. But I like to think. No, I, I'm I'm very happy with the stream though. I've done my homework on all the th content in the stream, especially the Victoria Three stuff. So I do believe it's. Uh, I think uh, you know, it's not like I just put on a title in Victoria Three and just go ah blah 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 shit shit shit. No 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 yeah. I've put we, in my we... effort and research here. Yeah. So. I just wanted to draw this comparison because it's kind of the point of the stream, really, what I've actually titled it, which is that Victoria 3 is creatively bankrupt and they're just lifting mechanics out of other games. Uh, what do you think of that? Chat and Pie Chucker. Is that an accurate statement of events? I think it is. Oh, absolutely. I mean, somebody mentioned in chat uh, earlier, I can't remember the name, unfortunately, but like, looking at this, uh, how bloated it is already, and this is like we say, fairly new game. It's it's more insane than EU4. Just buttons fucking everywhere. If you just look at this image, it's like, this image instills anxiety. It's just insane. And how could you have this many buttons and no substance? You know? Ugh. Yeah. Creatively I... bankrupt is 100% true because just adding shit after shit from other games and anything that is original and like a fresh idea... The implementation has been horrible, and so they haven't been able to, you know, defend their their uh, uh, you know original concepts because all of the implementation of their original concepts fucking suck, you know. And so you're your own marketing for you get what I mean. It's just yeah, shocking. I get what you mean, and there is also a discussion to be had about how Victoria Three initially tried to have loads of new ideas, and now they're rehashing things from other games, and it's um. Uh, someone might go, ah, but you're saying Spud Gun. When they tried new things, it was bad. And when they recycled old things, it's also bad. My answer to that is yes. Yes, In exactly. both cases, it's true. Uh, but 100%. I can go into a lot more detail on why <laughs> as well. Um, yeah. Also, I wanted to quickly look at this as well. If you look at this, right, on the UI, sphere of influences, or should I say um, power blocks, the power blocks add a whole new button to the UI. Like there's... Government, economy, buildings, trade, military, power blocks. There's a whole button on the UI for it. And it's on the bigger buttons, not the smaller buttons like Diplo, Research, Culture, and all that. It's a big button. Which I think is... Like, are they? Is this big enough of a feature to justify it? They're probably going, guys, we need to make it a big button. We need to make it look like this is very substantial and there's a lot to this. $28 button, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, where do we go on this now? Um, well, and it's, yeah. oh God, like, can we just, sorry, I'm not to like go nuts on it, but like, the so you've got mana up the top, you got the time on the right, the outlier is fucking huge, and then in the bottom right is events, lenses, this panel, and then it's insane. Who could look at this and go like, you gotta keep in mind, I don't own Victoria 3, and I've, I've only played it a touch, um, but just like, how could you look at this and be like, this is, this is fun. This is, this is what I want to do with my time. Fuck me. Well, I'm going to bring some nuance to your point and a comparison to Victoria 2. Because with Victoria 2, the UI is also overwhelming and there's loads of stuff on it. So that's one of the complaints about it, right? There's just too much stuff and too many numbers. This is like that, but much worse. The reason is... In Victoria 2's UI, you have the panels at the top with your relevant information like pops and everything, your economy. Each little panel had relevant information about its subject within it and numbers. What Victoria 3 has is just buttons which take you to the menu that has the information in it. So it's just yeah. as cluttered and busy as Victoria 2's UI, at least now. Stuff they've added to it, maybe, but it doesn't have the information that Victoria 2's UI has that you need that's really great to be able to see on the base menu without clicking something. So, and as well as that, Victoria 3 marketed itself as, well, our UI is going to be so much better. We've hired, we've got UX people, we've got a whole UX dev diary. 
It's all designed to be very intuitive and all that, so it's claiming to be better while being worse, actually. Uh, and in order to find information, you have to go through at least one menu, sometimes two. But on Victoria 2, you can just see on the base screen along with your map. There. Yeah. I have nothing nice to say. <laughs> this is fucking appalling screenshot. It's just horrible to look at. Uh, I guess... I'll try to say something positive. The actual outline for Solverine looks quite cool. How, so why is the outline on the map that? Has that got something to do I with... I actually uh, think that looks adorable. Like, what are the patterns within it? Like, the Solverine is a customs union, economic union between German states. Why are there, like, fucking flowers? I think, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think it's got any relevance at all, but I think it looks aesthetically pleasing. Also, yeah. Now, now, here's the thing about power blocks as well, right? And when I said this, when I pointed this out in the Discord, I think I got some reactions because people were like, oh my God, that is horrible. So, it's cool, you nerd. Hey, it's, what, what do flowers have to do with the raw power of Prussia, the economic power of Prussia dominating the smaller German nations? It, it looks cool. Listen, I'm going to take the devil's advocate. It does look cool. You you think the flowery bit within Zolverine yeah. is the part that yeah. looks good in this? Yeah, I do. I'm sorry. I think it looks... Well, listen, I'm not, I'm not like saying it looks amazing. I'm just saying, like, I'm trying to say something nice about this appalling fucking screenshot that we're looking at. All right. And that looks all right to me. That looks fine. I like that. It's okay. Right. Okay. I mean, I'm wondering if you can... It never says, and I don't think it said in any of the dev diaries if you can customize that on the map. Maybe I'm assuming you probably can, right? Just for argument's sake, to give them the benefit yeah. of that. But uh, I also wanted to say that when you when you actually go on the sphere of the power, oh for fuck's sake! I am every time I'm about to, I'm calling this sphere of influence. I'm calling the power block the sphere, even though it's a power block and it's not called sphere of influence. And sphere of influence is the name of the whole DLC. They've got their naming so off, as well as the fact that this is an economic union and not a power block. Um, yeah. People are calling you a paid shill, Pachaka, for calling the flowers nice. How, how do you respond? Listen, I actually I was about to say I see people backing backing me up here, Baron Arasaurus. I've got a couple of people saying that they agree. Well, what if I also call them paid shills? <laughs> yeah. Well, what if I do ad hominem attacks? <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't market supposed to represent this shit? That's going to be my point now. So my next point is... Um, power blocks are being added to the game, if you get the DLC, on top of markets. So markets and power blocks are going to be two separate mechanics in this game now. Remember when you were talking about bloat? Yeah. So you're going to have to manage a market and a power block. At the same time, but. different things. At least, I mean, that's the that's the logical conclusion of this. Yeah. I mean, there's there is some crossover where if you form an economic power block, isn't that just a market? I don't know. I mean, if you actually, if you just look at the screenshot, you still got Prussian market under here, as well as now Zolverine, like two different things. Do you see what I mean? There's yeah two things you have to manage like imagine this Ima imagine our discussions in victoria 2 multiplayer about spheres and stuff you're like oh hey you can uh can you add me to your sphere yeah sure i'll put my points in you all right cool oh can you remove me from your sphere yeah cool all right i just need to make some money but imagine it in victoria 3 you've now got two things can you add me to your power block sure i'll join the power block can you also add me to your market yes at the same time can i be in your power block but not your market okay yeah. Cool, we'll manage that. Can I be in your market and just get your goods, but I don't want to join your power block. Um, so this is adding... It's adding more width to the game, more bloat, but not depth at all. Uh, fucking pizza, man. A whole two systems, overwhelming. Two systems that do essentially the same thing. Come on, you got to be reasonable here. You're, uh, the, this the, is not a good point, pizza, man. You're the If anyone yeah. hears the page, shill, I, I don't know, I'm looking at you. I'm not saying yeah. that. Can I, can I, no, I was going to take it too far. I'm actually not going to say that. <laughs> if I give you enough super chats, are you a paid shill for me? Yes, that's true, Mariana Sauce, actually. If you, if you want me to subtly influence for anything that you want me to, just DM me. Thank you for the $10 super chat. 
Now, what I'm saying is, when it comes to these two things, markets and power blocks are two mechanics that are now separate things that you both have to manage that kind of do similar things, but kind of, kind of do similar different things. It's uh, It's like a weird Venn diagram. That's what I'm kind of imagining. So there's two circles, and then they cross over a bit in the middle with some of the things they do similarly. But at the same time, they're two different systems you have to manage. I do feel like... If you feel like if you're in a power block, probably will auto be in the market. Well, maybe. But good to know. Do they tell us that? Okay. Yes. Oh, maybe they do tell us that, Pie Chucker. I was just staring at that screenshot before and add, add principles... Fucking Paradox could add some principles, that'd be nice. A power block might take the form of a single great power and countries under its influence. A multilateral military alliance between several major great powers. Or an economic cooperation with numerous countries in a unified market. The use of the word market here is not to do with the mechanic of markets. This is still looking like a different thing. It's a... Uh, Anyway, it's also factions from Hoi 4 and all that as well, yeah. Um, uh, power block is just your entire hog box. Yeah. You know what else there is about this as well that I want to talk about? How the idea of giant blocks of countries with a name and an emblem absolutely does not fit in the 19th century. Does it? No, no. I mean, like, uh, the the world is running, you know, still, especially for great powers, you know, very mercantilist societies. And so you'd, there wasn't a great degree of um, cooperation. What you had in the 19th century were empires with semi-autonomous people under them, an empire. But in terms of diplomacy and stuff, you had a series of very complicated unilateral treaties between different countries um, and stuff, alliances, individual alliances, you will, you start to see blocks and things forming later in the time period. And to be fair, the Entente and the Central Powers are within the Victoria Three time period, but that's later. And this, this DLC isn't claiming to be Entente Central Powers, it's claiming to be a dynamic thing where you can invent your own things anyway. Um, blocks and things it's more 19th and 20th and 21st century uh power blocks you have a lot more of them even in the modern day nato yeah. is a power block um all these different fucking things are power blocks bricks is a power block it's got a name and an emblem what kind you didn't have that in 1850 you, you just had a series of a web of treaties and alliances between countries Apart from the Commonwealth, and which is two different a very... Types. I'm not comparing yeah. them as the same thing. Those are two different types of power blocks, okay? Okay, before you start yeah. saying I'm saying they're the same thing. One example of a power block that I can think of from that time is the Commonwealth, but that's a very, very unique thing, you know, to, to the UK. Commonwealth, well, it yeah. was named that in like the 1930s and 40s. The Holy Alliance. Yeah. The Holy Alliance of Russia, Russia and Austria. Power block. Hmm. The EU is also going to... The EU is a, a vassal power block type, if you look at the types, remember. Uh, kind of, because it's political. And some of them are economic, and some of them are a military alliance like NATO. But here we are talking about the 21st century when we're talking about a Victoria 3 expansion, eh? The German and Italian confederations? Yeah. Uh, how are you going to get the German Confederation with Austria and not the rest of its empire in this game? I don't know. Latin Monetary Union. Hmm. The HRE. It's abolished by the time of this game. Um, the HRE is kind of feudalism. CK2. So we can have these debates, we can look at individual things in the time period that we could maybe call a power block or not. But let me just draw your attention back to the screenshot here. You're designing this with its own custom emblem and name and principles. Um, War of the Triple Alliance? You mean in South America? 
Well, they managed to put the War of the Triple Alliance in the game through their previous DLC and it didn't have power blocks yet. You see, you don't need to have power blocks to have alliances and wars and yeah. sort of blocks. You don't yeah, need to also give if you think, an emblem. Yeah, if you think about Victoria 2's uh, portrayal of uh, the era in terms of like springtime of nations, birth of nationalism, um, having like some <laughs> random book with a checkered red and green flag, I mean, it, it's it's... Blocks are like uh, anti-nationalism, and this is the hey, birth I of chocolate. nationalism. I'm, I'm, yeah. uh, I'm playing as fucking, I'm playing as France in Victoria Three. Uh, let's form a book club. <laughs> yeah. Join my hey guys, join my book club. Imagine playing multiplayer. Join the French book club, and we'll read a book in between every session. And we'll have a name and an emblem. Yeah, sounds great. Great DLC. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, um, <laughs> Science Union. The Entente book. Uh, it will be memeable without a doubt. That's the thing. It's going it, to... I'm just trying to imagine how it's going to be. Yeah, I don't diss book clubs at all. Come to Spudcore, the Discord, and join the book club there. If um, Trabeth makes it active again. But what I'm saying... Imagine how this is going to play out in multiplayer. Yeah. I mean... The LARPers, I can see, I can see the LARPers having a good, fu good fun with this, right? The LARPers will enjoy this in multiplayer. So Hammurabi and his diss track video, he, he'll enjoy this, right? He plays yeah. role play games. But when you're role playing, if if you want to role play the nineteenth century accurately, you won't be using this feature very much to create a, a fancy custom emblem because it's not what no. the nineteenth century was, really. Hug boxes are now a mechanic. True. But, um, God. Oh, get a headache talking about this shit. I oh, know. It's so depressing. We it's haven't even awful. talked about the other features in this DLC, but there is so much to say about this. Uh, yeah. In terms of rehashing features from other games versus coming up with the new games, I just want to take you back to the launch and stuff. Remember, I've crit I criticize Victoria 3 so much for shitting on Victoria 2, right? It went, it, direct, it went in a different direction than Victoria 2. So they did that. They came up with new features. They tried to innovate and make new stuff. Loads of people praised them for at least trying to make new stuff, even if it didn't turn out well. I never did. I think it was a flawed idea to begin with. Now a year and a half later, they ha their, their new stuff has basically failed. 1.5 is bringing the war system more towards traditional micromanagement and Hoi 4. Uh, and now, and of course they also add companies, which is a Hoi 4 feature. They've expanded a bit more on the economic system, which is Hoi 4 anyway. Um, and now this, which is just like Stellaris mechanics. And I mean, the more we talk about the other features in this expansion, the more we're going to talk about rehash mechanics, like fucking subject interactions. Fucking yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> EU4. Pizza Man, Pizza Man says, uh, "Play the trailer again. It's getting depressing." No, I'll just I'll lose my train of thought. Um, so they failed with their new shit, and then they're trying to go towards like rehashing other games' shit, and yeah. that's how they're creatively bankrupt because they their their new ideas failed, and now they're desperately trying to pull out stuff that may have worked in other games to fix it and recover the game. That's basically my overall point of the stream and the the theme, the creative yeah. bankruptcy. A lot of these overlord actions are like direct concepts from EU4. A point colonial governor. Knowledge sharing, for fuck's sake. Knowledge sharing, yeah. Exempt from service. Very EU4. Um, yeah, also, like the difference between the free patch versus the DLC. I think even all of these subject interactions are DLC rather than free patch. So in terms of the difference between adding a lot of free stuff, free patch stuff versus fleshing out their DLC, they're barely adding anything to the free stuff uh, column. They're, they're going all out on making this all about the DLC. So 
people who don't want to fork out $30 are going to be feeling a little bit thrown under the bus. Uh, declare bankruptcy. Increase autonomy. Jesus Christ. That's very uh, hoy, I've just realized. With, uh, it's hoy as well. Common... Yeah, yeah, very, very hoy. It Jesus. was a hoy DLC, but it's hoy. Yeah. Fucking hell. Yeah, just rehashing the features in every game except Victoria. <laughs> except foreign yeah. investment, um, which we'll talk about. I just, you know, other than foreign investment, I just want to just tell them if you're going to rehash features from other games, at least make it Victoria 2 for once, right? Sphere of Influence, it might be called that, but Power Blocks and all that has nothing to do with Vic 2. Yeah. At all. But yeah, foreign investment is coming, and uh, I guess we could talk about that. You move to it. Interest group lobbies is... Well, it's a nice diplomatic thing, I guess, here. Uh, if you do something diplomatic, like fight a war, you'll get pol politically within your country, you might get people agitating to go to war against that country again, for example. So foreign investment is coming with the DLC. This is such nitpicking, Lamar. Most of these subject interactions were already in the game. What are they adding in the fucking DLC then? And why is this screenshot from the DLC page? What are you on about, anime PFP? <laughs> I'm looking at the DLC page. I'm looking at a screenshot advertising the DLC and you're telling me this is already in the game? Where are we here? Yeah, doesn't make any sense. The Hoy mechanics have already been added. I don't think so. Some of the stuff obviously is already uh, existing things, like having subjects, if that's what he's referring to. I don't know. Uh, I'm, we're talking about the DLC here. Now, foreign investment. Accept knowledge sharing and exempt from service. What? I get, yeah. So, but there is more shit like impose laws. That's new. Um, they've added new interactions. Now, let's go to this. Where the fuck is this? Subject interactions. A new group of diplomatic actions that can be done either by an overlord against their subjects or by a subject against their overlord. These include actions such as decreasing autonomy, training the level of payments owned by subject, appointing a new ruler, or allowing them to manage their own market. Certain subject actions, such as increasing autonomy or granting market independence, will be available to even those without the sphere of influence. So, some of them will be in the DLC, some of them aren't in it, and some of them are already in the game. And, and that's kind of confusing as to which one's which. Mm. There's... was there... I think there was another screenshot? No. About this? No. Just this. Oh, fucking hell. I don't know. Subject interactions is EU4 indeed. Is this another large menu to click through? Um, yeah, diplomacy. Yeah, you have to do to get to this menu. You'll have to do two clicks. You'll open diplomacy, which will by default start an overview, and then you have to switch to subjects. So two clicks to get to this. Did they have one original idea in this DLC? No. All of it, 100%, is either taken from other games or rehashing foreign investment from Vic 2, which should have been in the base game. Mm. Yeah, that, that's absolutely clear. Clothing was original. Well, the first people to invent clothing were Adam and Eve. So, uh, I don't think it is original. Where are we? I'm waiting for the super chat to come in. So, Paradox will make every and any change to Victoria 3 as long as it's not a change that will make it more faithful to Victoria, Victoria 2. Except for an investment. Every um, time we say that they're adding stuff from other games, we'll have to do a little asterisk and go, except for an investment. Thank you, Marinara Sauce, for another $10. The economic improvements are pretty original. I haven't talked about them yet. It's, yeah. They're adding the fact that you can have building ownership be from anywhere, which is fine. Yeah. Uh, that's nice, and it's it's part of the free patch, so it's less reason to buy the DLC. Now let's talk about foreign investment, which is actually the elephant in the room. 
Guys, I think Pie Chucker might have fallen asleep. <laughs> Oh, no, I'm here. I'm here. I'm just, no, <laughs> we're, I, we're, we're just waiting to get into it. I don't mean it in the sense that I wish you were talking. I mean, like we might have bored him to death. No, I'm hanging in there. All right, hang in there, mate. Uh, or an investment here. Do we have a menu for that? A screenshot? I mean, what's this? Any? What's this? This is the great game. Does like, talk? Let's talk about aesthetics of this for a second. What the fuck is this? What is this highlight within Russia here? What are these little semi these circles? Tree planting? I have no idea. I don't get it. Again, it looks. Uh, oh, actually, it doesn't look aesthetically pleasing because there's a weird double line there. Uh, weird. Like the pattern doesn't loop properly. Ah, disappointing. That's the only. That's the only nice thing I've had to say, and they haven't even looped the pattern properly. Disaster. Kingmaker is telling me that the. Great game, which I haven't talked about yet, is based on the struggle mechanics for Crusader Kings 3. Oh, God. Yeah, oh, I actually have something to say about this. Wait, wait, wait. Cause... Sorry, wait, don't do... Hold your breath, because I want to do... Hold my breath? Okay. No. Hold your thought. Hold that thought. Because I wanted okay. to talk about foreign investment, but this here is representing the great game. It's like waves of Russianness going out over Central Asia. Or something. Anyway, I was looking for foreign investment if it is in a screenshot. Uh, is there a screenshot of foreign investment? Is this one? Is this showing foreign investment? I don't think it is. I think Foggle privatization is uh, an economic change that's free. Um, is this foreign investment, guys? What's this? Uh, what am I looking at? A building. I am um, certainly looking at a building. Yeah, but no, no I can't see. Oh anything. no, this is okay. This is no, yeah, okay. This is because they're separating out the owners of buildings, and this is a manor house where a bunch of capitalists or nobles probably live. It's nothing to do with foreign investment. Ismail Berzeg is flavor. So is he. Great game flavor. The building registry is that foreign investment? It's this. Is this a new way to look at your buildings? Or is this already in the game? This looks new. I think. The building registry? Yeah. It's not I foreign it's investment new. anyway. Ownership on the yeah. top? Ownership, ownership, ownership. I'm looking for ownership. Fuck it, nah, fuck. The foreign investment is not screenshotted. There's no, no, it isn't. We don't know what it's going to look like, but let's read it. Foreign investment makes it possible for both governments and autonomous private investors to construct building levels in other countries and enjoy the profits generated. To construct in another country, you need to have certain diplomatic pacts in place or otherwise be a part of a power block that allows such construction. If you do, and this, okay, so wait, hold on a minute, right? Power block, does that include a market or not? Do you have to be in the same market as someone to do it or a power block? And if you don't own sphere of influence, can you do it with the market without a power block? Because you don't have power blocks. No, I don't think so. It's only a, a specifically say in your subjects. Well, this is a different thing, right? So if you don't buy the DLC, you're still getting some foreign investment, but only in your subjects. In order to invest all over the world, I guess it makes sense that you can't invest in people in your market without the DLC, because without the DLC, you can only do your subjects. Markets are redundant because of power blocks. Mate, no, 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 no. Markets still exist, despite having power blocks in the game on top of them. If you look, the Zolverine is a power block. And if you look here, Prussian market still exists as a market with its stuff, with no shortages. Markets still exist. You can see ownerships in manor. Where's that fucking manor house? Ownership. Where's ownership, guys? Uh, uh, ownerships. What are we looking for? Levels owned, building, subsistence farm. Okay, the people from this manor house own subsistence farms and rye farms. Right? Property portfolio. Yeah, that makes sense. 
So theoretically, they could own foreign stuff as well, but this is more to do with the economic changes than the foreign investment. They're saying it was in the building registry. <sighs> I, <laughs> I guess. Uh, ownership. This is this is this doesn't matter. What matters is they're adding foreign investment to Victoria Three a year and a half after the game came out. Okay. Yeah. So let me give you a fun fact, everyone. Let me let me spout a fun fact to you. Do I have it? Have I? Yes. Okay. Foreign investment was also added in House Divided, Victoria Two's first expansion. So both Victoria 2 and 3 are adding foreign investment in their first expansion. Right? There's a fact for you. Mm. With Victoria 2, it took them 538 days to add it between when the game first came out and its first DLC came out. With Victoria 3, it's taken them 559 days to add it. So that's uh, between the 25th of October and the 6th of May 2024. Victoria 2 came out, it took them that amount of time to add it. It's taken them longer to add foreign investment to Victoria 3 than to Victoria 2 since Victoria 2 came out. There's a fun little fact for you, but that's mostly just a fun fact. The real point is yeah. that this obviously should have been in the game from the start. Yeah. Foreign this, fucking this, investment. Yeah. In the 19th century, in an economic simulator, not only is this Victoria 3... Like, Victoria 3 gutted other mechanics to make it an economic-focused game. And it didn't have foreign investment. You could not invest, you could not build a building in another country until you buy this DLC. Um, Victoria 2 also made it a DLC. That doesn't justify Victoria 3 also doing it. Like, just because one iteration of a franchise sells an important feature in an expansion doesn't mean the next one should also rehash and do exactly the same thing almost the same amount of time after the game came out. It's wrong in both cases. Uh, more so for this one, because it's a sequel and it's more, much more expensive. Much more expensive. Mm. And they have a bigger team. And yet it's taken them longer. Um, and more money. Massive massive company. It's uh, really bad. I really don't like yeah. this. Yeah. Uh, it's not too much to say about it as well. It's just sort of self-evident. I'm a few hours late, can you start over? Yes. <laughs> so, uh, welcome everyone. I want. I just want to talk about briefly being suspended from Twitch. Yeah. Paltrum, the situation. We've already mentioned that earlier on the stream, definitely. They def yeah, the Hoi4 DLC, we talked about that one. We could talk about it again, though, so we can restart it for Mace. You want to talk about the Hoi4 DLC again? No, I don't. I don't want to talk about the way 40. It's a lot again. funnier than this because we're looking at it from the outside, right? The yeah, one. yeah. This one, we're actually scouring it and looking at the details and going this, they're adding this, they're adding this. Yeah. It's not as fun as looking at the Hoi 4 one. Customs unions were already a thing. You mean markets? No, but there was a custom, there was a custom unions thing as well. That does sound familiar. What's that? Uh, I think it was a. I think it's part of markets. You could have a customs union within the market. It was like a um, influence thing. I can't, I'm just trying to think. Guys, chat. It's in Dev Daddy Twenty. The customs union is how you add people to your market, right? So it's a, is it the diplomatic button? Yeah. That allows people to be in your market. Yeah. So really, <laughs> it's just an, another phrase that they're adding to overcomplicate things. So you've got a power block and you've got a market and you've got a customs union and they're sort of the same thing, but they're sort of not the same thing. And one of them just means you're adding another one to your one thing that's also kind of your other thing, basically. Uh, customs union. We need to make a Venn diagram of customs union, market, and <laughs> yeah, power block. Yeah. Customs union is a subject type with massive autonomy. They're just in your market, basically. Oh, God. Oh god, it is, isn't it? That's right, and it's also that's also going to be vassal um, interactions. You can interact with your vassal in your customs union. Yeah. 
Uh, I had other points I wanted to make. What, what does everyone think of the fact that they're making it so... They're kind of adding foreign investment light if you don't buy the DLC for thirty dollars to the base game in the in the patch, what do you think of that? That is so shitty, especially since it's a Victoria Two mechanic that's been there for like twelve years in Victoria Two. Yeah, I mean, I think I think they're trying to pull up, pull on something that uh, that used to be a real bonus of Paradox, which is free patches coming alongside DLC that would add substantial mechanics and changes um even if you didn't buy the dlc uh which was very true of eu4 like uh i remember being a kid high school kid playing eu4 and couldn't buy the expansion whenever i liked um and enjoying yeah really enjoying the free patches and then and then buying the dlc later so that was like one of the former nice things so maybe they're trying to harken back to a nicer a nicer time um that'd be my guess i i think but, um, well, the thing about this is, over the past months, since the first, well, since the bad reception to the initial game, and then especially the shitty reception to its first couple of DLCs, they've leaned more into the free patches. Patch 1.5 was completely free, with a very small DLC next to it that had nothing to do with it. So they've gone more towards the free patches, and that was a good thing. I've, I've said it on record in that last video, they were much more friendly to the consumer lately, because they've been leaning into the free patches and adding whole new mechanics to the game, fixing and existing mechanics, quote unquote fixing. But now with Sphere of Influence, they're going very far over to the DLC side of the spectrum again and locking mechanics behind it and not adding much new uh, in the free patch. Although there are a few good things being in the free patch, of course, like uh, building ownership, and a couple of new subject interactions, I guess. But the, the overall thing is, and they're doing that because they have to justify the massive price of the expansion. Because they have to match the paradox paradox, which is the, the sort of balance, the scales, if you will, between what to add in the free patch to please all the people who feel like they got shortchanged by the shitty release of the game versus um, the expansion to satisfy the people who are paying for that, who paid for the grand edition. They're trying to balance that, and it's a... Uh, a paradox, a conundrum of their own making. Previously, in Victoria 3, they've leaned more towards the free patch because of the overall reception of the game. And that led to, say, for example, um, fucking Voice of the People getting mostly negative, shitty reviews because they added not much content in that. They made, and they focused more on the free stuff. Now they're going the other way. They're adding loads of shit that I've already kind of dismantled to the... Yeah. DLC, whereas they're giving us foreign investment light. Only your subjects if you don't have the DLC. That is what is happening here. People are saying this is capitalism. Yeah, it's money. That's the world we live in. I don't know if you know that. Yeah. Hello, how might go? Oh, I've got things to say about the great game, if we are shifting forward. I think we should probably move to the great game now. Uh, so, how might go asks if uh, EU5 segment has been talked about. Not yet. We're still going to move on to that. And I'm so glad that we're getting this shit out of the way so we can talk about something yeah. that's actually fucking exciting and good. Even if yeah. it's going to flop and fail us in like two years' time, the EU5 shit, at least it's kind of nice now. Right, we've got something good to talk about. Other yeah. than uh, Guild of Destiny and all the other positive projects, of course. Right, uh, so take it away, Pie Trucker, about the great game. So this is a new mechanic, I guess, between Russia and the UK for, you know, you guys know about the great game, the influence in, in Central Asia uh, and India. But um, this, is, this reminds me, obviously, of the struggle, the Iberian struggle mechanic from CK3. And I enjoy CK3, it's got its problems, obviously, and we don't need to get into that, but that was, the, in my opinion, the worst DLC for me. Because you can't focus, like, pinpoint DLC content for specific areas when the fundamental is not right. And that's the problem. It's the problem with releasing such a bad foundation 
which is what Paradox does, and then builds on it. But I, but I'm I'm thinking now, and I'm like looking back at things like EU4. They don't actually build on the foundation or expand the foundation. They just add. So most of the stuff that's you know the shitty parts of the game just remain, and they just add and add and add on top of it. It's so what I'm saying is is like the Iberian struggle is something that I played maybe once. Um, one CK3 campaign, didn't really enjoy it, it was like very uninteresting and meh, it didn't really add anything unique, um, and you know, it's the same thing with something like this, it's like, you know, maybe somebody plays one Russia campaign, and they're like, oh, okay, that happened, it's just, it's just, why dedicate resources focusing on something so specific when the fundamental is so shit? Bringing up the fundamentals is important, because... No matter what's in this DLC to do with diplomacy, to do with power blocks, to do with adding to the great game, it's nothing that's going to fix the fundamental things that are shit about the game, such as the cookie clicker hoi for economy and the war. That's not getting touched. Yeah. Well, the economy is getting toggled a wee bit and uh, a couple of tweaks there. So, yeah, there is always, like, underneath all of this, we just have to remember that no matter what they're adding in this DLC, the fundamental game is still the same, um, economy-wise and war-wise, and in other other aspects too. They're going into mm. diplomacy here a lot. We got some people. We got some people mentioning that um, they just ignore the Iberian struggle when they play in Iberia and CK3, and that's been my um, experience as well. Like they've spent so much time working on this, and you see it in EU4 as well in terms of they've got immersion packs for you know specific expansions for great britain or they've got a specific expansion for russia and now they've been adding more dlc that adds to you know certain things mission trees uh to these countries and so essentially you've paid for a dlc to get a whole revive of a country and then there's new dlc that are reviving that country again doesn't that make your initial purchase of dlc you know i'm trying to think of the british one um doesn't come to mind i can't remember the name of it but uh you know, that for example, isn't that now at least semi-redundant because the new DLC covers over it? It's just constantly like adding and adding and adding. Redundant, yeah, exactly. Well, We're in a sense, adding the great game as its own bespoke mechanic makes... Uh, what does that say about the base game's ability to represent geopolitical struggles already? Very good point. That's a very, very good point. Yeah, that's a that's that's a, that's essentially the crux of the whole thing. It's that why why do we need this? Uh, what does it really add? And what you know exactly what reflection of this is on the base game? Not being able to enjoy LARPing the the great game. Why do you need this? And by the way, the great yeah. game, the great game mechanic. It's a bar goes one way russia wins it goes the other way uk wins yeah same with iberian struggle it's a bar yeah. you do good thing for you your bar go your way you do bad thing enemy win bar go their way it's a it's yeah. a bar it's just a bar with specific objectives that you have to meet which are kind of obvious of course in order to win you have to take over the things between you and russia in central asia Right? I mean... And all of this is objectives, journal entries, that's flavour stuff, very basic flavour. Mods can already do this, but mods can already add journal entries. So we're already, we're going into sort of the recent Hoi4 DLC level of uh, content here with the great game. But... I mean, for all we're shitting on this, it's in terms of like LARP and gameplay, I mean the great game, sure it's fine. When I play Russia or the UK, you have to fight the great game. I'm also thinking, you know, it, would it be possible to make this more dynamic instead of being one set great game? Any two great powers having a conflict anywhere in the world could become something like this, but that obviously wouldn't work. That no. would just flop, that, they wouldn't be able to make that work. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, well, in terms of like, you know, you, you, you're sort of taking a, a bit of a, oh, it, it's not it's not necessarily a bad thing. 
um, you know, it's not taking away from the game. But like we were saying with Iberian Struggle, it did take away from the game. It's like, I'd rather not have it. And that's crazy because I paid for it. You yeah. know, I'd rather not have it. Um, I, I can't speak to the, uh, the yeah. UK DLC anyway. I don't know it. I just wanted to bring up one last thing about what I'm talking about. Uh, Emperor Melgis made a good point. Sounds like when they made a DLC for EU4 for the Byzantine mission tree some time ago, and now the most recent DLC changed it again. Um, and yeah, just to briefly touch on that, I recently started playing a little bit more EU4, which I haven't played for years. And haven't having not played it for years the game has gotten so much easier i don't know if you guys have had that experience but um holy shit the game is so much easier because the the mission trees add permanent claims for everything they add permanent modifiers for everything like uh i played recently played um byzantium uh, and picked up the the new dlc because i hadn't played e4 for a lot in, a, in a, a while and wanted to torture myself apparently but it's so, like, the game is so much fucking easier than it used to be. I was interested yeah. to see what chat thought about that. So, so easy. We can go more into that in the EU5 section. Yes. We can talk about EU4 and EU3. EU3 is going to be a lot more relevant because it had pops. Re yeah, did I just say says... relevant? I think I just said relevant in the room. <laughs> Uh, Epic Gamer says, the AI has not been able to effectively catch up with all the new features in EU4 as well, so it makes it... Um, yeah, a hundred percent. I noticed that myself playing EU4. It's like the the AI is genuinely worse than it was when I was playing it. You know, six years ago, seven years ago. It's it's appalling. Like uh, you get into battles. Anyway, you're right. You're right. We'll touch the we'll touch on this in the EU5 section. Yeah, every, everyone in the chat's doing it now. Um, thank you, Taco Man, for the four ninety nine dollars. I just wish they had uh, focus lock in some titles and focus mechanical depth in others. Yeah. Like with, I see your point. I see your point. The, see, the three D models are all over Crusader Kings three and Victoria three, even though they don't fit in Victoria three very well. But I wanted to say about the great game, and I was I just expanding on the point I made that if you have to add a DLC to simulate the great game, what does that say about Victoria 3's existing ability to simulate geopolitical struggles between countries, which is what the game should be all about? Um, yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Super Chat Lady. And uh, so if you're playing as Russia or the United Kingdom, without this DLC, like, say you have an objective or a journal entry or something saying, to take over Central Asia because Britain's going to threaten you if you don't. Why do you need an objective to tell you that? Now, it should be obvious already from just the context and the diplomacy and the geopolitics of the game that Central Asia is important. You don't need to be told that by a bar that goes up if you win. And yep. It should be pretty dynamic in that regard. And, uh, uh, and also, I do have multiplayer in the back of my mind if ever, if anyone ever does play Victoria 3 multiplayer. It should be down to the players in that. I mean, I, presumably if you play Sphere of Influence in multiplayer, which if someone hosts a multiplayer, I can play without owning the DLC, and I'm down to do it if, uh, if anyone's ever hosting a multiplayer within the Vic2 community. I might, I'm, I'm down to give it a fun try. Come May. Uh, but, uh, you know, in multiplayer, a Russia player and a, a Great Britain player will fight each other over Central Asia anyway without being told to do so because that is how diplomacy goes organically. They don't need a $30 bar to tell them to do that. And I'm also thinking in, in mods and in games where the diplomacy goes different ways, maybe the great game won't be relevant. What if the United Kingdom and Russia decide to form an alliance in the diplomacy? Yeah. I don't know if that is possible in single player by the AI, but in multiplayer it certainly could happen. If, say, France and Germany hugbox a bit and they decide, you know what, you can have Alsace and that's ally. This might lead to other alliances between UK and Russia. Um, that makes multiplayer interesting. And also, more generally, about the rest of the DLC, such as power blocks. Imagine, how, what is the AI going to do with this? 
the vast majority of players are single player. That's a good point. That's actually a good point. I hadn't thought of that. What is the computer going to do with this? Um, that's an open question. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's really just, unless they actually make the AI do something with this competently, which is a very difficult thing. Um, hopefully do something historical. Yeah, maybe they could just railroad them to do historical things. And then, you know, but then since uh, power blocks don't represent 19th century diplomacy, there won't be any. So, look, what are they going to do? Form a fucking alliance called... I don't know, the, the Asian hug boss. No, uh, but there's just nothing there. Uh, it's just yeah. going to be another way for the player to dominate and own the game as their own personal sandbox, which is what the game is. Because the AI doesn't... Yeah, uh, similar to the hegemony mechanics, which um, I don't know if people like, I hate them in EU4, um, which is you can be the military hegemon if you've got a big enough army, naval if you've got a big enough... Uh, sorry, economic if you've got a big enough... Um, uh, fleet and enough money and they are massive massive bonuses and the downside is you get like a minus of 50 minus 50 opinion with everyone but like i've never seen you know i've, I've played maybe two or three games since coming back to eu4 uh pretty late into the game as well like 17 80 close to the finish day and i haven't seen the ai use them at all and so they just seem to be like you say uh, just another example of just a, a huge free boost to the player for no reason you know yeah yeah maybe there won't be much replayability if the ai doesn't do anything with it yeah sandbag says they should thank you for the super chat five dollars they should make this a mechanic where all gps compete for influence miners not just these two countries limited to compete over specific miners yeah yeah you're referring to the great game and victoria 2 you might not like victoria 2 sphere mechanic and against the ai it's gamey but it represents great powers competing for influence in smaller countries. It does that. It does what it says on the tin. It represents a feature of 19th century diplomacy well. Very well. Yeah. Even if it doesn't work in practice too well. And, you know, the part where it doesn't work in practice too well could have been what they fucking improved on in the sequel. I always come yeah. back to the same point because it's right and true. They could have taken Victoria 2's sphere of influence mechanic and made it good made the AI do it better uh, but no they just left it out of the game made it a sort of market and then resold it to us a year and a half later for $30 yeah fucking hell it's bleak isn't it it's fucking bleak ass yeah <laughs> at least I feel like we're getting through the slog of touching on everything in this expansion I think we're getting there yeah I think really you know are. what I think you know what you know what's part of it is we don't have Zenmos. He helps he helps he's uh good comic relief on these streams. Yeah. Liberty desire. Oh my god, we we I didn't even get to this point. This is gonna be in the free update. And it's uh it's Liberty Desire from fucking EU four. Yep. And this is EU four here. Yeah, EU four mechanic. Where does it say the Liberty Desire in this screenshot? Does it say it? It doesn't say it. Does it? Is that the 49% under... Or is that like a... That's their government? Uh, it's their that's government. The, that's the landowners? Cambodia is a country in the Vietnamese market. And it, that doesn't say power block. You see, this is what it is in Victoria 3. When you click on a country, it says what market they're in. No numbers are visible. Owing to a relatively high level of liberty desire, which isn't shown in the screenshot, Cambodia is pursuing a strategy of increased autonomy and self-reliance, but will not seek full independence yet. And got, you know, obviously at the end of the DLC, there's a list of uh, end of the DLC. I mean, dev diary. There's going to be more dev diaries right up until they're going to go into more detail. Oh, they're going into more detail on power blocks next week. And I'll read the dev diary, but we're not going to do a, we're not going to do a whole stream for it or anything. So I'm not going to cover it. Maybe we'll cover it a lot later on with any other news in a in a dev diary in a discussion stream in maybe a couple of months or something. Oh God, I, I seriously, it's depressing. It's super depressing. Have they answered I, any I've... questions yet? Sorry, they haven't answered any questions yet in the pinned comment. Yeah. 
That's, yeah, it's fucking depressing. I was thinking about Solaris as well. Like, was was is a great guy uh, as a person, you know, nothing against him as a person, but in terms of, um, you, you remember Solaris originally coming out, that was really, really bad on release. It took a long time to come, right? Um, but according to what the, I showed in my last video, in the player count, as well as making money from DLC, they turned it around a lot sooner than they turned, out, turned around Victoria 3, which still hasn't been turned around yet. Exactly. So it turned around better, very quickly, compared to this. Yeah. I showed that directly, with evidence. But go on, go on. I was just saying, like, it's... Like, if, if your job, you know... Like, like you know, you think about your videos. Like, you take great pride in them. They're very, you know... It's not just a job for you. You, you know, you put a lot of effort into your videos, and you're proud of them. You know, you want to make something interesting for your fans. Yeah, yeah I follow you and, so far, yeah. Yeah, and so my, what I'm saying is, is like, imagine making videos and, you know, they're still getting the same number of views, but everyone fucking hates them, and you you know they're not very good. Like, it would just be so depressing. I don't, like, know how you keep doing that. Like, with Stellaris, you know, you eventually bring it round, and it, like like you said, it took a while, but he, they, did, they did bring it round. And then with this, that you've been working on it as, you know, you're the lead developer, year and a half and this is it like i don't know i don't know i wouldn't be i wouldn't i would walk away from it if it was me i mean um, what happened i don't know the specifics of what happened with stellaris when they changed who was leading the project to martin because when stellaris came out and there were problems with it at some point martin came in to be the one leading it to fix it and he kind of did i think generally i think he was the lead from the get-go wasn't he I uh, fuck I don't know because I remember him doing I remember him doing streams with uh their community manager I think his name is Bjorn was he always um, the lead okay okay I think he was always the lead yeah well maybe with Victoria 3 they should get someone else in to fix it because they keep banging their heads against a big wall you know 1.5 and everything yeah you know yeah. football comparison if your team's not doing well, it's time to kick out the manager and get someone in. Oh, well, they do that. Yeah. Teams do that very much too readily nowadays, but. Yeah, sack uh, the gaffer, yeah. Um, people don't really know about Solaris, but. Again, what you were saying comes down to this is the final thing which is obligated in the Grand Edition. It is the final thing that they're sort of, you know, obliged to give. After this, they could abandon the game, not saying they will, or after this, they could cycle in a different lead guy to give this game a revival, a change of direction or something. Um, they could yeah. do it after this. I mean, after after Sphere of Influence, and it, a lot depends on the reception to it, I'll be paying close attention. I'll be on Review Watch when this drops, of course, uh, and Player Count Watch. Uh, and I'm perfectly, well... I, I was about to say I'm willing for this to actually be the thing that turns it around and maybe do well, but after looking through it, I doubt it. But, I mean, obviously, I've seen on the, on Reddit and the forums here that people are very excited about this, but, I mean, those are just the usual subjects who are also excited about fucking Voice of the People and shit, so... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll get to Vape Nation Super Chat. Thank you for it, though, for five euros. Thank you for Johan it. Uh, we're we're almost at the precipice of moving on to that, I think, because we're wrapping up and rounding off this, I would say. What about reviewing it yourself? If someone hosts multiplayer, I am not buying this. Like, not only is Paradox not going to sponsor me to get it early, I'm not even buying it. I'm only going to play it. The only way I'll play it is if someone hosts multiplayer. Pogba, we could... Uh, remember the game that we played on launch? We could do that sort of thing again. We can... We can have session two of that campaign. <laughs> Same save. No, uh, <laughs> I'll play the fucking East India Company. Let's go. The same save won't be compatible, will it? Um, the last thing I want to say on Power Blocks is that it represents the Cold War way better, clearly. And it goes towards a Cold War game. Yeah. Um, like that, would, it's really appropriate for the Cold War. NATO. Warsaw Pact. Non-aligned, yeah. Non-aligned. The non-aligned power block. So, and 
also, like at least the, there's a fucking there's Cold War mods being developed for Victoria Three, and like the Cold War mods, there's one which is the Cold War project, which is huge, and there is also the continuation of CWE from Vic Two, where the lead developer of that jumped ship, and it, it's this is a, a point. I'm, I think about this right. For the past year and a half or so, let's say year, since Victoria 3 dropped, these Cold War mods have been in development. Um, they've been trying to do it, they've been trying to make these mods, and they've been trying to use Victoria 3's mechanics and systems to represent the Cold War. Now comes along this expansion, which adds power blocks, which is the perfect mechanic for the Cold War. What are those Cold War mods going to do with the previous work that they've done to try and represent those power blocks without power blocks. Do you see what I'm saying? Plus, yeah. this is also just a DLC. Maybe they just won't bother with it and go, you know, we're going to stick with whatever we already did instead of adopting power blocks, because that just means that anyone without the DLC won't be able to play it anyway. Yeah. Stettin left CWE? Yeah, that guy mainly works on Victoria 3 CWE. He, I've still seen updates for Vic 2's one, but he mainly does Victoria 3's one, if you just go to their Discord, I believe. Um, yeah. I'm seeing all your messages, Christian. I don't know which one's not happening. Ah. Well. I think they're going to have to make their mod compatible with the latest update, which will have the power blocks. But the power blocks are only in the DLC, right? Not the, no, not the free update. Oh, you're right, actually, yeah. Which just causes even more confusion. How are mods mm. going to deal with any of this shit? And this is a point that I've always been making, which is CK3 has its amazing mods, Elder Kings, Game of Thrones. CK, uh, Victoria 3 mods at that level have been severely lacking because they have to keep up with this game, which keeps changing direction every uh, few months. How can they keep up? And how the fuck are they going to keep up with this? And yeah. will they make That's a big problem a with... Um... It's a big problem with Battlelord mods as well. Or what it was, at least, until they abandoned the game. Hmm. Um, is that they'd be constantly updating, uh, and then mods wouldn't, wouldn't be able to keep up. I mean, that was true of the Game of Thrones mod over on Battlelord, big time. Speaking of Game of Thrones mod, I could, right now, I don't own any CK3 DLCs. Actually, no, I think I own Royal Court, do I? I can't remember. No, I don't, because I only... You own, you own the struggle for Iberia, I think, because we played a game in Iberia. No, I think it was just multiplayer stream? with someone hosting who had it. Oh, ah, yeah. Which does actually mean that in multiplayer, but I could go and play the Game of Thrones mod for CK3 right now without missing out on anything, without owning DLC, I think. Uh, but are they going to require Sphere of Influence to play the Cold War mods? I mean, I'll have to look into that. I can check the Discord and see what they're saying about Sphere of Influence, but I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there, how this disrupts modders a lot. Duarte says, to be fair, it's not Paradox's responsibility to keep the game streamlined because, uh, for, or I assume it means for mods. Um, it is yes. when that's most of the content. Yeah, there's, there's that to an extent. The, the mods are carrying, the shoulder, uh, carrying too much weight on their shoulders right now to make this game work. You are right, technically, in your statement, but I think Victoria yeah. 3 is a worse case because they're they're shifting direction so much because of how bad the game is, and that's disrupting modders more than they are on CK3, which is very solid in its mechanics and its core, and it's very sure of itself. It knows what it is, unlike this game, right? So CK3 modders have had an easier time, and they've developed absolutely phenomenal mods compared to this. It's harder for modders in this game than CK3 for those reasons. And that's basically all I'm saying. I'm not saying that the game should not be updated to make it easier for modders. No, the game should be updated. But this one is updated all over the place with buggy patches, and that just compounds the problem rather than, uh, you know, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. All right, Why is there any you, other Victoria 3? No, we got Go Rockham says, Why you guys... Paradox is allergic to directly improving previous games. What um, do you guys think? Yeah. I don't know. Do you mean like improving I th I think, on it, like with Victoria 2? It's just this one is really the problem. I Victoria. think it's like, if you, I, I think it's a very human thing, because if you look at, you know, uh, Victoria 2 came out, what, 2013? Earlier? 
it's just that, the it's just that specifically 2010 it's just yeah, that specifically for, for victoria they were allergic to victoria too and I, and I think just for reasons like they see it as an old janky game they didn't like it they see the maybe they, they even see the community as toxic you know us old bigots and nazis and all that so they don't want to touch it they just wanted to start afresh and look what happened I think it's I think it's more what well, I definitely think that's a, a big element of it but I think a big element is um you know if you're put in charge of a brand new game that is a sequel you really want to make your mark on it you know you want it to be it's a very human issue maybe a selfish thing like you want it to be your creative project and so it makes sense for and it happens a lot in so many different types of media where the sequel goes off in a completely bizarre direction um and it's you know it's meant to be subversive you know but it's uh it's not it's it's terrible you know quite often that's the case and sometimes it works sometimes you make something completely different and it's awesome but it, it does feel like it's uh, glory hunting you know instead of just because if you you know like if you look at something like open vic um if you guys had taken that exact team and made a completely new game from scratch there might be more glory in that. That doesn't mean that there's more utility in that, though. You know? Um, updating Victoria 2, you know, that's... It's a very creative thing. But it's not as creative, necessarily, or some people might see it as such, as, as not as creative as creating a brand new game from scratch. Yeah. Um, that's a very good point about potentially why they decided to take this game in such a different uh, direction. Because... Uh, I remember earlier we talked about not being personal towards the developers, but and then I say but <laughs> but, <laughs> but Martin, with all like he's a great guy, I'm sure, and with all due respect to him, when they announced Victoria Three, he dressed up in his Victorian suit, walked out there, and promised us everything. Yeah. And then they sat there, went through all the dev diaries, you know, building it up and PR. And then when you compare that to your point about maybe they want to uh, leave their own mark uh, and be seen as the great developer of a great game. Yeah. Just when, just as you were saying that point about the developers wanting to leave their mark and be the one, be the man, be the guy with the great developer that everyone, be become Johan. Yeah. Just become the Johan. And then I just, I just, all I was picturing was Martin coming out in his Victorian suit. Wow, promising. That's world. that's a huge call from Christian. He's the, he's a modern Peter Molyneux. That is a huge call. Uh, I, yeah, that Peter Molyneux is a. Uh, it's, it's not super fair to Peter Molyneux because he does have un, he does have very unique ideas. It's just quite often they're uh, implemented horribly. But um, yeah, he Peter Molyneux is the classic guy who's like you know promises the world. Uh, and is constantly trying to do something really unique and different, but often, apart from Fable, fucking it up real bad. Um, yeah, yeah, that's 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 a classic. Overpromising, uh, underdelivering, and trying to be revolutionary. You know, there's one guy who did it right, and that is, of course, the late Sid Meier. Yeah, bless him, rest his soul. Uh, Millennia is also in the news. I mean, I, I played the demo. It's really very average at best. It's not great, mm. and uh, it's coming out. They've even got the usual paradox suspects to do tutorials for it, for God's sake, on their YouTube channel. Tom Clancy? Tom Clancy, the game developer. Yeah, he made a lot of good <laughs> games. It's true. Uh, loads of games have his name in it. Just, I don't know. It's funny how yeah. some games are just named like Sid Ma it's not civilization it's Sid Meier's civilization it's a uh, at least they didn't do that for Victoria 3 Martin Anwards Victoria 3 imagine if they did yeah that. exactly well that's I mean that's what it might, might be what he's saying um when he boots it up but the thing is is like when you try and do something so different you have to take responsibility for it and, and that's why it's real piss weak when you see developers doing the whole we tried our best. We wanted to make a great game for you guys. And it's like, yeah, well, if, it just wouldn't slide in any other profession, you know? It's like if your university lecturer failed to teach you about um, 
I don't know, the great game if you're doing a history paper. It's like, oh, I tried to teach you. I tried my best. Do you know how they would fail to teach you about the great game? By using Victoria 3's great oh, game as an example. That's good. Oh, that's good. shit. That's good. Oh, <laughs> oh. Look at the chat, though. We got them again with the Sid Meier. Yeah, yeah, it's I good. Believe it. Do we have any continuous viewers? Like, when, Is anyone here when this happened yeah. last year? When we did that one? Yeah, there's, that there's was... a couple. There's, there's a couple. There's a couple. I think a couple of I've people got, knew and were also egging the rest of the chat on as well. To be fair, yeah, I've got a good, uh, uh I've got a good quick Tom Clancy story. Um, I remember are there was there, a Tom Clancy. The, are there any quick Tom Clancy stories? I think the books are pretty oh, long. I'm talking about his <laughs> games, <laughs> but there was a there was a uh, a game that I rented from the uh, video store when I was a kid uh, that used your Xbox microphone and you could give orders end game, to your end war end war. Is that Everyone. what it was called? Yeah. Yeah, and I remember... I did, did you play this as well when you were a kid? Yeah. I didn't use the voice thing, though. I tried a couple I, of times. I, yeah, exactly. The, the voice thing wouldn't pick up on your voice if you had anything other than an American accent. And so we've got some really funny videos of me, like, as a kid. I don't even remember when that game came out. Um, like, in the lounge on my Xbox going, like... Uh, Fall back, you know, by like putting on like yeah. a really terrible yeah. American accent just so they could pull up, uh, uh, just so they could get my fucking voice commands. And it, yeah, it's like a cartoonish, terrible American accent. It's Move forward. Game. Yeah. Yeah, it was I, a good game. I, I enjoyed three that. power blocks. <laughs> all right. Shall we timestamp it and cu cut all the Victoria 3 stuff out of our system? I have a little, yeah. uh, a wee tangent here that I just noticed being announced before I did the stream. We got something interesting here. So yeah, call a timestamp. Victoria 3 chat is over, hereby henceforth. Unless anyone has super chat questions about it, we can answer later. We've gone from 42 minutes to 2 hours and 38 minutes. Well, we were on that for a while. Yeah, we did it. I covered a lot. Do I have the energy to continue and do the fucking this? Well, I just wanted to quickly touch on this. I haven't read this, but this is the Victoria mod for Imperator Rome. And yeah, it's got a dev diary. I haven't read it though. And I don't really know if I have the energy to get into something new and read it on stream. So I think I'll just leave this as a sort of shout out, let other people yeah. go and check it out themselves and then move on. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, I think so. We can circle back to it uh, on another stream because there's a couple of things that we wanted to touch on. Um, that we might not have time for today. We'll come back to that. But people are asking about Open Vic in the chat. It's fine. It's going along. We just haven't got any update <laughs> for you today. We're talking about other things here. There's going to be a dev diary next month. We'll maybe do a stream. I'll maybe try and do a video update. Go to the community Discord. Check the GitHub to see what they're coding. You know, it's going. We need to get you a soundboard, Spud, because I know that you get that question a hell of a lot. I need to get my soundboard. Join, yeah. join the Discord. Um... There's, it's it's very well run and there's tons of tons of info there, so go ahead and join the Discord. It's got it's got a great uh, great community there. Join the Open Vic Discord and join my Discord. Join my Discord. You know, and join my Discord. Why not? Join Pie Discord. Follow him on Twitch. <laughs> Lucky bastard <laughs> still has a Twitch account. <laughs> for now, for now. How long have you had your Twitch account? Three years. If you have been yeah, about three years. three years, if it's three years, they might start scouring your three-year-old content for i've got one stuff. clip i've got one clip about imperius of rome and um an economic good that is completely frowned upon now um yeah and i said i, I said that it was making me a lot of money and an mp against you actually and that's a bit of a I, was, I think i think back on that clip and i'm like oh maybe i should maybe i should delete that but yeah it's they, they get you they get you for anything yeah but, Thing is, they don't. They, I've been. They've been. I've had no problems, and we've talked about yeah. all sorts of things on my streams over these three years. But then they go back to some random old shitty clip that I've forgotten about, out of context, and um, like quoting someone, censoring it anyway. And then that's what gets me after, after everything, after all the people who came into my VC during multiplayer games and played N-word soundboards, after all the weird topics that some people have gone on politically. In the in the VC, and that's what they get me for. That's yeah. what they get me for. I hate them. Twitch is shit. 
unless you're into porn. If you're into that, <laughs> that's actually so fucking true. That is so true. Dude, I go on my fucking homepage and before chat starts saying, oh, it's only recommending it because you watch it. Not true. Same but here, not fucking, true. yeah, same, same homepage, dude. It's like, what the fuck? I remember, I, I must have said this a thousand times on the co podcast, uh, talking about the co podcast, but back in the day, they had the co podcast, um, talk, uh, Total Biscuit and a whole bunch of people talking about um, video game news. And they used to have like a, a meme where they'd constantly talk about uh, not going off on tangents about n- not talking about computer games. Because if it wasn't about computer games, you'd get your stream taken down. And now Twitch is just Wild West. Anything goes. It's, it's definitely not a video game streaming thing anymore. It's fucking anyone. The top things are porn and politics. Yeah. Two things that are not good for you. <laughs> And you yeah. should probably not indulge in if you if you have the uh, have the choice. Yeah, just always stuff like any statement within Minecraft. Well, in in the meme in question that was from the thing, it should be, let's all ally each other in Minecraft. Yeah. Some of you will know this the bad Frank quote: "Let's all ally each other like bags." That's what they got me for because I quoted yeah. that in a meme about a campaign in twenty twenty one. I mean, we're going back to this topic, but I guess there's loads of people that don't know about it here. We're having a wee drive-by. Um, you may as well get some juice out of it as well. It's a pretty sting thing to go through, you know. Yeah. I uh, yeah. I, I don't know. It, it, it's super shit. It sucks. I think I think the thing that really sucks about it is, like, whenever you're a, a public figure, and especially with things like Discord, like you described in your, in your last stream, you talking about you have to have a Discord because it solves so many problems. But it creates so many fucking problems. And like people, like anyone not liking someone enough to, to go through their content and find stuff or or do something crazy like that. It's like, why would you ever care that much? You know, it's just being terminally online. It's, it's, it's actually in a lot of ways really sad for that person. Um, that that's what they want to do with, with their time, you know. I've got an example of when I used a report feature successfully against a sad person. So there was a once this guy, just some random guy on Discord by the name of Momug. And I I can't remember what it was, but he messaged me one time. I didn't reply much. I wasn't interested in what he was saying, like some random shit. And then he started, uh, kept trying to message me. And then it got further and further. I didn't want to talk to him. And then he brigades my Discord launches open brigades against it, tells people to join and harass everyone and ping people, and all that sort of shit. And he creates a video with faked screenshots of saying the most horrible things of me. Um, so I go into his Discord, which I had actually advertised in my Victory Multiplayer Service Discord thing. I just go into it, see them openly talking about brigading my server, and it gets taken down because they broke TOS by openly talking about brigading and raiding my server. Wow. Yeah. I use the well, feature I legitimately. Yeah, well, I can talk about how nuts it gets, and, and a lot of you guys as viewers, you know, probably don't understand how nuts it does get. Um, you read stories about big guys, but even, like, for for me, I have a tiny little stream, it's just a little hobby, and, you know, I really enjoy it. But I've had crazy things happen to me, like um, somebody made a Reddit post um, using my real name, saying that I'd taken my own life on the Victoria 2 <laughs> subreddit and, and I'd woke I woke up to dozens of DMs from people, you know, who I'm mates with on Discord who were like, Are you all good? And and a, and a couple of them were, were quite worried because there's um you know, there's definitely like younger guys on and, and younger people part of this community who might be a bit naive and, and, and take that as fact. And so people do, yeah, you're right. People are deranged, like Fame Nation saying, people are deranged. People do the most insane shit. And it's like, it, it, it's it's freaky. <laughs> it is freaky. Yeah, some people come out with weird pranks like that. And uh, But uh, I've also had people like haters who want to destroy me and ruin me, essentially. One of yeah. the reasons being that I talk about Victoria 3 in the way I just did for the past three hours. Uh, but anyway, we talk. I talk more because it was a solo stream last earlier this week. Spudgun Archives, most recent stream. Discord weirdos is not a new topic. Tell me about it. Been dealing with it since yeah. I've had one. Um, 
you get you get a mod team to get rid of the weirdos, and then it turns out the mod team are half the weirdos too sometimes. Yeah, I've it's been really, really meaning. A, <laughs> I've been really meaning to apologise about that, by the way. It's not <laughs> you. <laughs> I know. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> he was the one shining star in a sea. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> that was more about. There was another stream where I really talked more about that sort of thing about the uh, the Twitch suspension. Now we can talk about something good. Yes, Joseph, we're about to get onto that right now. And by the way, before we timestamp this and uh, move into it, join the channel membership because due to being coming back to streaming solely on YouTube, I will be reenacting a focus on channel memberships as the great way to join the community and support the channel. I didn't mention this when we were talking about my Patreon, but I am considering opening up the deleted scenes and bonus clips to channel members soon. Maybe not for the Bavaria series, but for maybe my next series, I'll open it up then. Later down the line. Yeah, there's some like and and maybe that's something that you should do more of. You should really advertise like uh, not just the obviously the most relevant thing is the new deleted scenes, but there are so many great clip uh, videos from previous campaigns that you guys would have seen that um, give really fun context. Um, yeah, so like definitely, and it's like like I'm a Patreon. And, you know, I work in a mechanics, I'm not a crazy wealthy guy, but the way that you do it is really good in terms of you can just give whatever you want. So I just give a dollar and then having access to these videos is awesome. I closed my Twitch sub recurring. Good, because I've moved away from Twitch and they suspended me. I hope you don't, I don't, ha I hope that you or and no one has to pay a single penny more for a Twitch sub for me than, you know, beyond when I got suspended. I hope that everyone can just, I hope it works out like that. And if I can refund anyone on Twitch, when I'm unsuspended, I'll do my best. But going forward, channel memberships are really going to be a great thing. They're, they're really good for the channel, for YouTube, because they also integrate with my videos and I can also release specific content. I've previously done channel membership community posts where I just say, hello, channel members, and we have a chat. Like there's nice little things like that that I'll do. And I might open up the deleted scenes going forward. So channel memberships, yeah, it's, it's great. And there's three tiers of it, so you can do the lowest one for like the same as a Twitch sub, and a medium one, and a large one, which is cheaper. The same as cheaper. It's actually significantly for me. It's significantly cheaper than a Twitch sub. Fantastic. So that's about that for all that. That's our wee shoutouts, and keep you know giving the super chats as well. Keep them coming in if you have a question. Now, so this is very interesting. Around February twenty eighth here, leap year day. Tinto talks began. What is Tinto Talks? Tinto, Paradox Tinto is one of their studios located in Catalonia, Spain. I'm, I might have actually just set off an argument by doing a region and then the name of the overall state. <laughs> Maybe they just want Catalonia and then nothing else. I don't know. Next, Viper, thanks for joining the channel membership at Craftsman Level. Thank you so much. Fuck Twitch. We're back to YouTube. Although, best of, worst of a bad bunch. Best of a bad bunch, sort of. But anyway... Oh, so, Tinto Talks. This is an, a new series of Dev Diaries released by Johan Anderson. Johan, who is an OG at Paradox. He joined their forum in 1990-fucking-nine. I was That's two. That's nuts. Yeah. Half of you I, weren't well, born. Yeah. I might not have been born in 1999. Depends you which were, month. It's December 14th. Oh, yeah. yeah Very far well, in yeah, eight months old. <laughs> wow. So that means your birthday was very recent then. No, no, it's uh, oh, not, yeah, it's eight months. Yeah, yeah. Three uh, weeks away. December away. thingy. Yeah. Oh, that's a. Uh, I've got to mark pie chucker. Thank you, pie chucker. You're also in the chat doing that. Wow. Oh, I got to practice what I preach, don't I, guys? Look, if pie chucker's got, it's like tasting the poison food first, or not the non-poison food first. You've got to show <laughs> that you're willing to do it before you ask others yeah. to. It's like if you're uh, busking, you always put uh, you put five dollar note, f five quid in the hat to make it to make it look like people are already interested. You know what I mean? Ah. So Johan, he's our OG guy. He made Victoria too. I mean, what more can we say? He made Victoria too, and so and was the main guy in the earlier games. He is why we have Paradox as a company that we know and love from the games that we yeah. enjoyed with them, like all the old games. It was him. And here he is in their 
Catalonian studio. I mean, he has a story. He has a very interesting story within Paradox. He, he, we have Imperator Rome, which was a big failure, but although some people liked it, and he was working on turning it around. He really was, and then they pulled the rug out from under him by cancelling the game, basically. Yeah. And they shipped him off to Catalonia to join Paradox Tinto, which is the <laughs> studio responsible for EU4's DLC output, at least for many years, probably. I, I don't know when, since the, since the studio was founded. A decent while, yeah, a decent while. But uh, that's my basic overview of Paradox Tinto and Johan. I could do more research and learn that. 24 years ago, yeah, fucking hell. Fucking hell. So he's our OG guy. He's the old guard. And even with Imperator and all that, like the things I've seen him saying on the forums and the fact that he's uh, been on Twitter a bit, even following me, and he's not... He's the kind of guy who doesn't give a fuck about wider baggage. Like, that guy's the Paradox hater, so I can't talk to him. He doesn't have that. He doesn't care. He'll talk to anyone about his games doesn't matter who they are um, and I respect him a lot so he's a bit different from modern paradox people in a way like he he just doesn't he's not um, I don't know he doesn't put the same barriers up between himself and the fans that modern paradox does yeah if that makes any sense he'll talk to you He'll reply to you. If you ask him a question about a game or something, he'll probably reply to you. Like, honestly. Yeah. He was often the um, host for the MP Dev Clashes as well. Him and um, Jake, whatever his name is. DDR Jake, that's it. Um, and he, he was always funny because he's got like a very... Um, he's a very deadpan guy. He, he, can be, he can be very, very funny, yeah. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's very like straightforward. He's he's mostly pretty much serious and deadpan. Yeah. Yeah. We all miss DDR Jake. Oh, I had a bad experience with DDR Jake just because I didn't know his channel rules in Twitch. So I, I raided him once, and then we all started spamming frogs, and uh, I got timed out, and all of my chat got timed out like immediately, Aww. and it was just such a disaster. That's the last time I raided actually. It was like such a disaster of a raid. <laughs> <laughs> Johan was parachuted in to save the Leviathan DLC, so he was that late in the in the EU4 DLC, so he went in after that. He wasn't responsible for that, right? Basically. But yeah, DDR Jake's out there doing content. That's pretty good. Yeah, he's got a big so, switch. Yeah, yeah. Streams. Don't spam emotes. But that story's funny, yeah. Yeah, that's the thing about raids, you know. You could go in there and you think you're doing a good thing, but what if that person didn't really want your chat to be overtaken by a bunch of emotes and you and stuff and they didn't, didn't want it you never know yeah true but anyway so that's a, that's enough about johan overall and now johan revealed well last month that they are working on a new game paradox tinto studio they're working on a new game and well i get i guess he gives you he gives the rundown of the history of the studio here founded in Sitges 2020 with a few people Moving down with me from PDS to Spain. He doesn't call it Catalonia. Oh. Oh. He calls it Spain. I'm just joking. Uh, now, we have now grown to be almost 30 people. And I like, to, I like the idea that Johan is... Maybe you could compare this to Rome. He is a, a Roman general who's been sent to be the governor of fucking Hispania. <laughs> and he's rising in power and he's going to fucking retake Rome, quote unquote, Sweden. He's going to raise his own legion here called Tinto. Legio uh, XII Tinto. Tintus. Tintus, that's good. I like that. Tintus. Yeah. <laughs> Johann Caesar. And the project is called Project Caesar. It's an unnamed project. Um, was this a long time ago? We started talking about a game as soon as we started working on it. Throw it past, we used to make we used to make games in eight to nine months. I remember us making Vicky 2 with just two mock-up screenshots and half a page of ideas. Yeah. Uh, you know, this dev diary is nice already. He's already going back and talking about how he made Victoria 2 and stuff. This dev diary, though, I'm not going to go through and read all of it. It's more about general things. Biggest titus. <laughs> uh, uh, it's more about overall things, development of games. 
the one thing I want to go to is um, how he has started talking about this game before it's been officially announced. That's um, again, that's Johan for you. He doesn't care about Paradox's strict rules about when to announce a game or not. You know, we can't talk about the game until we announce it. He is just talking about it. He doesn't care. Um, he's talking about it as much as he possibly can. He can't name it. But it's all but named, basically, from the third dev diary anyway. Um, and, you know, the funny thing is that I want to talk about, and I guess these these things here are kind of vague. Um, I'm sure they're important internally, but I don't really... It doesn't mean anything. It's too vague and arbitrary to mean stuff for me. They probably did allow him to do this. Well, yeah, obviously. But I like it that he'll do it. He doesn't care about the corporate level all that much. Because... And the thing about it is that Johan is doing better PR for Paradox in these dev diaries, especially the third one, than Paradox can do themselves with their corporate shite and their advertising. Like, Johan's already... Like, there's a Ludi video based on the third dev diary. It's got over 100k views already. Like, he's doing... Johan's doing better PR like on his own with his dev diaries than anything Paradox has done for ages. Right? Yeah, well he's been he's been there so long he probably has equity in the company. Like when it went public, they probably gave him a, a slice. And so he probably yeah. has that to sort of give him a bit more power and throw his weight around and uh you know not make Victoria three. Probably. Uh, of course, pa Johan also has a story with Victoria 3, right? I mean, after Victoria 2 in like 2014-15, I talked about this in the Victoria 3 War System video, he was going to be working on a Victoria 3, which would have been the actual sequel we would have wanted. I, I don't know why, but his moves he moved didn't happen, and Victoria 3 was shelved, they toyed around with various ideas, until the current lot took over in 2017-18 and developed it. So, you know, what could have been... Johan bid... Johan basically did a character instead. Yeah, it's such a hard thing to hear, actually. It's brutal. Uh, I've talked about it for ages, though. You know, yeah. but it's well it's well known. We're not going to talk about Vic 3 keeps talking about it. Who? Him? Me? Us? I don't think we are talking about it. We're talking about Johan's history. Uh, anyway. So, the second one is about the map. And they've published a full map of the game, essentially, already. And they've talked, they're changing things up for this a bit. They've talked about what Johan calls... Uh, can, I, can I click out of this? What Johan calls locations, right? And the smallest subdivision is a location. Well, a group of locations is a province, and a group of provinces is an area. And a group of areas is called a region. And a group of regions is called a subcontinent. So what I think is going on here is provinces have been subdivided further. Right? They've been they've been subdivided to the level of Crusader Kings. That's how it works almost exactly in E4, by the way. Is it? I mean Yeah. Yeah. Like... So yeah, there's there's areas, uh regions subcontinents continents there's map modes for every single thing that he just described except change locations to provinces and that's the exact same system for eu4 is it because you still yeah. have provinces are they just moving province up to describe what is now a region but a group of provinces is an area i think they're adding a new layer beneath province group of locations is a province yes that could be true yeah, it depends whether an area is in a state or not, in EU4 terms. I don't know, but it's very, very similar. It could be one lower, you're right. Like, oh yeah, like Baronies people are talking about. It's, for, yeah. it's a further subdivision. Oh yeah, interesting. So at least that's what we think is going on. And uh, When this was the only Dev Diary out, I mean, or when the second Dev Diary came out, people were strongly thinking it was EU4. And the third one all but confirms it. Uh, EU5. EU5. But in my mind, there's still not a 0% not a, a chance that it is a new franchise. Maybe. 
who knows when it's set, but there, I don't think there's a 0% chance of that, but it's very likely you can find. Smaller... It's focused on the smaller baronies in EU4 rather than counties. Hmm. And they've done the C tile similar to what's in Victoria 3, actually. Because they've, they've changed it so there aren't just an equal number of C provinces all over the place. They've made it dense in certain uh, lanes and seas. Where it is... You can see it if you look very closely and zoom in on this map if you look at the sea. There, there's certain lanes everywhere, right? Yeah. And obviously... I like that idea. Yeah. It's based around EU, EU 4 and 5 trade. Europa Universalis trade lane thing, right? Basically. Yes. Yeah. It looks roughly the same as the trade, yeah. That's what it's uh, going to be about. It's going to make fighting weird. Well, it's going to make it a little bit more linear in terms of fighting across the oceans. But fighting what most naval wars are in EU4, which is kind of near you or just in Europe, that won't be very different, really. So it's going to make sort of intercontinental wars different if you have to send a navy to the Caribbean or something. You might encounter an enemy navy along the way. I want my Napoleon game not going to lie. True. True. I want eat much of the Eagles 3. 2. Much of the Eagles 2. Yeah. <laughs> It's only going to be a two. Can help fix the patrol mission. Yeah, anyway, so this dev day was just about the map. It's nice. And then, you know, like I say, it's getting better PR than Paradox can do themselves in terms of the corporate level. Um, the EU5, EU5 map looks nice. And Johan, look at that. Straightforward, answers questions. He doesn't go like the Vic3 team and go, well give a sort of guff answer he's just like yes okay so the places without sea lanes are literally impassable terrain okay that's interesting i don't know that. yeah yeah oh and yeah and as, as he's doing this right he's also known for well he has views on victoria 3's war system he's uh obviously I never thought there was any chance of this anyway, really. Uh, I never really thought there was much chance of this, but it's good of him to say it outright. <laughs> the crazy thing is, like, he talks exactly like he messages, which is really funny. <laughs> like, like I say, he's just a very deadpan guy. He's very to the point. As we talk about what is coming up to be quite positive in EU5 here, in previous years, uh, around the times of Victoria 3, I always said things like, watch out, they're coming for EU5 next. It's turning out that that's not happening. I should have thought, right, if it's going to be Johan in charge of EU5, then they're not going to do the same stupid shit. They're going to do something. It's the old guard guy. I should have thought that, right? I shouldn't have threatened, I shouldn't have warned the EU5 people. Also, EU4 is a cash cow, whereas Victoria 2 wasn't. So you did have a bit more yeah. license to go ahead and do something a bit different. Um, and on this topic of his forum post, someone on my Discord, this was posted by someone on my Discord called Leaf. I don't know if that person made it, but there's this compilation of Johan on the forum, the features of... Uh, some of this is from the third Dev Diary, which we'll come on to. And, you know, this has the War System screenshot in it as well. I mean... This is, like this uh, this EU5 thing, this Tinto thing, even if it doesn't last, it's been such a change for Paradox to have something positive like this and people are liking it and memeing it in this way uh, and using positive soys instead of uh, portraying them as negative soys. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is well made. Um, of course... We also have to consider Johan's history with Imperator in that he may have learned from the mistakes of Imperator, definitely. Right? I think it's possible that he's learned from mistakes. Because he was already learning have... his mistakes, because he was turning that game around. Do we have confirmation that the last EU4 expansion is the last EU4 expansion? 
No, I, I don't know about that. And I think I've seen people talking about it, but I don't think there's yeah. any confirmation either way. Yeah, I've heard people talking about it. I was just wondering if anything had been mentioned. Can I, can I get something off my chest, by the way, that I've been desperate, I've been thinking about, I wanted to bring up here real quick. Okay. I have, like, uh, I, well, now I have all of it, but, you know, before I had, like, I was missing two, I think, DLC. The subscription idea that they have for DLC in E4 is not an inherently bad idea. Just the subscription is way too expensive. And then the second thing, which kills me, is make the subscription as expensive relative to how many DLC you already own. It's just the same subscription cost whether you had all, like, you were missing one or if you were missing all of them. And, like, I would, I probably would have genuinely subscribed if it was, like, $2 uh, to play um, the new DLCs. But instead it's, like, more than Netflix. And I don't get a discount because I already own three hundred fucking dollars of DLC, you know. So it makes the subscription entirely useless unless you're a brand new EU four player. Does that? Do you kind of get what I'm saying? Yes, completely. They don't waive I, the cost I hate of the subscription. That. Yeah, I hate that. All it's, or nothing. It was, well, it was been winding me up this week. I was like, fuck, I need to bring that up because it's it's. Uh, why don't they just make it uh, tied to how much you already own of the game? Because then I'd be in. I'd, I'd probably do it unless it was, you know, massively overpriced. Not Vladimir Putin asks, what Fic 2 features would you love added to EU4? I thank you for your super chat. EU5. Uh, the answer is Pops, which they are adding. Boom. Easy. Do you see yourself playing EU5 in the future since it will have a Pop system? One of your biggest issues with Floris Dev System and Modifiers. Thank you very much, Zeta, for the 25 Juwati. Yes. The fact that they're having pops makes me want to play EU5 more when it comes, yeah. By the way, this is all very positive, right? But, don't pre-order and, you know, scrutinise it. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, like, 100%. Keep all of that in mind. I'm not I'm not turning into the blind, oh my god, I'm pre-ordering this now type. Like, everything now, and this is still a very, very early phase, of course. So, keep that in mind. Don't get yeah, carried never, away. Never pre-order, yeah. I'm not pre-ordering this, even if it's going to be the best thing since uh, sliced bread. Even if the trailer's really good. I, I know that's that's a that's a hard if sell, but if, even if the trailer's then superb, I can't don't wait do it. For the biblically yeah. accurate Holy Roman Empire. Thank you, Emperor Malgus, for the 17 months. Yeah, imagine the map system they've just outlined, but in the Holy Roman Empire with locations and shit. Wow. I the, I, the only thing that I've seen about this. Uh, Project Caesar thing was a post on Reddit and they're talking about how they weren't a big fan and it was very popular weren't a big fan of the fact that the map didn't have uh, very strong topographical features which you think Christ it's this early on I mean I don't think it's necessary to well mate yeah fair enough to bring it up I guess if you really really want it um, do you see yourself playing U5 in the future? But yeah, there's not very strong uh, mountains and things on the One map that was saying issues with four was the dev system and yeah. modifiers Thanks for all the super chats, guys. And, um. Oh. We get the third Dev Diary in question where they announce the pops and stuff. And, yeah, this statement here, which I put in the thumbnail, is just. It's all you really need to know from this Dev Diary, essentially. And. People uh, like Ludi in his video, which was like over 100. I I've seen the amount of views Ludi got for his EU5 video about this thing with the Bengali stuff. Seeing it getting over 100k views, and I'm thinking, ooh, there's a very lucrative market there. And if they're adding pops to EU5 and making it right down my street and all that, then wow, there could be yeah. great times ahead. <laughs> but yeah. um, I'm seeing I'm seeing pops, and I'm seeing over 100k views, and I'm, I can see the dollar signs in my eyes. But, I don't know if you remember this, but I, I remember messaging Spud. We were talking about, um, this is before many dev diaries had even come out about Victoria 3, but I was like, oh, it's going to be so exciting when Victoria 3 comes out because, you know, we were talking about, like, oh, do you think you'll still do Victoria 2 stuff or will you fully switch over to Victoria 3? But this could be it. Who knows? EU5 oh, could be another thing to add to the, uh, a to nice, the repertoire. A nice side thing to Victoria 2. Exactly, that's what I mean, bit. yeah. Uh, I guess at the end of the day, as we go through all these games, we're looking for another side thing to Victoria 2 and Open Vic, which will always be the main thing. But um, don't, and everyone in the chat who's concerned about this, like the EU4 players in there, I will talk about that. Uh, we'll talk about 
if they're moving away from EU4. We'll talk about that. And you know, you can complain here. You're you're all, you're welcome to talk about that um, because it's going to be it could be a very interesting reversal, right? We we'll just talk about it now, actually. If they're going to make EU5 less like EU4 and more like Victoria with pops, <laughs> but more realistically, more like EU3. EU3 had pops, you got to remember. They're, they're not adding pops to a franchise that never had them. They're re-adding pops to a franchise that used to have them before EU4. So, But that doesn't mean that changing away from EU4 is not a big thing. It is a big thing if they do that. Because EU4 has been there for a decade, a decade, about a decade actually, yeah. Nine years. And, you know... If they go away from EU4 radically, you have a situation that's a little bit like Vic 2 to 3. A very long gap between the games, and then they come in with new, different ideas and changes. So I would sympathise with EU4 players, even though I'm in, the, I'm in the position personally where I don't like EU4, and I would welcome them adding pops and changing it. I can completely sympathise with the EU4 fans who don't like that, okay? And I'm not here to shit on them. This goes my way quote-unquote my way or whatever um it's just that Europa Universalis is a longer franchise though and there are three games before EU4 and this if they add pops is more like those because two and three have pops I don't know about one I barely even know about two I've played three a lot but I don't remember it that well actually because it's been a long time since I played it what do you think of that distinction by Chucker? Yeah, I think it's, it's for, <coughs> excuse me, I think that it's very important not to be hypocrites. That being said, like, How EU4 you itself doesn't, like, if you're a person who's played EU4 for a really long time, doesn't really feel like EU4 anymore. You know, because it's so, it's so different from Victoria 2, where, you know, Victoria 2 had its two DLC and then modding, whereas EU4 has been continuously developed for nine years. And so you can pick any point along that timeline and go, this was peak EU4. You could pick it now if you wanted to. And so it, it's it's not as easy as going like, oh, let's not shy away from, you know, if EU5 was very different from EU4, but when, how, when, when would you point to when it's different? You know, because it's, it's a game that has changed so drastically um, over such a long period of time. You know what I mean? Does that kind of make sense? That makes a lot of sense. It has changed, yeah. And th but also there are fundamentals to EU4 that haven't changed because it's it is based around some very core things: uh, the development, the uh, and the mana. It is solely based on those. Well, and, there wasn't development yeah. when it came out. Development was there not? No, development was I think probably the fourth or fifth DLC, just off the top of my head. What? Yeah, you couldn't div provinces for a long time. What was there? What was in the game on launch? Uh, I think it was just like... There wasn't... I don't... If I remember right, but there was just base tags. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here we go. Base tags. What? Okay. Yeah. Um, what, there wasn't... Development... There, develop, what? And it what? wasn't called development. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. You couldn't Jeez. develop. And I... And you, here, you, listen. Like, you think... People might think I'm ignorant, but I played EU4 on launch. So, and I played, I played it more around launch than with the with development and i'd still forgot right? yeah i mean base tax was everything. i haven't bought yeah. a single dlc for the game i played it on launch i bought it on launch played it lost interest came back to it now and again I the biggest know. the biggest the biggest funny thing about eu4 is like you see this is kind of like this is kind of bad faith but just as a joke like you could say oh in eu5 they better not allow you to change like uh occupation of provinces because you can capture provinces uh, for like the first four or five years of EU, EU4 until out of war. You, if you captured a province, you couldn't uh, you couldn't give that province uh, province's occupation to your ally. And so there's so many there were so many times back then in EU4 where if if some if your ally had done something good and sieged a province, you'd have to restart because they would never give it to you. So yeah. the war, like if you're fighting a province for one, if you're fighting a war for one province and your ally captures it, it's over. You can't get that province. It's done. And so there's yeah. like, oh, what I'm fuck. saying is like, where, where where are you pointing to an EU4 where the game is EU the most EU4? It's like a very subjective question. 
Fucking hell. You just raised a can of worms, right? The uh, transferring of occupations is one of hundreds of features that are currently in EU4 and all its DLC that when you go when you come to EU5, imagine you sit down at the table at the meeting with a couple of a uh, whiteboard, some pen and paper, and you go, all right, blank slate, let's make EU5. And you think, what from EU4 do we keep? What do we not do? And what are we going to fucking resell later as DLC? Because EU4 is the most bloated game with the most little exactly. features ever developed. Ever. That's nuts. So what do you cut and what do you keep and what do you transfer over to the new game? Because it's just so fucking much. And to, I think um, it would piss EU4 players off and I understand that. But when you have that much shit and that much guff and that much bloat, to come in and go, you know what? We're gutting everything and making it based around a pop system like EU has never been before. That might be a good way to handle that. Level That's exactly shit. what I'm saying. Like, like you, you, what you're you're making a very good point that we could easily be hypocrites by going like, yes, let's make EU five as much like Victoria two as possible. But the thing is, is like EU four uh, to EU five is such a different ke uh, kettle of fish compared to uh, Victoria two to Victoria three. It's so so different. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's a great. Jacob says, "Which Jimmy Smith was the most Jimmy Smith? Five-year-old Jimmy, thirty-five-year-old Jimmy, seventy-five-year-old Jimmy, or the corpse?" <laughs> yeah, it's a very good question. Yeah. It's the exact thing I'm saying. Kind of thinking of like musicians and shit that have had different eras and phases. You got um, <clears throat> David Bowie. Which David Bowie you re re recreate? Uh, yeah, yeah, something like that. Station, station to station. David Bowie, maybe I don't know. So, but, uh, yeah. Someone will get that. Wow. Somebody will get that. Just, EU4 is my favourite Paradox game and I pretty much agree. There's no way to make a new game out of it without just starting from scratch. Exactly. Yeah. You're, you're, you're actually tying, funnily enough, it's the reversal of Victoria 3 whereas by throwing out the baby with the bathwater, you, you, you're really limiting yourself, you know, by not at least embracing victoria 2 a little bit as like a foundation whereas with eu4 you just can't do that like you'd have to start brand new and, and yeah. just think about what's like you were saying spud what's what do we want to keep what do we want to stretch out into and you know because you like the thing is you can't keep developing a game permanently unless it's like an mmo it's a single player fucking game like we th there is a limit to how much you know yeah we they would need. have to just sit there with like a, a box of like Imagine some pieces of paper, cards with all the different EU4 mechanics in it. And they yeah. would have to like go through them one by one and create a keep pile and a discard pile. Hmm. Estates, uh, keep. Um, fucking toggleable occupations, uh, keep. Uh, you know, imagine every different mechanic in a little tiny feature in EU4. Corruption, uh, discard. You know, every little thing. They can't do it. And Catalyst says you're scouting from scratch, yeah. I, yes, actually, not Vladimir Putin. I will come back to that one. I will. I, it's in my mind. I remember it. So, yeah, starting from scratch. And the more I think about it, and the more I imagine the bloat of EU4, and the more some actual EU4 fans in the chat actually agree that starting from scratch is the best, then the more it's kind of growing on me and thinking, yeah, that's actually the right call from Johan here. Because there's just so much shit. And, God, I mean, the thing, the difference with Vic is Victoria 2 was underdeveloped compared to EU4. Like the EU, Victoria 2 is a game that cries out for more DLCs, expansions, and a, a sequel and more development. Whereas EU4 is overdeveloped. Very different from Vic2. Vic2 is underdeveloped. EU4 is overdeveloped. By far. Do you remember when they released that beta patch? This was years ago for Victoria 2. I remember being so excited about that. And that just fixed a few things. Do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah, was that nice. was outstanding. Uh, you're right, like uh, in the fan base as well, because I remember just seeing that and it was like, oh, we haven't really bug fixed it. It might be shit, but here's a whole bunch of, you know, little quality of life improvements. And I remember opening up that up and being like, oh, I was way more excited to look at that than fucking the great game, Victoria 3, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, oh, quality of life improvements for this game that works. Yeah, they know? fixed the naval bug. Where you yeah, can, yeah. If you uh, 
put troops onto transport, some of them would stay and glitch behind or something. They fixed that, and that was like that yeah. was a huge bug that annoyed us in multiplayer to no end, and they fixed it. Yeah, that was so cool. But um, I, I'm looking at I'm looking through the chat, and uh, most people are agreeing with what we're saying generally about EU4. But I do want to hear if anyone has the inverse opinion and they want to they don't like this, like EU4 yeah. fans who don't like that. I, I want to hear your view uh, and see what the counter argument is as well. You know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking I hope this is EU5 because I felt so outgunned so many times when we were doing those dev diaries um, for Victoria 3 because it would be me, you, and then, you know, Zombie or Rena. And it's like, oh, I know, I know, I know a bit about Victoria 2. I know probably more than the, the average. Um, but I don't know as much as you guys. You, but I you do know have... more, put it this way. You know more about Victoria 2 than the average person in the world. Yeah. Yeah. No, that <laughs> feels good. <laughs> um, but I've got 2,000 hours in EU4. And I've wasted tons of my life doing that. So if we ever did, if we were doing something like that for EU5, I'd be the man for the job. Yeah. Either way, I mean, even if this is the small chance that it's a new franchise, unlikely, still... Yeah you know you'll have plenty to talk about and a lot of info oh, absolutely yeah pie knows more about victoria 2 than the developers at paradox well said but we can go back to not vladimir putin's uh super chat now um, enoch says uh yeah pops will destroy the multiplayer meta of e4 this is uh, you know i don't know if we want to move on from the topic but e4 multiplayer is awful i'm sorry i have to say it. it's appallingly bad it's appallingly bad and it's not at all a reflection at all of history in any kind of way like victoria 2 multiplayer in terms of uh if you're playing the base game at least you can lap a little bit but eu4 multiplayer it's like you've got portugal with five million manpower and it's all about smashing as much manpower as you possibly can it's boring as fuck I'm sorry, I shouldn't be ragging on EU4 multiplayer yeah, so much. You're right. It sucks. Not Vladimir Putin asks, how should EU5 handle tech with literacy if some nations don't have any and they're kind of illiterate and stuff? Well, we don't know, and maybe they won't add literacy as a mechanic. And they'll do tech in ways such as the EU3 way, which is a slider. And I can't remember what actually contributes to your research progress in EU3. It's been so long since I've played it. I actually think I should probably play some EU3, especially with the, the hype around this. should play some. I've, I've played a little bit of it, yeah. I could be keen. Um, Pie Chucker must have LARP. 100%. I've done 2,000 hours of EU4, and I've no, never done a World Conquest, because it just... I totally respect that some people love that, but it's just not my cup of tea. And um, saying that EU4 multiplayer is 100% meta, it is, it's, it's just a meta game, 100%. It's not... Yeah. Like it does, it does. Like the here's the problem with the U4 is it's so bloated that it doesn't matter which country you play, because it doesn't feel unique. There's so much bloat that even if you have, even if you make a Portugal DLC, playing as Portugal doesn't feel that fucking unique. Apart from you know, like recently they changed the color of Portugal from green to blue, and that was a whole big thing. And it's like, ugh. Mm. Um, yes, we do have. We do actually have confirmation that literacy is in the game. Which just makes it even more like Victoria 2. This is, this is getting dangerously based. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know if Paradox, you know, I don't. I think Paradox are going to have to stop Johan. He can't do this. He can't get away with this. They're going to have to pull a Boeing on him. They have to put a Sid Meier on him. Rip, rip Sid Meier. Rip, rip the Don. They're adding literacy, mate. What? It's it's happening. They're doing it. Yeah. I, I don't know. But that. I'm trying. I'm trying not to. I'm trying. I'm trying not to fall and I'm not. You know. I'm not. I'm trying not to get my heart broken again. But yeah. there is. There is. You can see it. Eh? There is a timeline. We could. We could. We thought we were in the bad timeline when Victoria Three came out. But we could. We could actually, guys. We could be in the best timeline the, the whole time. All we had to do was trust the plan. Trust your. Trust the. Uh, the plohan. Yeah. Trust the because process. Johan's failure with Imperator was a controlled failure to get rid of Ebba, who was the uh, the enemy force. Yes. Get Freddy back in. 
Does it have war though? Yeah, there's a comment from Johan saying uh, it will have microable wars. Like, you know, you know, I was, I was thinking we were reading into it a little bit until that fucking yeah, you pulled it up perfect. It's right in the fucking smack bang in the middle. Um, probably Victoria Three uh, combat. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> it's like okay, that's pretty. That's pretty um, strong. Absolutely not. Yeah. Not you're looking at the wrong thing. I'm talking about the uh, meme picture. Yeah, yeah. Right. Zeta, you thank you very much. The 1358 start date. Um, the 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 start date discussion has been done to death by I think everyone else talking about it. Yeah. I think I'll leave them to that. People are speculating. People are using the map to determine when the start date is, based on what the borders of the countries were at the time, um, which is nice. I've been. These are cultures, not the countries, by the way. Um, and you, but you can sort of see national borders over it, I think. And when the game is unannounced and it's such at such an early phase, I think people are reading a bit too far into it. I mean, they're trying to determine what year the game is or starts based on this and. There's so many unknown factors, such as, are they even finished with this? You know, is, it, is this just like placeholder pops that they're going to toggle and fix around later? Is this even in the start date of the game? Like, there's so many unknown variables and they're reading too much into it. Like, uh, I think the stuff we're talking about, the overall positions of the games, the introduction of Vic 2 stuff, that's that's more like it. Um, religion, obviously. Well, it's like It's going to be like Victoria 2, but with religion mattering. Um, this is interesting. Another MUU and Taxis mod starts in 18, 1356. Also, oh, it's no coincidence. Trust the plan, Johan. Thank Trust you very much plan. for the super chats. Uh, not Vladimir Putin. Hmm. Aren't you having an election today? Well, good luck with it. I'm sure you'll need it. Do you think they'll add westernized mechanic again? Hmm. Well, I don't know. Um, I remember in EU3 and maybe early EU4, they made it so that Western countries were strong and non-Westernized countries had to Westernize to have any chance of competing. And then later in EU4's development, they just sort of blurred the lines and said, you know, all these other places can fight back too equally and they're, they're fine. It's just a change in philosophy. Uh, yeah, massive, massive. It's a very interesting thing you bring up. Massive change because having played it recently, that was one of the things that I really noticed. Is um, now, my God, anywhere like uh, I was playing a, a game as Byzantium and had gotten close to the end of the game, and everyone's caught up on tech. There's there's no real tech difference between anyone. Um, I remember India, and I was looking over and I was thinking, I'm fighting India. I'll probably have a tech advantage here. No. Like, the way that they've done uh, institutions um, doesn't really give Europe much of a... Uh, they, go, they do get a, a few guaranteed institutions, like Protestant Reformation, but most of them can spawn anywhere in the map, which is, which is pretty nuts. So yeah, Europa Universalis has become sort of global. Global Universalis now. Yeah. yeah it's fucking in the name of the game. But, um... So we've got five different social classes, or what we could call pop types. By the way, remember Vive La Roy's project? Yeah. Uh, this might be kind of taking the wind out of his sails on that. Because he, uh, in his project, his new company, in his new game that he's founding, he's a YouTuber, but he's founding a, a game company to develop a game. Uh, Heroes of Iberia, Thrones of Iberia, Kings of Iberia, one of those. It's called something like that. Some of you might have heard of it, we talked about it previously. He's adding pops to his game, and I was thinking, oh my god, he's doing a revolutionary thing. He's adding pops to the Europa Universalis time zone timeline, right? And I was thinking, that's cool. And he had like five different types of pops, or even four, um, even less. And now this, yeah. it's EU, EU5 doing it. So I, I hope it doesn't ruin his project or take the wind out of his sails or anything, but... I don't. I don't think it would because because one of the big things that was going for that project and one of the ideas I really liked was how focused it was, and so he can still do something really, really compelling in Iberia. And I yeah. think he had. Uh, 
Yeah, he could have a struggle mechanic between Iberia and oh. about, whether it's Catalans and what. No, uh, I can't uh, wait. <laughs> yeah, I can't fucking wait. He can add a bar between Christianity yeah. flat factions and Islam in the uh, yeah. Add a bar that goes up and down. I'd probably be willing to pay forty eight dollars for that. Yeah. Ah, uh, so. I'm going to check my notes to see if I had anything else written about this overall, or if anyone has any chats, any, any any questions, if you want them definitely answered truthfully, then give them in a super chat, by the way. Uh, and also, there's only been like five channel members on this stream, and I'm, I'm going all out on channel memberships again. It is fantastic. You should join the channel membership today, by the way. Fields of Glory, I've heard of it. Maybe it's on my list somewhere. I'll look at it. Uh, yeah, and also, uh, yeah, big thanks to the viewers, because great showing on today's stream and i think we've had some really interesting yeah. stuff coming from the chat i mean we've definitely had a you know a 40 50 60 person end of stream <laughs> and chat gets insane they go crazy we will have it's been yeah. going for so long already our <laughs> outro bit shouldn't be too long uh joel asks just join this means you'll be playing some eu4 maybe it's funny you should say that this is only making me want to play eu3 i i might go and play eu3 don't like eu4 Personally, personally. Uh, so, did I write any interesting notes particularly? I wrote a section, I wrote a note here on what to talk about called Johan being based on the PDX forums. That's my note. <laughs> Just an overall rem reminder. So, Johan is the old guard. I trust the Plohan. Um, what else do they say? <laughs> Just the plan. I, I, at first, I was thinking that you're forcing that, but I, I think I'm in now. But that was just—it was one. One more is all I needed. You Trust that, the plan. You know that picture of Johan sitting? Uh, it's the one that's always used for him. Yeah. I think I might have it here. Uh, do I? Yes, I have it. This is Johan. This is probably his most iconic photo. What does it remind you of? A 630 spot. You're going to... Don't... Don't... Ask chat. Oh my god. What does it remind me of? There is something... That. It reminds me of that. That's it. Oh, of course. Uh, his body shapes may be a little different, but, you know, in terms of attitude and their focus and their power and their and that's, baseness, That is actually... That's the most important part as well, to get right. Do you think this is a coincidence? I think not. <laughs> he is going to lead a legion back to Sweden to retake the company. Um, Martin will be exiled. Be forced to eat um, meat lovers pizza. It's him 15 years ago though. True, but still it's not as long ago as when he joined the PDX forums in 1999. He is an old man now actually, yeah. Sort of. How old is he? I don't actually think he's that old. After being prompted, 406 photo recognition AI have unanimously found no difference between these two pictures. <laughs> uh, we can make an AI generated Johan, sure. Maybe we can do that sometime. Um, how old's Johan? He's 49. 49. Oh, he's still a young thing. Young Buck. Yeah. He isn't, he isn't gonna, that old, gonna... he just looks old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's his hair is going grey. My hair's going grey as well. Oh, get the silver this fox. is a young photo of him, though. This is 15 years ago. If you think it's going grey now, I think it's quite grey. No, that's what I'm saying. I think I'm probably going to end up like that. And f fuck, when I'm your age, but I'll remind know. you. I'll, I'll remind you. Hey, yeah. I'll remind you. And I turned 27 yeah. at the start of this month. Remember yeah. when we were talking about turning 27 before yeah. last year or whatever? And then it actually happened. Wow. Can't believe it. Yeah. But, um, I wanted to say... Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yes. I was going to remind everyone that Imperator Rome was a controlled failure by Johan to get rid of Ebba. <laughs> he fell on his sword. He had to do it. He took one for the team 
when Frederick Wester was out in the in the wilderness. I I remember I had this theory about France in World War Two, that De Gaulle and Pétain were actually working together secretly. Uh, De Gaulle was out there fighting in the wilderness while Pétain was leading Vichy France. People in the chat might have heard of it. I haven't. That's insane. That's a crazy theory. Well. It's not true, but it's funny. Yeah, um, of course. Petain was Johan stay, staying there to to fail as Vichy intentionally. But simultaneously also, also Wester, Charles de Gaulle. Frederick Wester, while he was out of the company, was de Gaulle. Well, Hitler, Ebba, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that would, that's the logical conclusion of that fucking metaphor, though. She has to be. But, um, no, uh. <laughs> yeah no Frederick Wester was out in the wilderness you know suffering from his false allegations uh, and uh, while well, Johann failed within France as Pétain to let ultimately the right people come back who's Eva? a CEO um... from like what, what years was she CEO uh fuck I don't know like 20... 18 to i have absolutely no clue whatsoever why pdx doesn't like you what i'm making historical <laughs> funny historical references about a time period they've made a game about and that somehow means they don't like me oh yeah yeah i just gotta take a pass i'll be back at two six all right come on they, they made a game about world war ii and i'm not allowed to make world war ii jokes oh but uh what, what was ebba's reign no one even knows. No one's. No one knows. No one's googling. The reign of the false. Uh, if she instituted Victoria Three as we know it, basically, that was the main project under her. So was CK Three, I guess. And then Freddie Wester came back. The man who shaved his head for Victoria Two. 33 to 45, I think. Is he back yet? He's been back for a couple of years, yeah. She was famously in the announcement show where they announced Victoria 3. And we did our memes on it, you know. Um, which was, that was in 2021. During her reign. Alright, I'm back. No one knows when Ebba was CEO. What were the years, the dates? Come on. It's like 20, 2018 to like 2023. I'll Google right? it. Um, 1st of September 2021? Well, she left in 2021. That's so soon after announcing Victoria 3, actually. Yeah, that's nuts. But when did she come in? It doesn't say when she came in in this article about when she left. Uh, Frederick Wester was the CEO in 2016. Uh, from 2018 to 2021. August okay. 2018. That's when All he right. stepped down. Interesting. He stepped down to start his one proud Bavarian channel. Yeah. Now, by the way, this is the point where we officially say uh, if we are going to randomly chat nonsense, this is where it begins. Oh, no, there's Gilded Destiny. It's just a brief note, though, and it's just to congratulate them massively for the success of their crowd so a crowdfunding campaign, actually. Type stamp for Gilded Destiny. There isn't any news of the game itself, like mechanics and... Uh, things but they they recently launched their crowdfunding campaign which has been an overwhelming success for them they've set 20,000 quid they got it and more and they still have 21 yeah, days to go they've already gotten two um goals stretch goals and one thing that they did that i really really liked is that they where's got the stretch so, goals they, on this page sorry i'm not entirely sure but um one thing I really liked, and it's an example yes. of being very pro-consumer, anti-paradox, is uh, 
they they had such success that they lowered the um, money needed for their stretch goals. Yeah, and I think what they said is that they did they lowered the amount required for the United States and Confederacy military spike pack. I'm pretty sure on their Discord they announced that they have unlocked this now. The Confederacy and military spike pack. The house divided. Um, if you don't know, Guild of Destiny is an indie project, a rising new company, which is doing a grand strategy game in the Victorian era, basing a lot of their things on some of Victoria 3's failures while also introducing their own new things. And I've been covering it on a lot of streams over the past year or so, and it's all been very positive. In fact, they sponsored one of my Bavaria episodes, so sh don't you all watch that? Don't, don't you all watch that uh, to show you this Kickstarter? So I like to think that maybe my sponsorship, which was about the upcoming launch of this Kickstarter, you know, maybe it helped them. I don't know. Big Weevil's gotten a couple of sponsorships from them now. More yeah. One. There was um, also but a, no, that... Yeah, they... There was the sponsorship for pre-Kickstarter, and then there was a sponsorship for the actual Kickstarter, which some people also did. Um, and, you know, I felt it was a little too soon after the last one. You know, I'm hesitantly moving towards doing some sponsorships, and we already had one for Gilded Destiny, and it was, like, it was only like two episodes of Bavaria after, so I don't know. I'll do Maybe I'll do the next one. Um, just to, to make sure we got the facts right, they lowered all of their stretch goals. Right. Yeah. In light of all the sports so far, because we're really excited about them ourselves, we are lowering the stretch goals. Um, yeah, so and they're doing competitions. I've backed the Kickstarter myself. Um, so if you're interested, absolutely join their Discord. Um, they're, they're running competitions and giveaways and all sorts of shit. It's quite an exciting place to be. Yeah, the it is. You can and, see and it, it growing all the time. You can see them getting... Yeah. You can, if you go to that Discord, spend time and check it out now and again, you can see it always growing and getting bigger. And You can see this company build and rise in real time before yeah. they release the game. If, um, if you're feeling depressed about Victoria 3, it's a good place to be. If you're feeling depressed about receiving criticism in any form... <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Jesus. Oh, don't even get me started on that. It's so pathetic. See, I was trying, it's, time's gotten on, it's nearly 7 o'clock in the morning, and so my politeness, my politeness goes away. And in terms of like, oh, you know, I understand, like, it's hard to be, nah, fuck him, it's pathetic. It's pathetic, Jesus. And it would never, it would never stand for anyone else. Yeah, okay, wow, harsh words. Well, imagine, imagine if you made a video and talking about how um, your feelings were hurt, what do you think would happen? bad things like uh that's just that you're it's the it's the number one anti-bullying strategy is don't acknowledge and uh don't feed the trolls yeah true true nine percent owned by ten cent i don't want to talk about the trolls in the drama again but uh oh yeah, yeah. i wasn't <laughs> trying to bring it up i wasn't trying to bring it up also i noticed i can't i don't have the page open right now but i did notice but the initial trailer for their Kickstarter got over 100k views, which is it blew up compared to the rest of their, their video output. So big things happening for Guild of Destiny. I'm really looking forward to seeing what they have next in terms of dev diary content. I want to see some details on mechanics and features. They said an alpha um, is expected in April, oh, yeah. April and May. Oh, which by is the not way, far away just, at all. Uh, as they were drawing close and close to 20,000, I gave them a wee fiver. On the Kickstarter myself. Yeah, I did the same. Which I kind of—I was wondering, right? Should I join the Kickstarter or not? Because they did a—they've paid me for a sponsorship, so it's just—it's just cycling money, right? But, oh, it's the same uh, with it's same, it's, it's the same with me joining like your channel membership or something like that. It's yeah. It just if it's, it's it's not about the money. It's about uh, feels the, good. The only people making a profit there are people the, the companies that take a cut along the way each time. Yeah. Ch yeah. Chopping off a, a thirty a, a percent here and there. Yeah. But, but yeah, yeah, it's it's a good feeling. It's listed as only single player heads up for the multiplayer card. That's true, but they have talked about adding multiplayer on the Discord. Although it might officially say that. It might not be their biggest priority. I'll I'll try and lobby them to have multiplayer, I think. I have told them at one point the importance of it on the Discord. They're aware. But, you know, I hope they do. 
I'll, I'll always lobby them for good multiplayer. So, if it's single player when it comes out, I'll play it. But if it's multiplayer, then that's where the real fun begins. Yeah. By the way, I love a game that focuses on the single player and then allows mods and other things to balance the multiplayer because I think that was one of the biggest mistakes for EU4 and probably Hoi, but I can't really talk to that because I haven't played much of it, thank God, um, is they started balancing a lot of things around uh, multiplayer and it, or it feels like that at least. Um, and so it just it ends up making the single player experience really weird, like I was trying to talk about before. Just it feels so fucking easy. Um, yeah. It's weird. It's a weird experience. So no, I, I don't actually think... mind. Go ahead. And I'm sorry that this has nothing to do with what you're talking about, but that's we fine. Should have, fine. We should have really just done the Gilded Destiny wee little note on their thingy at the start as one of those early sections, the intro sections. Just a wee congratulations to Gilded Destiny yeah. instead of making making it after week three and e look they just you can actually see their fucking kickstarter go up in real time wow good for them good for them yeah now carry on uh no i think I've, okay. i think I've, i covered it <laughs> we can timestamp it for the outro section but jesus it's late and we should we should wind it down eh? oh my god it's been so well long. i'm 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 fine so based it off hours. how you're oh, doing fucking hell four hours I have still a question. When the stream is over, should I should I keep it public on the main channel or should I get it down and put it on the Swaggun archives? No, just leave it on the main channel. No, I like that you do you that. See, it, you know, I'm going back to fully streaming on YouTube and I have to institute the Swaggun archive system for Victoria 2 streams, for example both Why? oh god it's so complicated because i don't want to leaving leaving streams public after they're done affects my viewers and my algorithm for my video content that's edited after the stream has happened so do really? the stream yes as a video do the stream live on the main channel and then quickly move it to the spud gun archive second channel to be a, a stream archive yeah, well, if it's messing with your video views, then definitely do that. But, um, yeah, I had no idea that was the thing. Um, I heard you talk about it mm. briefly on the last stream. Leave it on for a bit so I can download it, though. Yeah, in order for the people who are watching along late or something or trying to download it, what I can do, I'll leave it unlisted for a bit. I think I have to do the Swag Gun Archives method. It just makes the most sense. It's, I'll leave it unlisted on here for a while, but I won't, not forever, while I get it on the Swaggun Archives. How do the streams do as videos on the main channel? Because they seem to do okay. They do pretty well. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I'm so torn on it. Because when, when it comes to doing a variety stream, like if we play Raft again, I don't want to do that on the... I don't want to put that out on the main channel after it's a video of odd. Live on yeah. the main channel, yeah, but... I think... I think for now a decent idea is leave the victoria three discussion streams on because they also seem to do pretty well as videos yeah and um, it's but continuity move, because i've yeah, always done that yeah and you've always done that and then just move oh, everything oh, else videos. over yeah game streams the game yeah. streams can certainly go over um i've already done that stream about twitch on the archives i don't know um, I was going to ask you, uh, why would you not think to make um, your spore boat, our raft? It was it was begging for it. Oh, the uh, the that spore stream though. I actually went back and watched the vod. I, I was and you know what sucks not to bring it up again, but I was really excited to watch the second, the the most recent spore stream that you did, but I couldn't watch the vod, which sucks. Yeah, because my channel. Wait, no, I have it on the spot gun archives, mate. Oh, you do. I was wondering if you could, yeah. uh, had been able to rip it in time. Yeah, the vod, yeah, it's on the spot gun. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's, that's good to know. The stream happened on the Saturday evening, and I, whenever the stream's done, I would press e export immediately after it's done. And the upload would start on the archives. Oh, yeah. The thing is, YouTube will expect you to make another stream in a time period to keep the algorithm running. See, I don't really understand it that well, but nah, me neither. leaving this discussion stream public on the main channel will be fine game streams should be moving over and that kind of keeps it consistent with what i've done 
but you know I don't know let's uh turn that off pure chatting any super chats Maranara sauce how are you doing you doing all right there mate <laughs> <laughs> and where are those damn channel memberships that I've been asking for anyway come on where are those I'm, I'm sure I'll get a lot more on Sunday with that huge game that's happening 5 p.m. GMT 6 p.m. CET 12 p.m. EST <clears throat> but super um, super memberships how about those Chat, stream is so. not over people are saying good stream stream is not over nearly over we're winding it down we're winding it down <laughs> but this is often considered the best part Lawrence says I broke the bank last stream nah that, you're a good man Lawrence yeah thank you thank you so much what's happening with um, open TDD do you want to do a session like next week yes okay I might take you up on that yeah, I can do that. And it'll be live on YouTube on the main channel. But what type of game do you want to do? Uh, it would be fun to do a team game again, but with smaller teams. And maybe me and you could be on a team. Okay, yeah. Because uh, I, think, I, think, I think one thing... Uh, yeah, 3v3, and we get Lawrence on our team for sure. There you go. That's a, dr that's a dream team right there. Me, you, that Lawrence. That is a dream team. Do you want to have, like, me, you, and Lawrence versus Jenny, Zenmos... Um, yeah, separate separate voice chats. We could most, have most ones we could play. we could strategize. It'll be good. Yeah, yeah. Separate. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm that's down for the that. We've done the versus modes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like that. I think it's, yeah, I, and that way I can study your uh, your signal tech and maybe pick it up. Who knows? It's gonna have to be on Saturday, I think, because I've got Victoria two on Sunday going forward, and Friday. Hopefully, we'll be Bavaria Part 21. Next Friday. Not this Friday, not today. Next Friday. Open TDD. People are excited. That's good. It's a, it's a good game. My I just need to uh, fucking learn how to do signals. I've been playing a game, actually, I've sort of been getting my Open TDD itch from a game called Railway Empires, which is pretty good. Have you heard of it? No. Ugh. Oh, Baron might... Arsos did it. Sorry to interrupt. Oh, there we go. More of a inconsistently donate to random streams kind of guy over channel membership. I appreciate it either way. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, we, we love those kind of guys. Play as Germany in Open TTD to make up for Bavaria. If I themed it around Bavaria, I'd instantly get more viewers. If, I, if we play, we can do a European map and I'll just base my stuff in Bavaria and boom, I've got extra views coming in based on Bavaria hype even though it's open TV. The videos, the videos seem to do nearly as well as the um, main channel videos sometimes which is crazy because I don't know, is it true, am I remembering this right, that when we when you first started doing uh, open TDD videos, they didn't do that well? Like the first one maybe? The first did, one didn't they... do that well, and it's still the first one has not done as well overall as the second, the, the two others. Yeah. The two others have but done two... better. And yeah. I've said this on a lot of my Twitch streams, but I'll say it here for the benefit of a bigger audience. Open TTD videos, particularly on my last two, are the only variety content outside of Victoria 2 that has given me independent growth in the channel. I've gained subscribers who are here for Open TTD, and that yeah. hasn't happened since Mountain Blade Warband in terms of anything other than Vic 2. Yeah. Cheers for that one. Making a stream of yours is rather hard for me given I work nights. Tell me what your best time is and I'll stream on that time every fucking day. <laughs> no, no. I had that as a channel reward once when I first started streaming which was fucking insane but it was literally like a... If you had so many channel points, you could just tell me when to stream, and I'll stream that. <laughs> That's pretty unique. <laughs> I've got the same system, but instead of channel points, it's money. And who yeah. donates and tells me when they, their best times are. <laughs> yeah, it's a better system, I think. I was supposed to go to bed like four hours ago, he says. Well, so was Pie Chucker. No, I, st I, I slept. I'm fine. I'm staying right. up after this. Cool, cool. I'm going out Don't for a chipper after this. Oh, nice. 
What's what's talk to me because I've heard great things about the UK fish and chip experience. We have great fish and chips here too. It's we're kind of known for it. Nothing beats it. What can I say? It's just great. You guys do um, one thing that I think you guys do that we don't do is vinegar. We don't really do the vinegar thing too oh, much. Oh yeah, salt and vinegar is always offered and usually taken. Yeah. Yeah. Salt and, salt and vinegar, not just vinegar. Salt and vinegar. The big thing here is chicken salt. Do you guys have chicken salt? Never heard of it. You've never heard of it. This might be a Kiwi thing, then. That's cool. Or it probably isn't. It's like a really like it's impoverished thing. Not because <laughs> no, I no, I, 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 I can't. I don't know. I can't imagine it is. But like, it's it's like a. I think it's like it's chicken flavored salt. I know that sounds horrible, but it's really good. Hmm. But it's yeah, it's just called chicken salt. And so you, when you go to a chippy here, you just go like, oh, scuba chips, chicken salt, and that's the. I think that's our vinegar, really. You say scoop of chips, we would call it, we call it a poke of chips. Uh, just a portion of chips is, is called a poke of chips. It's scoops here. Yeah. You a order poke. them by scoop. Yeah, fish and chips are good actually. I haven't had fish and chips in a while. You got a favourite fish? Is that a thing? Um, yeah. Snapper. Snapper's great. I don't often go for the fish itself. I take other stuff, basic, you know. But, you know, I don't know. I like well, scampi, talk... which is te uh, te not really sold in fish and chip shops per se. What's the standard spud fish and chip order? What are we talking? Ooh, I would have... I, I often go for chicken, because it's just so much better than fast food chicken. Even in a chipper. You can't buy chicken in fish and chip shops here. Yeah. That. That's crazy. No, you can't hear no. You can buy chicken salt. Funny enough, there you go. That must be. It must just be scratching. Yeah, the edge you there. don't need we to don't buy need... chicken when you just <laughs> yeah. put it in your salt. Yeah, cod, chicken yeah. salt. Cod is pretty much. Snokes. You have snokes. By New Zealand, I, I don't think so. Oh yeah. What, yeah. what are we talking about? You're talking chicken, a portion of chips, a poke of chips, a poke of chips. You get yourself a beverage, or you got beverages at home. Beverages at home. I don't. Yeah, they, it's always they just a good way sell of things money. like cans of coke. Yeah. For me, I love a curry roll. I don't know if that's translating, but curry rolls, outstanding. Yeah. Curry everyone's rolls, mad. chicken salt. Everyone's mad about their curries and their kebabs and stuff like that, but never been into it all that much. Well, you're not a big drinker and kebab. Kebabs have uh, bonus points for when you're drunk. That's a big thing. Going out in town and getting a kebab. Not bad at all. Or was it seven Australia that serves 7 up as lemonade? Yeah, that's lemonade. 7 up is lemonade. A UK lemonade thing. We have Sprite. Sprite's big. But Sprite's not really lemonade either because it's lemon and lime. I tried um, uh, Iron Brew. It's all right. I haven't had that for ages. Um, yeah. Should probably. It's not even that bad. But I don't really like fizzy drinks and all that and Coke. I don't really drink that. Nah, I'm not a big fizzy drink guy either. I love ginger beer though. I really, really like ginger beer. I don't like ginger, ginger ale. I love good. ginger beer. Yeah, it's awesome. These, you know, your Cokes and even worse, energy drinks. These things are just. They're really unhealthy, and their boost of energy is very much a short-term sugar boost of energy. It's not good. I, I wouldn't yeah. drink that to sort of start a stream, because I know, well, maybe it'll give me an energy boost for a while, but it'll wear off, and that'll be worse. Yeah, it's a different kind of energy as well, where, like, you feel switched on, but your brain's not working as well. You have to be, you have to be 16 to buy energy drinks here. It pops up when you drink, oh, yeah. go scan no. your energy yeah, drinks. Yeah. yeah. Dempsey asks, and this is a change of subject, which is nice because I'm not a food person, foodie. Uh, would you prefer divided monarchy or singular, singular monarchy? Now, for Sunday's campaign, for everyone to learn the context, there was floated the option of having a split dual monarchy um, with four players on it playing each of the different nations as a LARPing union, as puppets of the main dual monarchy who just owned fucking Paris or something. This was floated. It's not happening. 
It's not actually yeah, that's, happening. That's that's mad. It could be, it could be good. Yeah, it could make for some really good stuff. Yeah, it and depends who your players were. Dempsey, Big Wheel is going to be in that. He's still on the roster, even not in the dual monarchy thing, right? Dempsey knows the roster, I think. I think I, think I saw Dempsey say Weevil's not in it earlier. He deleted, he deleted the sign up completely? Well, fuck it then. Yeah. We've got no Weevil. They haven't even announced who's on the roster or not on the roster in terms of telling people. Because like 60 people signed up or less than that. I don't know. They haven't even cut the non-rostered people, let alone release the actual roster. What's going on, Dempsey? Give me what's happening with the roster creation. I don't know the roster. Neighbor got like four submissions and made his own. I'm waiting for him to wake up to give us the official roster. It's 1 p.m. Okay, all right. He had other roster consultants as well, not just Dempsey. There are multiple people advising him on the roster. I was told earlier that Virtual Rock is also one of the big four countries. So we'll be fighting him again, probably. Good old Virtual Rock. I can never seem to escape. Uh, you know, it's always him, every time. They always he made make a, that he, the roster. He has, he's got a good little arc going in the Bavaria series with a, a bit of a blunder in, what was it, episode 18 or 19? That was in episode... Uh, seventeen or eighteen? Yeah, and now he he, he crushed them in the. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, it's been out. It's been out for a while. We can talk about it, right? Yeah. 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 yeah he completely crushed them. That was that was awesome. It was great to see a bit of a virtual rock because he often gets the uh, short end of the stick. I remember <laughs> editing Napoleon's Legacy and he got completely dunked in that. Yeah. Yeah. Seems to have, make a lot of mistakes. The most recent version of the roster featured Divided Monarchy. I do not know what it is since that changed back. Okay. Three less people. I forget what country you're playing in the new Victory session. I don't know. A big four country. Dempsey, in your version of the roster, which might not necessarily be what is being used, what did you put me on? Go on. Tell me. Come in the VC. Join the fucking VC. Get in here. Well, hello, 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 hello. Uh, you really want the answer, don't you? This is just your version of the roster, anyway. It's not necessarily what's happening. Necessarily the version. Um, well, I I put you on Scandinavia. That that was the nation Ooh. that in my version you have. I <sighs> don't know what his version is. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Scandinavia. Yeah. My thanks for putting me on my favorite country. And that's mm -hmm. not necessarily the roster roster. Yes. And Virtual Rock is the big four. I'm not going to tell you which nation. And I'm not going to give you the other two because if you just look at time, so figure it out. I'm only really telling Virtual Rock because his time is Phil. So that means anything. What have other people signed up as? Uh, let's see. Uh, who's signed up? I'm just going to go through the roster and see who signed up as a big four as their first. Um, did anyone? Uh, I think Colin, Chrono did. Ethan a, did. A guy called Aok signed up for Bohemia, but I don't know. He might. He might be too unknown. I don't know if we know. Dave, him. If you know the Tel Valhalla Discord, he he mostly played there, but that Discord, as far as I know, is dead. Roblox Master 2013 signed up for <laughs> Burgundy. Okay, uh, that's like a grown ass man. I, I've actually played with him. He's pretty decent. <laughs> Well, it's a great fucking. It's that's, a great. That's not man. a kid for, for the name for Roblox Masters from like thirteen. I love the name. He is a he is a full adult. A guy whose name I can't see because of the shortened streamer mode names beginning with T. Sign up for Bohemia. Uh, Loco sign up as number one Spain. We could have a local Spain. A true King Slayer. True King Slayer. Yeah. I think I might have played with him once or twice. Luigi's Phil GP. Just Ethan signed up. Russia number one. Um, expert marksman is number one Hungary. Um, is Bad Frank sign up canon or is he pulling out of the game? Nope, it, it's canon. It, it it wasn't canon at first because he had his own game. 
but apparently we got six signups and they canceled it. So Bad Frank will be in this roster in this game? Uh, it depends on what neighbor does. My version didn't include him, but my version was before he his game got canceled. So his number one sign up is the dual monarchy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we might see a, a bad Frank DM, but my version had him not rostered because so his game is still ongoing. We might have me, Scandi, and bad Frank dual monarchy. Maybe that's a potential. Yes, it's pot very potential. Hmm. That, if that we could um, be, uh, a crowd pleaser. If we had any uh, bad Frank reaction to you getting banned, does he know about it? Oh no, he he doesn't care. He doesn't pay pay yeah. attention to this sort of thing. Chrono mm -hmm. did sign up number one as Burgundy, yeah, and I have twelve clueless reactions. Yeah, we could have we could have me on Scandi and Chrono on Burgundy as my ally. That'll be a epic Bavaria crowd pleaser. Um, I, I and I'm not. I don't want crowd pleasers necessarily. I just want a fun game. It's not like I'm going for that. I'm just looking through the signups. We got Lamb signing up for Batavia, which is what he is in the Bavaria series as well. If anyone cares, because it's just Batavia. Uh, according to Luigi, in his version of the mod, Batavia does not exist. Okay, roster that guy's Batavia in a mod where it doesn't <laughs> exist. That would be funny. There are a lot of people putting Phil, but not a lot of people I've I know or I've heard of putting Phil. Muscovy was apparently the most contested pick. Ah. Oh. So if you, if you had like a heat map of the signups, Eastern Europe is the the most signed up area. And we're gonna have a bingo card as well, which is very interesting. I can't wait for that. Mm -hmm. I already have one submission. Do you want to go through that submission now? What's on it? Uh, no. <laughs> oh, come on! You won't even, they won't even share the roster, and they—I well, mean—they won't even share the bingo cards. No, we have to win neighbor to wake the fuck up. <laughs> it, it's it's one right now. He should be up. Is he releasing the roster when he gets up? Well, he has to, he has to finalize the roster and then tell people who aren't rostered, "Hey, you're not rostered," because there's 60 signups in here. And his roster is only 35. That's half the signups getting kicked off, and you should let them know now. Yeah. Whenever I find out what I'm getting, which is going to be at least 24 hours before the game, I have to start announcing and making my paraphernalia and all that. Mm -hmm. I don't want special treatment. I don't want to be told my country before the actual thing, you know, privately, just so I can make my fucking thumbnails and shit. I just want to be a normal player as much as I can. Mm hmm. Although I, I did ask you for spoilers for your own personal roster, but that's not necessarily what it is. So yeah, I have because when Neighbor did the divided monarchy, you were not on Scandinavia. What was I under the divided monarchy roster? I have no clue. Oh. <laughs> I just know you weren't because he gave me the new big four, and your name was not on that list. I, I Once don't know he did divide I, monarchy. I don't know if I would have wanted to be against the divided monarchy. Like four people, it would have been hell. Imagine rule rule arguing against four people on one country. <laughs> one of whom well, so, was Big Weevil. So what I, I was talking to him about is if, because it was the Monarchy plus his, he has five Indian players and he had um, the, you have to have a unit there or occupy the land to retreat. So if you attack two provinces deep, you can't retreat <laughs> unless you, you left the stack behind. I hope that's getting changed. I just want normal re retreat behind line rules. It, it is getting changed, but I told him what's going to happen if he left everything as is. The Irish player is going to die to attacking two provinces deep in Bulgaria against the Ottomans in the uh, Indian Death War, Session 2, and all the DM players are going to quit in solidarity. So I warned him it's going to okay. happen with his rule set. By the with way, his rule set, roster set, and all that. Yeah, cool. By the way, I'm actually shocked. We've done the unthinkable here. A chat of 260 people viewing has died. We managed to kill a chat with that many viewers. It's unbelievable. What do you mean? They all just left? No, it's just not typing. No chat. That's it. <laughs> Lurkers. I want a full lurker tax immediately. Come forward. Some of you do the super chat. Some of you join the membership. Some of you just type. Lurkers. Come on. 
<laughs> oh, there they are, coming crawling out of the woodwork. There, well, there we go. Earlier, Justin, I saw, asked where this game's being played. It's the Victorian Union on the in Vic 2's, or it's Spud's Discord, other servers. Don't confuse that for him saying it's my server. Uh, it's, it's in the, there. It's the Victorian Link's Union Discord, which you can find advertised in my server. Don't get the wrong idea. Well, I'm looking um, forward I, to Sunday, though. Oh, my God. I've got something, if you guys don't mind, a subject change. And Dempsey, you don't have to stick around if you don't want to. And then, mm -hmm. PC, up to you. Yes, I, you might, yeah, Dempsey and might thanks, for the, um, thanks for the roster info. Cheers, mate. Uh, no. Uh, Dempsey might have an interesting point to say. Um, I got a DM just now uh, saying, you guys, um, why, why do you say that you shouldn't pre-order games? I don't understand. It seems very counterintuitive to me supporting a game you want to oh, succeed. In the book publishing industry, pre-orders are really, really important for supporting authors and books. I think the reason you don't pre-order video games is because uh, with a book, you're always going to get a book. You know, it might be good, it might be bad. But with a computer game, you might literally pre-order something and just not get it. Or get it in a completely broken state or not in the way that it was advertised at all. Because, now the real reason is because they cannot add DLC to the book later to fix the things that should have been in the book from there. Very, yeah, exactly. It's, it's just a different industry and it's one where pre-ordering is really, really bad for the consumer. It's set up to be that way. Um, Thank you, Style, for joining the channel membership. And Lawrence Van Africa also wants a Spudgun China MP game, just like that guy who comments on every Bavaria episode. Well, I know a lot of people want it, but uh, I didn't sign up for China. China isn't even an option. China's not rostered in this current campaign anyway. It wasn't even possible. But yeah, pre-ordering, don't pre-order games. Don't even pre-order this EU5, even if it looks like the best thing since sliced bread. Just don't. Yeah, is EU5 announced? I, I, I'm hearing that. Was it... Anything it's uh, strongly, official? it's not officially announced, but they've released so much info that it's just strongly possible. Probably, yeah, is. suspected. Yeah, Spud Gun Japan series. When hmm, the uh, in the Bavaria series for your Bavaria campaign, there was two versions of my roster one with you on Bavaria, one with you on Japan. Oh, did I? Did, I think I did sign up as Japan in one of my sign ups for that. And it all depends on who I end up putting on the big four. And then you went ahead, put me on Bavaria, put Loco on Bohemia, and he didn't show up anyway. And then this happened. And it's it was actually because of this exact scenario. Um, I'm saying for, I'm going into the Cohen Hoy Four game, which apparently was supposed to happen right now, but daylight savings happen for Americans and not Europeans currently. So <laughs> the, the time is. Does that mean all my fucked. EST time might be wrong for what I've advertised? What time is uh, it in the... EST right now? Are you in EST? Yeah, I'm in Central, but EST is one hour ahead always, and they're all the same. Right What's now, EST? it's it's 2.14 EST, uh, currently. Oh, shit. That means my stream does start at 1 p.m. EST. Fuck that. It's all been falsely advertised. At least I know now, so I can advertise it correctly mm -hmm. tomorrow. Uh... Mm -hmm. Yeah, but there is a, a daylight savings error currently between... Americans and Europeans. Yeah, it's 1 p.m. EST on Sunday then. You, that's when and the campaign that starts, but, right? But the daylight saving stuff it happens Sunday nights or Sunday, or like what? early Sunday morning, I should Wait. say. So that could skip ahead and change again <laughs> while you sleep Saturday night. Has Europe has American daylight savings already happened? Yes, ours Does has it? happened. I don't know when your ha yours happens. Okay, I'm checking. Check. <laughs> so. So this is uh. Nur, no, it's thirty first of March. Thirty first of March. This this, right. this synchronization that we're currently at is going to last until the thirty first of March. Okay. So I'm right Nur, of what I have game there. dramas can be really funny. Not going to lie, I'm just showing up Sunday because I I completely expect neighbor to forget to wake up on time, and if he doesn't, <laughs> I will host for him. Oh God. Someone asked Spudgun, "What did you mean by creatively bankrupt in the stream title?" I meant that Vic3 is recycling mechanics from different games instead of coming up with anything or even using much from Vic2. We talked about it a lot earlier, you know. Did you ever end up purchasing the Vic3 DLC spot or? No. 
Okay. I'm Pog by Darren, it seemed. He was here in the stream earlier to host or do a multiplayer of the new DLC so that people can play it without buying it and take the piss and have fun. I'm down for that. But that's in May. Okay. I, uh, I'm also down for that. I have the, the $100 pre order edition. Oh, yeah, nice. Burn one. me alive. Kill me. No, you've already suffered the consequences yourself from your <laughs> wallet. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, the, the reality is, whenever a new DLC comes out, I, I do intend to check it out and play it. So, in terms of that, if I buy it up front right when it came out, I'm going to pay more overall. Now, you can argue as much as you want why I'm wasting my time, but uh, I play map games, so <laughs> what do I have better to do? Uh, if there won't be a China player in this Vic 2 MP, will AI China be partitioned? It'll be off limits, right? Yes, you, you cannot conquer the land or anything. You can conquer like the treaty ports of Hainan and stuff like that. But outside of that, no conquering mainland China. And rightly so. I mean, that just instantly improves the campaign. Because you will have a Japan that's actually in play for Eastern colonies and no China bullshit or hog boxes. It's already like instantly a guaranteed better campaign yeah. than anything. The that. worst you can get is you can get a Japanese Indian hog box, but currently we have five India players. <laughs> Oh yeah, there's going to be an Indian bloodbath. Yeah, that's going to be a a thing. I, I'm reading chat, yeah. Nidar. Hi. Oh, so I've been streaming, and Pychucker has been here for four hours thirty nine minutes. Not a bad effort. Ooh. Uh, I have a lurk question. For you. We need more lurk attacks. Go ahead. <laughs> Are we getting any non Vic 2 content like Bannerlord or Helldivers? Sometime I don't have soon? I, I think planned. you're done. I think you're done with Lethal Company. No, I'm Correct waiting for wrong. another update of that. Uh, and okay. play that again. But Hell, I'm not getting into Helldivers. I can't be bothered. Uh, I might do another open TTD video in the near future. That's it. For variety. We've got Raft as well. That's for streams, yeah. I'll do another yeah. open TTD stream and video and play now, did you enjoy did you enjoy Bannerlord or because I know you were originally a Warband streamer and Warband yeah. content. Yeah, I'm more or less like, like Bannerlord? Bannerlord. I have some problems with its combat, but I kind of overall I'm fine with it. But I just haven't gotten into playing it much multiplayer because uh, focusing too much on Vic Two. For me, it leaves a a bad taste in the mouth because I'm primarily a single player. Uh, guy for Battle Lord. Um, never really got into the multiplayer too much. Um, and the fact that they've abandoned it now and it's in such an unfunctional state, it's, it's missing so much. Like, I would rather play Warband uh, if I'm playing single player. Have and they so, abandoned it? They just released a big update, didn't they? They fully released the game and then they said, I don't know if they've walked that back, but it sounded like they were saying that they were done. Like that. Here's the, they've, they just slapped 1.0 on it and they were like, sweet, there you go. And they didn't have so many things, you know, basics, feasts, um, so many different things from just even Warband. Um, like, the Warband, the, the LARP is better, for sure. I wish I could get unbanned from the Discord. I made a joke with a forbidden N word and baited non-stop, but it's been like six months of begging, pleading, season and coping right now. Hmm. Tell me your Discord username and I'll look into your case, but I'm not guaranteeing anything there. <laughs> It's quite recent. You sound like a detective. And there's an N word in question, and then constant mm. baiting. Not great. Your case doesn't look good. Stardew Valley stream with the Pie Tracker win. I've never played that game. You played that, Dempsey? Which game? Stardew Valley. Skit, so it's the same. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I played it. Yeah. yeah. What? I, I right? could definitely see an MP actually. No, that that does sound like fun to play and fun to fun to watch as long as you have like i could see you spud weevil and and some other person not me i don't think i'd be good for that content that could be that could be a fun oh you are great on the lethal company thing surely you'll be all right yeah but this game is much more chill you have to have something else to talk about oh, yeah. i am but rumble has a function if you link your YouTube account where it auto mirrors every upload and stream. Wow. Okay. But I've been thinking, I've been looking into that and the payout options for Rumble are, seem to just be PayPal. And PayPal fucking bans my account for no reason. So I'm thinking, wow, 
Great, Rumble, you really helped fight the system. Making me use PayPal. Wow, fucking brilliant. But I'm keep I'm continuing to look into other options. If I, but instead of uploading mirroring what I have now, if I get an alternate platform, I'm gonna upload the Airstar Aquitania series because it's the one with the lost episode because of copyright. So I'll upload that first. What are some other good MP games? We have a list. You got any ideas, DMC? What about you in terms of something that you'd play? Uh, any shooter I love. I, I'm a big shooter guy. But right. I don't think that's your cups of tea. Oh, I used to. I used to love it. I just haven't found one that I've clicked with recently. I wanted to try um, Rainbow Six Siege, but I'm worried that I'd get way too into it. Because that does look pretty fun. Town of Salem, that would be fun as hell, actually. That's a Salem. great call. That's a great call. Oh, people have been talking about Space, Space Station 13 on Vic Union, actually. It might happen. I don't know. There was a custom server made for that. Master Chief Collection. I've got um, that. Call to Arms. Have you guys heard of that series? Gates of Hell. No. That would be a fun one. I really enjoy that game. It's, uh, have you played Men of War, Assault Squad ever? Or heard of that game? This rings a bell. It, it's that sequel. Oh, yeah, it gives me, like, a Company of Heroes type vibe. Mm -hmm. It's Company of Heroes, but way less forgiving. I mean, Company of Heroes isn't, isn't very look, forgiving. No, look, it's time to end the stream, though. We, we really should end. I, I need to go. You need to go? Yeah, not like I need to, but I'm hungry. And, uh... oh, that's, that's fair, that's fair, that's always a good reason. Yeah, I, I, I can door dash you, send me your address. <laughs> no. <laughs> Ask Marksman, I'm good for my word, I ordered him two different things on DoorDash. dash. Dempsey, now. my door dash driver? Your wife wasn't <laughs> expected. No, no, I, uh, I door dashed Domino's and Popeye's for Marksman before. Wait, what? You, you, went, <laughs> the, you, went, you went to him and brought him No, 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 he, he's in his state, I'm in Wisconsin. He gave me his address, and I ordered DoorDash for him right. <laughs> okay. and paid a guy to show up to his door with food. That's like the most polite doxing ever. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, Domino's does, the, do, this Domino's is, does this has happened. Deliveries. Is there DoorDash in the UK? There must be. There's DoorDash in New Zealand. There's so. the equivalents of... There's like three different companies. Just Eat, Deliveroo, Uber Eats... If they are the we same have, thing. We have Uber Eats and delivery, uh, uh, DoorDash. Any of you in the chat right now, if you want to come to the UK, just hop in a boat, come over, and boom, you can be a delivery driver. You're looking for work? No documents required. <laughs> no English required either. What, what? Are you, are you, when you talk about multiplayer games, Pie Chuck, are you looking for more content or just games to play in general? Well, uh, yeah, well, Spud's wrapping up, but just real quick, what up? Like, OpenTDD, for example, has nothing to do with, really, with Victoria 2. And Spud was saying, oh, this is the first thing that's popped off, you know, in a similar way. And so I was trying to think of, like, you know, what could be another candidate? It's obviously not going to be, you know, it can be very, very different. But what could be a candidate to pop off, you know? Um, which is kind of what you were always thinking I'm about. I'm not really looking for candidates to pop off. I'm, I'm too. I'm really. I'm thinking more Victoria too, you know. These days. I'm thinking more like a Lethal Company type video where you know you have three or yeah. four and then that's it. Someone's yeah. Hell dead in chat. Hell divers, left for dead, call the arms. Yeah. Those are all great candidates. Left for dead could be a great video. And you're, yeah, you're Spud. You're right. It's more like just an interesting topic of conversation. Yeah. Um, I know that you've Phas got plenty, plenty to do. Oh, phasmophobia, Phas please. I would love a phasmophobia <laughs> stream. Hmm. Yeah, maybe. That, that ship has sailed, doesn't it? Uh, why? <laughs> if, if you never make content for it, it doesn't have to sail. That's a good point. GeoGuessr. I could do oh, GeoGuessr. Yeah. I'll go back. GeoGuessr's fun. Anyway, look. Great. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Dempsey, for hopping in and telling me about the roster. Interesting. Scandinavia campaign. 
Hmm. I'm not if, saying it is. It might not be, but... It might not be, but as of my version that I submitted to him, which I'm not sure how much he followed through, my do version you, had you on scan. Yeah, do you know any of the other GM uh, roster consultant submissions? I know all of them. Oh. Well. What were the other ones for me then? Question mark? Uh, Ethan's, I don't remember. His isn't there. Yours for JFK submission was Grand Columbia. What? I did, oh, I did put Phil, actually. But I was yeah. told by I asked you. you. Uh, oh, that I was asked you if yours. you're okay with a big four for my roster. Because I, I don't, know what I don't want to play Grand Columbia. For. I don't want to play Grand Columbia. Shit. And the other one I was given had you on Scandi. So you had two Scandies and one Grand Columbia. Oh, God. And I then don't want in, the, in the Divided Monarchy, you didn't get either of those two. But since we're not Divided Monarchy, I think you're going back to Scandi. But I don't know. Okay. okay. Uh, Grand Columbia would be real out of the blue. Uh... Oh, the finals. Um, Mary Nara. I'd play that. That's a fun game. All right, gentlemen. Um, yeah. It's a sequel cover. Scandic. I've played Scandi so many times. And, and nothing wrong with that. I'm looking forward to playing again. But it's... I played it in the first ever big DoD multiplayer game that I made the Scandinavia series. I played it in another campaign on the chill server right after that. With zombie and all that. Where I got videos such as the fucking naval encirclement in that campaign. Then I played it in 2021 with the American Council. Dempsey was there. Fucking hell. But Video I love that channel. Country. To be fair, I haven't played them in a campaign since that 2021. It's been three years, so... Yeah, only Dempsey's got, got a buff. channel. He's got a channel. Twitch. And a YouTube. Yeah, I'm nowhere near popular. The problem is, when I edit, I'm way too... Tr way too big in trying to perfect the video. That I just burn out on them. Oh, I know that feeling. Yeah. Like, I, I love putting in, like, uh, YouTubing some my, sort of. My flaws in my videos. Yeah. My flaws yeah, are well, that I'm too perfect. Oh. Well, no, no, no. no. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there trying, like, I look for some Napoleonic, uh, re, like, reenactment or something, or just oh, videos yeah. on that point, like, wars get full battle scenes going on for, like, some small shitter Savoy war. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the same. I'm the same. Like, animating, <laughs> animating shit that. That really doesn't, doesn't need, need to, to be, really yeah. be animated. But not I came at all, to yeah. terms with it a while ago, right? I'm not going to get a clip like that in every video. But when I do find one that is appropriate, I'll put it in. But it won't oh, happen much. Indian downfall in the last episode was so, like, so good. Like, Spud Gun, what got me into Victoria 2 was in your Muscovy finale, when you show the, the craftsmen in the finale scene building the cruisers for the last naval battle. Uh, that yeah. Watching that is what made me join a Vic 2 Discord. For the first time if you did not upload that with that little like historical footage of the crafts and building the cruiser i would not be here right now the bavaria series would not exist spam bots uh your italy campaign would have been way different true if you did not put that small little craftsman thing at the end of that muscovy video yeah that worked well i guess it was good this uh four years ago now over four years, maybe, that they actually, that actually came out. So, long time ago. Yeah, long time ago. It's crazy. 2024. Nuts. Yeah, oh, no, right. but what, what what Dempsey was saying is that's that's the reason, essentially the reason why I hadn't made a video, a YouTube video in like three years of having a YouTube channel. It's just like you end up scoping, like getting the scope way too big for the video, and, mm -hmm. and then you're just like, oh, fuck this. Mm -hmm. And have then you big seen Ethan's video MC? I did. I was the host fucking of that game. Hell. Oh, but yeah, that doesn't necessarily mean you watch the video. But fucking hell, his map <laughs> edits. Oh my god, mm -hmm. Ethan's map edits in his like, in his new video. But Weevil gave me the best idea of just do the flags when someone's speaking. Don't don't subtitle it. And even then, if it's just you and the same person, don't put any flags. People will just pick up on it after the first minute as to who's who. The subtitles are nice. They are nice, though. But it is, they it's, take it's, so long. They take. I know. I know. I actually. I've for for a different for real work. I had to subtitle a video once that was 
uh, an hour and ten minutes long, and that took me, I think it was like nine hours straight. It was so, it took me so, so long. So yeah, I know. I'll put it this way. I have Scandi Part 1 fully done, but not subtitled, and I'm halfway done with Scandi Part 2 without subtitling the first one. Yeah, time. yeah. <laughs> Sometimes yeah, I that I do is just as when I can't think of anything creative to do in the video, I just do subtitles because it's busy work and it gets me working. <laughs> yeah, that's a fair call. The uh, doing subtitles through um, YouTube as well, like making manual subtitles, is, is that's easier to do than um, fuck around with open captioning on the actual video. Mm. Anyway, look, we got to wrap this up. We've got. Yeah. Thank Spud you, needs his fish and chips. He needs Spud, them. Spud, he's starving. Yeah, yeah fucking yeah. starving here. I, <laughs> I got the money from the stream to pay for it, but if I die, it doesn't count, does it? Uh, well, thank you guys very, very much. Thanks, DMC. It was good to see you, mate. And um, yeah, well, looking forward to, I don't know, an open TDD thing or a raft thing very soon. Um, use your Twitch primes on, on me now because Spud doesn't yeah. eat them. Yes. And uh, have a great, have a great, uh, Dempsey, you playing on Sunday? Uh, I'm showing up because I am fairly oh, confident host. that neighbor oh, yeah. will sleep in and oh, yeah. the host won't be there. Well, because it's very early it, for me. He's still not up. And if this is his game on Sunday, he should have started like three hours ago. An hour and a half yeah. ago. Yeah. Uh, well, two I and hope a half you guys, hours ago for me. I hope you guys have a great time. Oh, I, hope yeah. it's, I hope it's a big stream. I hope it goes Wait, well. Wait, no. How could it be two and a half hours ago for you? Time for for my time, time for, is relative. For, for for my no, well, you're on. <laughs> it, daylight savings. It's an hour and a half this. ago for me. <laughs> no, no, no. It, it's as of what I'm seeing right now. It starts at eleven for me in my time zone, and it's one thirty-two in my time zone. It starts at five for me, and it's six thirty now. Now for me. Hold up. I'm oh, I'm opening up. I'm gonna open it up and I'm gonna look at it. I'm gonna tell you exactly where what time it is. Unless what Olympian has in the schedule is off from what he announced. Oh god. Alright, I'm away. Bye, Pachaka. Subscribe. Thank you so much. Subscribe, for subscribe okay. to Pachaka. Thank you. And uh right. have a great stream on Sunday, guys. Thanks. Yeah, Never mind. What, what he put in the announcement chat shows noon. I'll mm -hmm. have Olympian up to then, the rules and schedule chat. Then. So, an hour and a half ago. Yeah. Yes. You're right. Will... Good. I'm glad because <laughs> it means I've been advertising this for ages now. Okay. You're right. Yeah. See you later. Cheers. See you. All right, chat. Okay. What a long stream. Oh my God. It's time to go. Thanks so much, everyone. Was a pleasure. I might look into your case, Freddy de Schizo, but it's not looking good for you. Um, I don't know how I can communicate to you if I did unban you, but maybe check. Check if you can join in like 24 hours or something. And uh... Okay, right. Thanks all. Thanks everyone for the super chats. Each and every one of you who gave a super chat. I appreciate it. Thanks for joining the channel membership. Um, I don't know. Just check out. Wait for the stream on Sunday. That's the next big thing. Right? And then Bavaria Part 21 will be next Friday. Thanks. Bye. This is not going to be unlisted. I'm actually leaving it public this time, okay? There. Stream is ending. There.